Hello everybody, I'm hanging out here in the uh, president suite with some, well, royalty, maybe not president, <laughs> but I've got myself, Carrigan and Neo, we're hanging out here in Chengdu. And I mean, a lot of things I want to talk about. First thing is, of course, China and, uh, and Counter-Strike. This is, I would assume, not the first time for you guys. Neo, when, when did you, when did you hit last <laughs> find yourself in China? Uh, f- I mean, I think in 1.6 we've had more tournaments in China than, yeah, yeah, we used to travel much more to Asia, basically, like even Korea and uh, yeah, China. Uh, but first time, I think maybe 2007, Damn. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, first time for me. It's always, uh, you know, different. <laughs> yeah. It hits different, but it's uh, it has its own, you know, like nice things and. I always enjoyed it, apart from the jet lag and uh, the travel part. Yeah, it's that, always nice. That would get you. How did you. How did you sleep? Did you reset quite well? Yeah, yeah I had a perfect sleep, so I, and, I, I'm good. But, you know, it's more about them having Yeah, I'm looking at Finn and I'm like, do you, you feel so good? I mean, I'm used to this point. I think yeah. this is by far the worst travel to an event. US, you kind of feel good when you arrive. You just wake up earlier. But here's the other way is like it's a bit rough, but I mean, when you're getting older, the jet lag hits a little bit harder, but I think I have my tactics and nowadays uh, need not sleep not much on the flight and just like go yeah. go full sleep. So but yeah. I guess also the, a lot depends on the schedule, right? Yeah. If you have to wake up next day. I mean, back in the days, we used to have like a full day of, you know. A reset day. I, I mean, no, like a full day of staying at the event and uh, you had to wake up in the morning. And yeah. if you don't uh, adjust pretty quick, yeah. That's unlucky. Yeah, yesterday I was lying in bed at 5 p.m. just trying to stay awake, but I was lying in bed. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? It was over already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was over already. Playing kind games. Of woke up at 10 p.m. Yeah. like, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> but I'm okay. I'm here. And uh, this is not about me. You spoke about tactics. I think I'd like to pivot into, uh, obviously, probably fresh in your mind, uh, Copenhagen. And the playoff run in particular was uh, something I wanted to pick your brains about. Coming into that spirit game, there's no denying the expectation was for Spirit to, to take the win, I think, for the majority, just based off of Kato, based off of their rise to power, and they, they looked like they were hitting their stride. How long did you guys have to prepare for that game? Like, realistically? I think, realistically, when you look at it, we prepared already after Katowice. Yes. Uh, obviously, the Verdo Co came in, um, knowing that if you want to win the Major, I want to go deep in the Major. Spirit is going to be a huge threat for us, if it's group stage, if it's playoff, right? So, so yeah, after the Katowice fight, I think, in my mind, already there, um, kind of looking at the options, how to beat them, right? Mm. And um, obviously, Mirage again, uh, we knew it would come in. So that's also a preparation we would have done by then, because obviously, I think coming into the Major, we looked at... We still rank number one, but we didn't feel like number one uh, in that sense that yeah. we haven't won a trophy uh, with Frozen yet. So you just look at the teams under us and kind of like pick your brains on how we can prepare better for, for the major. Yeah, and when it came to that game, when it came to that quarterfinal, uh, it, from the outside looking in, it seemed like, you know, it was a story as old as time of experience prevailing. Like it felt like you'd come up with a good a good game plan. I'd like to explore your definitions of a game plan. You know, how how deep of, a, uh, of it was, because it looked like you, you were just in their heads, dude, these early orps B, so that Chopper's initial calls B, would agree, it, like he couldn't do what he wanted to do to set the pace. You had such early control of the money. You know, you can't plan for that, can you? You know, you're not planning like, oh, well, when we win this and then they have no money and we'll be able to, you know, <laughs> how, how, how deep does it get? And this team, it's so nice about this team that everybody, you know, can come up with some different stuff. Uh, obviously, Finn is doing most of the, you know, mm. the heavy work, uh, preparing uh, like the, you know, the core of it. But then you have each player player having a little bit of, you know, extras. And you could see uh, before the game against Spirit that, you know, uh, even I mean, not even, but <laughs> some of these guys were, you know, doing some extra stuff. Yeah. And, and that was really nice to feel, you know, that everybody wants Working to get together. that back, you know, and, uh, you know, get their revenge on them. Yeah. That was really nice. And, and we saw it in the server as, as well. Um, yeah. Just, so was, that, was it, when you say the bringing stuff to the table, Finn, is it for you, is it in, like individual moves, like, wait, you know, almost like chess openings, you know, for your CT setups, you're like, okay, we're going to do, we're going to throw this at them, we're going to throw this at them. You're testing their reactions, you know, how does the plan come together? I think there's different ways to do it, right? T-side, I have the wall plan. Um, if somebody needs to do some move or they saw something they can abuse in that part of the map, they come to me before the game. Right. Um, else is pure adaption, right? I have an idea on how we're going to attack the game, but I've done so many game plans in my career that 
honestly, plan A never works right. because like everything is always a mind game between what they're gonna do, what they're gonna expect, how much are you gonna look at the enemies, and how much you're gonna look at yourself before the game, right? It's always a a balance and a very thin balance where mm. somehow you can start a game and you actually didn't play like face clan um, and you prepared differently, right? So I think for me, it's always a balance between that. Um, coming to, for example, the city side Mirage, I think everybody knew the map would come through from our team, uh, especially the way we vetoed, we knew that they couldn't surprise us in the veto. And um, I think everybody had a plan for themselves in that area of the map because now they experienced twice Mirage and we were very close to beating them. Mm. And we kind of realized that they didn't change much from playing a Katowice final to um, the the Amar and uh, to yeah. the to the major itself, right? Uh, which surprised me in in a way that it felt like they counted themselves in a in a different way than I expected. Because normally when you're on the top, and maybe that's the experience part you talked about as well, is like that's right. you need to be one step ahead of yourself all the time if you want to stay on top. Because winning one tournament, everybody's looking at your demos. It, it, everybody's looking how did Spirit right. beat face in the final, 100%. right? And we do it ourselves as well, and. It's always easier when you're losing to a team to be one step behind because you they will have expectations, but we will have the solution, right? And yes. I think that's the key difference between being a top team constantly and being a, a team that can surprise sometimes. Did you use, does it work that way as well when you, you know, looked at that Kalevitsa final as well and you were like, what did we do wrong as well as what was Spirit doing right? Can do you kind of almost try and anti strat <clears throat> yourself when you're watching some of these games back? Like what, what are our gaps? What are our mistakes? I think it's about everything you know basically course, a little of bit of of balance between uh, you know this and that it's it's never you know one thing yeah but isn't that is that the appeal of counter strike is that it is yeah. never one thing it's everything i mean you I, I always know the game isolated from each other yeah. you have to yeah. um obviously look at the catwich final uh, player drops two rating in a final okay um <laughs> but what we're gonna do how can you is, counter that right yeah and, and some sometimes you have to put into I think most of the time you have to look at what the enemies did right, but also look at where the team state was. How, for example, when I look at the final in, in World Final Blast, we just got David uh, in yeah. with a lot of vitality, but already there I knew the team was burned out. I couldn't push 100% uh, preparing for the for the tournament. So you always try to isolate the the games you're losing, and and <clears throat> in the end, it's hard to find the five percent why you're not winning. Yeah. Um, but we are consistent in the final, right? So we're doing something correct. Um, but you just need the last percentage. So I think it's always a thin balance between everything and it's very hard to to stay on top constantly. Like uh, I've been in the game for so many years, Philip as well. There's a thin balance between you adapting too much because you're thinking doing something different and you screw up something you didn't realize. Yeah, just yeah. like the game, you know, yeah. if Valve is doing an update, they screw something up else up with the update, you know? Yeah, like, you know, you're even looking there and it says <laughs> yeah. it affects it, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, I think that's a, such an interesting topic about, you know, like the, for the, the saying goes, like the hardest thing about being at the top is staying there. And, and that's something you guys have been doing right now. I mean, that certainly should be something you can, you know, be proud about uh, is the longevity and the consistency that you've found, considering, as you've said, how difficult it is. But we saw cracks, you know, in your, in your group stage and in your run in Copenhagen where it looked like, oh, is FaZe even going to be there? You know, we were asking these questions like, mm. you know, there, there was some volatility there. And there's natural volatility, I assume, just through from the human side of things, as in players are having an off day, they're in their own head. It looked like Rops might have been in his own head for a little bit at the start there. And that's all stuff you can't really control. But, you know, when it comes down to it, when you look at the, you know, the run and review, it it looked like you kind of sorted it out. You know, you, over the course of the tournament, you kind of found your found yourselves again. Does it feel that way from your perspective? I think I'm always saying this in the, in the huddle we do at tournaments, right? Uh, beginning of the tournament, I'm always trying to remember the guys, it doesn't matter how we start, but it matters how we finish, right? And I Good think thing. saying that at the beginning of the tournament is realizing, okay, we don't need to be 100% now, but we need to be at a high level because the competition is getting tougher for every year. There's no walk in the parks anymore like they used to be in 1.6 or a beginning of CSGO I felt like <laughs> I felt like in group stage sometimes the top teams will always make it to the top yeah and then it was getting harder but here in in CS2 or end of CSGO I feel like there's never an easy game because the level is so tight now between tie 1 and tie 2 and you can see that in group stage with a lot of uh, upsets and pressure and stuff like that but I think there was it was a strange group stage in that stage I didn't feel the pressure 
but also didn't feel the 110 percent energy mm. and I, it was a question on why it happened i'm not sure but you could see once you got to a very simple scenario the 2-2 game of complexity where it could be a scary game for us we stepped up massively yeah and at that moment i knew okay now we're here now we have the hardest bracket perfect scenario that we have to be at top 100 percent from from day one where i think we always we're a little bit chill because knowing that you lose a game here and there, you still save, still have a chance. Yeah. And yeah. it's a thing I've never been able to change in this team since 2022. But when it matters the most, I know we are going to be there. Maybe not 100%, but 95%. And most of the time, that, that is enough to win. Yeah, yeah I guess that's the biggest you know, factor in here that, you know, if you lose, you're still not out of the tournament, you know. And on, in playoffs, it's like the pressure is mm. much higher or in the 2-2 game, right? Yeah. So I guess it's kind of that, and it's also the best of one in, in the openings. Yeah. That's also more random, especially in yeah. MR12. Yeah, and that feeds really nicely into something I wanted to bring up, which we've kind of been skirting around, which is that everyone can be everyone. Uh, and throw that into the mix with Blade, who took to Twitter saying, being the underdog is the best, is the best for a major run. Uh, which I kind of scrambled my brain and thought, thought actually was really interesting and to the the psychology of that um, as well. But what, what's your take about being an underdog? How often have you even found yourselves being an underdog? It's been a long time, hasn't it? I mean, no, yeah, we're, no. we're laughing yeah, about we're laughing. that. I, uh, I, I think we played the quarterfinal. Like, I can't remember last time I was an underdog in a quarterfinal. It's been in my career yeah, in the last 10 it. years. It being feels like being so ranked higher than the Yeah, the we enemy, were ranked right? one and we're playing ranked two and ranked three and we're still uh, underdogs. underdogs. So like, and I think I even, I realized like, okay, like this is a certain scenario where you can maybe play a little more risky. You can uh, try to throw a curveball in the veto and, mm. and stuff like that. And I think being in that scenario where I realize, I think if I just look, if we hadn't played Spirit and Vitality lately, I would probably not feel an underdog. But because we lost a different matchup against the teams, it felt like we had to prove more than they had to prove in the, in the, sure. in the matchup. And I think it just added fuel to the players realizing that we're ranked number one, but apparently we are not number one. And you know, that's like, uh, if there's something it's that this moment, team right? can is find a small motivation that really pisses them off and take it out on the enemy instead of, uh, you know, teammates, you know? Yeah, no, yeah. for real. But, yeah, he so, has a point, definitely. Yeah. Like, it feels, you know, a little bit different. Like, between Kato and, uh, and the game at the Major against Spirit, it's like, yeah. it is a big difference in the end. Like, if you're the underdog, because in Katowice, they were the underdog, basically, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And I felt like, in some way, after the catch find, they earned my respect. Mm. I think it's strange to say, but when you play a team that has, like, coming, rising that fast, you play them once, you're like, okay, fair enough, got a little, maybe a little lucky, you know? You always you do that at small, they got a little bit lucky, you know? Strange <laughs> yeah. veto. Yeah. You go in the final, lose three zero, like, that was not lucky, that was a <laughs> wrecked, you know? Ooh, 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 <laughs> that I didn't like yeah, that. Last five minutes in a row, ah, there, there's something about this, you know? Mm. And I think, th in, in, in some sense, when, when you earn the respect, you also earn, like, prepare, I'm preparing really hard compared Precisely. to maybe the, the catch which final, right? And having those four days also between group stages and major gives me a lot of time to reset, right? Uh, my body is not reacting as fast as the young guys. So when I have these days off, I can prepare really good and have clear mindset coming yeah. into the game. And I think that's underrated because when you play in a final, you're st you are working 24-7 for like four days in a row, right? And, and the same in catch when you go very deep. Uh, it is just raining energy-wise, right? Uh, I'm still, when I woke up after the major final, I'm still seeing dots in the heat maps. Like, that's how much, you know, I've been watching games and yeah. demos. And so, yeah, I think that's also a consideration. We came really refreshed into the, to the spirit game. Yeah, and just touching on the spirit game, I realized I forgot to ask about that third map float. The, the, the float in the veto is an interesting one. Uh, when we were brainstorming, you know, we had the same thing. It was different, but the same in the sense that we're like talking about our matchups, what we can expect, you know, and I brought it up to, um, to Chad. I was like, is, it, is there a chance we see Vertigo? He was like, oh, they pick Vertigo. I'm throwing him under the bus. Chad, I'm sorry, <laughs> mate. He was like, you know, if we see Vertigo, they've already lost. Like they've lost their confidence, you know, that, that's, a, that's a sign of a team that's not confident. Um, but to think about it, you know, in retrospect, but also from, through your lens, you had time to prepare. When it wasn't picked in the first phase, was there any second guessing? Like, do we just get rid of it now? We've got a second chance? Or were you? was the whole plan to see Vertigo in this Vita? It, it was up to them in the end, okay. because we knew how the Vita would go down, right? Uh, that's the thing why people question why we banned Anubis, because maybe they won't pick it. 
But by banning Anubis, I knew we could control the veto and the way the veto would turn out. Because if you left Anubis, they could surprise and not pick Mirage and getting Mirage third. And, you know, yeah. like in that sense, it could be a different veto. But we knew as a team that it was in the end their choice. Yes. That we would be fine playing Ancient. I also kind of expected more Ancient than Vertigo. But I think when we were staying down a veto and Dong is looking at, uh, at Haley, of like at, at the coach, and <laughs> you could just feel he wasn't aware of it, but he was tired of the float because they wanted probably to play Overpass. So he decided to ban Ancient. And I was like, that's their second most picked map. They're probably one of the best teams in the world on Ancient. And they take it out on Vertigo, have no information how much we played, that's who we played, cool. who is playing where. Yeah. Because Rain is playing B on Vertigo and the previous team was playing A, right? So I think there was a high risk. But in the end, I realized we put them in a pickle because if they wouldn't pick Vertigo against us and they wanted to win the major, they know every other team would pick Vertigo constantly because it would showcase that they were not yes. comfortable on the map. And all the interviews, they said they're comfortable and Vertigo is a good map for them. So I think they had to own up to their own pride. Okay, well, well when it's 12-5 and then it's maybe 12-7, <laughs> maybe 12-8, 12-9. Yeah. Like, I mean, from my own personal experience, that's when my mental is tested the most, is when, you know, it goes from joking, like, all right, boys, let's just finish it now. Yeah. All right, like this one, this one, this gun, right. Now let's get it done, let's get yeah. it done. And then it doesn't, uh, maybe like there's five alive and you're kind of going, ooh, wow. Yeah. And then it's OT and your mind, I mean, can you talk through the psychological? What did you I, witness I mean, from those five players? Uh, actually, uh, my mental was tested in that game the most ever in the, my coaching career. Like, that was like the For most real? intense game. I was like, really, you know, couldn't couldn't watch these guys play. <laughs> like walking through your fingers, kind of. Those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that type of game, you know. Uh, Gosh. Yeah, they put up a fight. They really did. They, they did, and I also think, in some sense, when I played the game, I was calm. Mm. I know that you know. It's harder to adapt on a map where I haven't had the full experience for many years playing, right? And have all the solutions, right? Because you could also see they started playing without pressure um, compared to when they played in the first half. Yes. And you could feel like not giving up at that moment, like, okay, this looks bad. Then they throw some more curveballs and they're doing double uh, setups and all rotating. So the solutions were hard to find. But in the end, I think I was still calm in that sense that we knew this might happen. We yeah. knew we're not in the... It's not our best map, but we knew we can play it. And, and I just think, like, of course, it's the phase away, right? 12 5, 12 12. And now suddenly we start playing Counter Strike again yeah. in our time. And you see the and, comments, yeah. your fans are so yeah. used to it now. Yeah, yeah, your, cl like, your fans are just yeah. like, oh, you got your first phase game, boys, <laughs> strap in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. It just made the game even more interesting and yeah. more fun to play and watch. Oh, right. It's entertainment. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's entertainment. It's important, you know? Yeah, uh, okay. We needed, a, uh, we needed a viewership to go a little bit up. <laughs> but how do you shake it off at OT? Is there, a, like a, is there a motivational speech? Do you? Does everyone just kind of go, all right, so we're just going to... Is it just Carrigan on the mic making a call, like nothing's changed, nothing's different? Mm -hmm. Or do you know, how do you hit that, like, okay, fresh, I mean, like, fresh start? I think that's what's good about this team, you know? They, they never crumble. They, no. It just, you know, they... It was the basically the feeling that everybody that it's gonna be okay in the end, kind right. of like yeah, that's it, what I mean. The I mood was okay. Like the the comps were okay. The, everything was there was no fine. different from twelve five to twelve twelve when I was yeah. calling and they were playing. And I just think it's like everybody has that you know trust in each other. And if it doesn't work, we all agreed to what the plan was, and everybody's on board, right? Yeah. And I think it's just I think it's because we played so much together. We've been in this scenario so many times, and in the end. It felt like everybody was there, you know, on the server, on the game. And the game was hard, right? Yeah. We're playing Spirit, who was really hard, and Dunk is starting making good kills in, in mid on Vertigo, I remember. So I feel like some of the rounds we had a chance to close out yeah. to two and twos, but sometimes it's, it goes the other way. And yeah. in all time, it went our way with Rain winning the one on two in the end, right? And, and they, then the pressure went to them because I feel like the way they played from 12 5 to 12 12 compared to 12 12 to 16 14 was way different. Yeah. Because suddenly then a grasp of like we can do it and then it's just I just think it's experience from yeah. our point of view. So you know it's not like it got to that point, uh twelve twelve. It's not a drama, you know. It's like more like a, okay, here we go again. Oh great. Oh, yeah. right. There we are. Yeah. No, that's cool. I mean it's great for for you know, or the the up and coming IGLs to kind of hear how how you approach it in the sense that your comms don't change. Because I imagine, I mean, from my perspective it's very hard to be consistently calling as everything you call doesn't work. You start getting in your own head. You're like, okay, yeah. maybe I don't understand. Maybe I've, I've got it wrong. And you start maybe making 
sit like more crazy off the cuff calls that also don't work. And at that point you get into your own head, but you just kind of, there are, there are lots of reasons around didn't work. And one of them is a bad call, but it's not the only reason. I no, no. I mean, you can always screw up a call you, and then you win the round. Yeah. That you too. can also do a good call. You still lose the round. Yes. Yeah. I just, you just don't know a time that you can only analyze the game after you played it. You can't analyze while you're playing. You can only understand what you think is going to happen. Because if you think about what you should have done in a, in a round already, then you're already behind one step. If you keep thinking about, okay, I did this now, they want this round this way, you have to find out the solution, right? And sometimes you're just always one step ahead, behind or ahead of a caller. Mm. It's just how the nature of the game is. Like sometimes you just, I know when, when I'm in, in flow state, I know exactly what's going to happen in round next round and four rounds from now, what call I'm going to do, yeah. because I know how they're going to adapt. It's just how you do it by the book, right? And yeah. sometimes the book is why you're a bad caller. Yeah. Because um, you have to, think differently sometimes, but it's very hard to think outside the box at the right moment, at the right time in, in high pressure moments. That's good advice. That's really interesting. Uh, and then you talk about flow state, which leads me to, uh, well, the rest of these playoffs, you know, you take down Kalavita champions, you take down defending major champions, and then you're faced with Na'Vi. And you're kind of, I mean, a lot of people are pulling this face. I think 2% of Pickham's predicted Na'Vi in the vinyl, never mind winning it. And we get to map three, and I watched that bit POV. I saw Alexi's tweet, did you see it? Where he's like, if you want the definition of flow state, watch bits on Inferno. And he was so incredibly just locked in. But uh, I, I know it's a sensitive subject um, because that was, that was must, I imagine, very difficult to, uh, to stomach. Such a, such a map you're so familiar with, and it just nothing, nothing feeling like it's going right. What is your review when you, when you, when you, <clears throat> reflect back on map three? I think there's different ways, right? I think everybody took responsibility in part of their map, right? Um, what, about, what I liked the most about Frozen, he went for it in Banana. Yep. I think um, if he would have none, not that tried to adapt on the fly and, and play without Banana Control, that would kind of screw up situations where we used to be in, in, in calling a position, right? Um, I think obviously I could have played a little bit slower in some of the scenarios. I, didn't really focus on my crosshair, I kind of lost focus in the end, right? Yeah. Tried to analyze why, but maybe it's also the pressure of being playing on a high level for a whole month since Dharma, everything's been about the major, right? And you're down map free. Yes, yeah, you're there. This all, they're all about this map now and everything yeah. you did until this point doesn't matter, right? So I just think like we learned something from the game, but in the end, I think during the whole tournament, if you ask me, I still we have, I think we have a gear left on us in every single player. I don't think anybody hit their peak. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Brokey kind of hit a good peak in, in the group stage and also in playoff, but I didn't see Rain, Rubs um, or David. I think they all have that extra gear. Yeah. And it's funny to think that when you, when you look at Katowice as well, I don't think we're hitting into a level that's like why you need to win the tournament. And I've always said, if you want to win a major or win the Katowice Cologne, you need one guy to pop off and have a, a tournament of his life or yeah. being a huge factor on the server. And, and somehow we managed to do it with an all good team play, good map pool. Um, and you just have to wait. Sometimes your, your players are not going to be at the highest level uh, nine out of 12 months, but six out of 12 months, right? Yeah. So um, I put it down to we could have done a little better uh, all as a team, but I also think individual players could have um, hit a higher peak, but sometimes you just don't. It's like, yeah. what are you going to do? And mm. they hit, they played good. Let's put it down that way. They had good reason to see the side on Inferno. They kind of locked everything down that we, yeah. we tried to do. Yeah, and just from the outside looking in, it did look like the, their game plan was as strong as yours was against Spirit. Like, yeah. it felt like they'd really put yeah. some thought into yeah. it. Yeah. You know, if you look at it, it was kind of the scenario, like in Katowice, the underdogs going through the whole tournament, getting to the final, winning the tournament. Yeah. And lucky for us, <laughs> <laughs> it happened. You're the final <laughs> boss. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> for real. Yeah, but next time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should be yeah. underdog the whole way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, Maybe exactly. put in, put in Philip in the final. <laughs> No, yeah. now we're talking. No, 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 that's a Hollywood movie right there. <laughs> I've been waiting for that guy. Oh my god, he gets the call up. Yeah, in yeah. the final game. Yeah, a frozen sick. He can't yeah. make it. <laughs> Leo Philip Kopski. Oh, he's done it again. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, please. Okay, we should probably wrap things up. Let me just see if we can reflect. Uh, I think key takeaways um, about this being being an underdog and everyone can be everyone. I just want to kind of try and put a bow on this because if. It, like my toddler brain, when I hear everyone can be everyone, 
I'm like, well, that sounds terrible. Like, that, do, does that mean that something's wrong with the game? If everyone could be everyone, that, that's like saying a Sunday league group of dads and, you know, part-timers can walk in and beat Lionel Messi and I don't watch football, so I don't even know what team he plays for. But, you know, that guy, uh, that team, you know, what... I, I mean, to me, it started like mid CSGO times when you had different teams winning different tournaments and the competition getting, you know, stronger. There is uh, some, uh, you know, a uh, true story to that, what Finn said, in 1.6 you had like one team dominating a couple of tournaments, yeah. then uh, it's changed. But in CSGO it's been like that and now in CS2 with MR12 it's even worse. So it's like, it's really difficult to be that, you know, constant team yeah. getting there and winning everything. So Like you can't win, if you, like, if you don't lose, if you lose one silly clutch or one like half by against a half by in your if you find a way to win all pistol rounds then you can dominate in, in CS2 <laughs> yeah oh, so oh. pistol the uh, there is still second round <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay no, if, you, if you can win every pistol in every, every second, second round, round. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. no I think I think the way you're just talking about everyone can beat everyone is there is the, the gap between tire one and tire two has just been smaller and smaller and smaller for the past can, decade everyone can shoot everyone, everyone can shoot. everybody is sacrificing a lot there's a living out of playing cs2 now meaning the pool gets bigger and bigger for each players even if you're not a team you can maybe make money off streaming or playing fpl earning money that way and therefore you can commit your life to the game right right and i think just it just gets harder and harder and harder and and the young generation has a different way of playing different way of the game right so you just constantly see development uh, the next few years as well um mm. But I think that there is always something about the consistency, right? You can have doing something right, making all the play of making top four, right? But you're never promised a win. You're never promised winning a tournament, even if you're favorites and it looks good and you're in the best form. Uh, it just takes one team to have a live game. And mm. I think that's why football has been interesting for so many years. Yeah, there's favorites to win the Premier League or Champions League, but suddenly there's a team that's sitting at a equivalent high level and they get momentum and win. Yeah. And I think... That's the fascinating about sports. Nothing is never guaranteed. Wins are never guaranteed. Intel Extreme Matchup is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Kadia, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, One X Bet, and White Market. It is the final day of the groups here at IM Chengdu. With only two spots remaining, teams like Astralis, Mouse, VP and Liquid already secured them spots in the playoffs. By the end of the day, we'll find out which two teams will start in the semis and which will have to go the long way for the quarterfinals. In Group A, we have Heroic against G2. They will battle against each other in order to get one of those remaining two spots in the playoffs. Now, in the B group, it is way more complicated. First, it's going to be Cloud9 against FaZe on the A stream, and on the B stream, it's going to be FlyQuest against the Mega. The winners of the series are going to play against each other in order to get that desired player spot. All that and much more coming live to you from the Hibiscus City. Everybody, welcome to I Am Chengdu. Let's get inside.
yes, truly, last chance saloon here at IEM at Chengdu. Six teams still fighting, but only two spots up for grabs in those coveted playoffs. My name is Ferris Piz, joined by the usual suspects of YNK and Maniac. But we have a very special treat. Stanislaw Law is joining us up Hello. on the desk. Hello, um, I know it's been a tough couple of days for you guys. I'm sure you'd rather be playing than standing up here with us, but I appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing good considering the circumstances. Um, I'm loving my time here in China. I'm grateful to be here and I'm excited to be on the desk for the first time in a while and I'm excited to see some good Counter-Strike. I've heard that you're going to be going to see some of those guys just after we're done here, right? Yep. You excited? I'm very excited. Have you guys seen any real pandas or has this Bob uh, yeah. been the only one? I plan right? to. Bob. Just Bob. Bob yeah, he's Bob. good enough for We see us, Bob every right? day. Yeah, for me. I don't need any more than Bob. He, Bob he is, is enough. the cutest. Um, we'll dive into wildcard and you kind of root here uh, in just a moment, but uh, let's take a look at exactly what's on the cards today because uh, it's a little bit complicated. I think Aheku kind of prefaced it perfectly. We've got obviously the age stream schedule going down here, but when we look at Group B, um, that's where things get a little bit wild, right? Because a couple of teams, they've got quite a long road ahead of them if they want to make it into the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. That's the specificity of the format here. If you're in the Group B, we still have four teams fighting for one slot in the lower bracket. So we'd have to play two different rounds one will be at 1.30, one will be then later uh, 6 or 7.30 CET. Where we are yet to find this game, we still have to find the opponents that will be face Clam9 on one hand and then FlyQuest and their opponent as well. So it's going to be a bit complicated with Namiga here, but you know what, FlyQuest, there, there's, there's something to happen here. There's something to happen. It's in the air. You get it? The fairy tale run, maybe? Uh, it's, it's Jordan. It's, it's just, you know, he, he hypnotized me a little bit. <laughs> um, bottom part of the screen as well, Yanko, you want to explain that? Because uh, those are quite important games, even though all those teams have made it through to the playoffs. Yes, exactly. We have two games that decide whether a team goes straight into the semifinal or they start their playoff run in the quarterfinal. So this is basically a sort of a quarterfinal for these teams, right? Like if you win this, you skip uh, a phase. And then on top of all that, we have for the last game of the day, Heroic versus G2. That one is just to make it into the quarterfinal. I know, Stanislaw, for you, um, it was quite last minute that you guys knew that you were going to come here. Can you kind of give us some context of what you guys had to do in the couple weeks leading up to the tournament? Uh, it's been a roller coaster. Um, we thought we were going to come here with MOTM being our permanent fifth. So we were practicing really hard every single day for a month total with him. We get hit with the news that he cannot be our permanent fifth. So we had to kind of, uh, you know, make some long term plans change. And then we get hit with news on the day of travel here that uh, our star player, JBA, gets food poisoning and he will not be joining us. And so our love, uh, our lovely coach, Horvi, puts the uh, gear back on and gets in the server. And he did great for his uh, what, what we expected. But um, yeah, we're just disappointed because we worked so hard for a month straight to, uh, to come here and show something that we were capable of. And it just didn't, it didn't work out. Yeah, I think that's unfortunate. Also, probably maybe let us know what was it that he ate since we'll be going to Dallas in a month. Yeah, just yeah, so give us we a can, heads up. That's just so we can stay away <laughs> from it. But I mean, it's unfortunate. Were you able to still get something out of these games for, for yourself and for your team? It's like small lessons, you know, like for the young guy, uh, Slight, for instance, um, he gets to play against top tier players, um, get some stage experience at a tier one tournament. For me, I, I've, I've kind of been used to this environment. You know, there were like small lessons, but I just wish we had our actual team here to get the big things uh, under, under our belt. And the experience is important for the young guys. Yeah, I mean, we, we always try to explain to the viewers when there is like a substitute situation, the mindset of a team going in, like, can you give us a few words about how you entered these games actually having lived there? Yeah, when you go into a, a match with your full five, you have this expectation to win and you, you feel prepared and you feel ready. And then you get hit with the news that your star player is not going to be here and your coach has to play. So you just let go of all expectation. And you just have fun and make the best of it. That's all you can do. Give me a little bit of insight onto kind of NACS at the moment, because just looking back at the major, it was kind of more about the South American teams, the Brazilians really popping off. Um, what do you feel like the current state is in NA? I think it's coming back a little bit. Um, Brazil's helping out a lot. I think they're making things more competitive. Some Brazilian teams are coming back. Legacy, as far as I know, is coming back to NA. So we'll be able to practice against them. Um, and yeah, I feel like people are working harder in NA because they just want to get back to the top. Uh, we're not quite there yet. We need to, it's really hard for us to break into the tier one circuit. Um, but yeah, we just have to take the opportunity when we get it. So ho hopefully we can do that. What's the, uh, what's the state of the, the pool of new talent? In, a, in your regard, because obviously you're one of the most experienced one out, out there. And I always feel like it's a sign of a healthy scene to have this pipeline for new talents. What's your take on that? I get some water because it's dry. It's, re it's really <laughs> dry. It's hard. I tried. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've kind of uh, collected the two most promising ones in Slight and JBA. But, you know, I've been looking around for a while and it, it, it is hard. So hopefully some new players can pop up and, and surprise us. 
we're going to be seeing Cloud9 take it to the stage as our first game on the Airstream side of things. Obviously, you uh, met up with them yesterday. What are they actually like in the server? What is it like being on the receiving end of C9? Uh, Mirage was brutal. They're a very good Mirage team. Uh, on Overpass, I think they have a lot of holes. So if we do end up seeing Overpass in the pool, I think they must have talked about what went wrong yesterday because we're playing... Uh, they're playing a tier two NA team with our coach, so they should not have struggled that much, and they did. So hopefully they fix those issues for today. Okay, interesting. I want to dive into some of the teams that we've already seen moving through to the playoffs and make some assumptions about, you know, uh, comparing their journey in the recent major and them earning a spot here, because it's kind of interesting to look at a particularly liquid. They didn't even make it out the RMR, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is one of the the fields through which I wanted to, to look at these teams. L liquid is a good example. Astralis is another one as well. And maybe have your take on that. A, f a failure at the major or to qualify to the major, I feel like puts you in a position here to be more hungry than the rest. And I feel like in context, we have to look at it and it's kind of materializing here. Liquid bouncing back. Is that something that you had seen coming? You could imagine happening? How connected is that to the failure at the major? Am I just waffling? That can be. I thought they were done You'll after never. the RMR. I, like we were at the RMR with them and just seeing the state of their team, like they were devastated and I thought they were done. I thought they were going to make a change. But then coming here, you can just observing them, you see this new energy that they have and they all feel very much closer and positive. I don't know if they must have had a lot of talks together and they feel like they have a, a new outlook on the game and it's clicking in the server. And I think I actually predicted, I talk with my team all the time about this. I predicted them to make the final. So I hope, I hope I'm right. Also just a little bit considering they failed result wise, but you got to practice against them too. What was the feeling? against them in practice they're good um when they're on they're on but also like many other teams i don't know if it's a counter-strike thing counter-strike two thing it's making teams inconsistent but you know when you're off you're off like it's either there's no middle ground you, you need to be consistent uh find a way throughout all of the bugs that we currently have to just be consistent and i think a lot of teams are struggling but yeah i think liquid has a good chance because i think they're figuring out how to be that consistent team you, you talked about like you felt changes could be coming do you believe it would have been warranted like was that was the magnitude of the failure enough of proof of concept or would you give time to a project like that what's your take on that i think i would have given a little bit more time because my philosophy is always you know you're trying to build this perfect puzzle and maybe they tried the the pieces in the certain positions of you know i think it takes three months to build the perfect puzzle so maybe once that uh doesn't work out just try something else and see if that works out because sometimes if you don't make those changes maybe it's just a simple position swap magic can happen um but yeah i think it, i would give them a little bit more time and the org seems to have done so and it's paying off so far. Astralis were also another team that failed to make it out of the RMR and find themselves in the playoffs here in Chengdu. Um, what was your initial take when you heard Device was going to become an IGL? It's like it's a new meta, I think, op IGL. It's just maybe it gives them more control as an opera i've always thought that would, if i was an opera it would be really fun you know you get to control your plays and your picks because the game should be centered around your opera and also your star player so i don't know i think he's going to really excel at it but then surely you've got so much more on your mind right it's not just about focusing on the op and then calling here there occasionally like i want to do this around me like like surely you can give some insight into how much goes on in an in-game leader's mind yeah, it's, it's it's hard when you're in the server to focus on your own game. You're always focusing on, you know, your, what your teammates are doing in the macro. Um, but he has so much experience. I don't think he's going to have a problem with it. And he's a, an amazing opera. I don't, I, yeah, I think he's going to excel in the role. Oh, so you don't think his, his individual level is going to be impacted by that? Because that's usually one of the ways we look at it. And I was personally very pissed about the electronic tryout as a leader. Didn't like that one at all. And now with device, do you think his level can maintain? Like he's got what it takes for that? I think so. I think... Um, if he gets more experience under his belt as time goes on, right now he's all guns blazing and it's working well. Um, but as time goes on, he's, he's only going to get better. So to start this way, it's it's a pro it's a really positive sign. What was your take on the phase game yesterday? Astralis phase managing to take him down. Yeah, I think obviously it was extremely dominant. But to be honest, I think Astralis is now in that honeymoon phase, right? Like where Device is just starting to IGL. He's extremely motivated to do so. Everything is new. Everything is exciting. Stone and Yabby feel like, you know, they're back into their role. So that's exciting for them. They feel unleashed in a sense. But let's see it three months down the line where, you know, some of these other teams aren't as fatigued and you start running into some problems and brick walls, how that problem solving is going to go. Very quickly, Stanislaw, you said you predicted Liquid to be in the finals. Who else did you see being their opponent there? I thought Astralis. Astralis? Oh, I mean, you've been right. predicting very well so far. <laughs> but uh, we need to find out the other teams that will be joining them. And uh, this one's going to be a tough road ahead because not just one W, two is required for either FaZe or Cloud9 to make it through to the playoffs. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. 
do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes. It's yet double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple. It's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. All right, I'm here with Perfecto. You got Anchor the B-bomb site. So what information can we give to the people at home if they want to get better at anchoring B? Okay, first of one, it's, of course, it's anti-rush. You need to, like, ready for rush. So when you go to city spawn, like when round started, you watch which spawn you have. If you have bad spawn, you can ask your teammates who play on B as well. Like, let's go do it anti rush. He, they go first, do it like Molly, or maybe if he bad spawn, you can just go run, dodge flash and peek. So you have like first step, it's anti rush. Second step, it's like, uh, Salt guy give you smoke and monster. It's like default of the team. Sure. So you just after first step, it's entourage. You just uh, wait the second step. It's like contact B or contact split B, like something. So you just want, need to dodge flash and spray the smoke. It's a classic, but I want to tell okay. the everyone because it's like if you do it this, you can win like all face it. If you do it the exactly right, you know. After the you do it the steps, you can like. Hold the smoke. Yeah. You have this from CSGO, this position. It's like we speak, it's like Nitro in our team. We say if you do it Nitro, you stay like that. Okay. If uh, tourists play like that, he don't see you. Yeah. And you can just hold the smoke because you ha it's very nice if you save uh, utility on the last time in the round. So when you play on the left wall over yep. here, you know, you see a lot of people do this, but is there like a secret? Like, is there good positions to play or better positions to play? Uh, you know, yeah, it's, I think it's best position because, you know, this position, it's all time grenades, like yes. from, from this, from this. And uh, when you play close to monster, close to this cave, uh, you need to play with teammates. You can stay on this, on this. Mm -hmm. So you need to play a left side. You need to eat this all flashes, just do the damage for like, uh, for help your teammates, so yeah, this position. If you have USP, not the this. Sh yeah, yeah, not the P2K. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have smoke and monster, yeah, uh, it's only twenty bullets, right? And yeah, yeah. it's very bad if you like shoot and sure. have, so you can do it like uh, some like five or four bullets from USP. Yeah. If somebody stay in smoke, you hear it. Yeah. You dodge, and then you spam. take, and then four. Ah, okay. I think it's. I not see like no one do it. It in. Uh, like processing right now. Okay, okay. So I guess if we go boil it down again, always play anti-rush early because this is the main side sure, of the team's sure, rush. Sure, yeah. Uh, then always be ready for a pop flash because that's next on the list. Mm -hmm. And then after delay and give your team info. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's right. It's easy steps to win the face it and take. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Vector. The start of a long and potentially bumpy road ahead. It's not one, but two victories required today if either FaZe or Cloud9 want to earn themselves a place in the playoffs. FaZe finding themselves in this situation after faltering to Astralis yesterday. Cloud9, Yanko, you've been branding this team as a consistently inconsistent, right? Yeah, absolutely. Re reliably unreliable, you know, because just as soon as you start to have some expectations from them, they go on and lose 12 rounds in a row to FlyQuest. And just when you've given up on them, there they go and make the major playoffs, right? Like, and, and you can't really pin. All of a sudden, Exile is back. Oh, wait, he's not. You know, it's really hard to pinpoint what it is that they need. Maybe maybe an opera, <laughs> perhaps? Yeah. Look, we, we have the chance and the luxury to have you on the desk. and. 
God knows we've talked about this sniper situation. We've waffled a lot about it, but I would like to have your take on this whole, hey, Perfecta Snipes, and here is Boomich, and maybe it's Axel here. Surely for, that, that cannot work. Like, I'm not crazy, right? You are crazy. I'm crazy? Yeah. Can that work? <laughs> My 2016 Optic team, we had this kind of mix where anybody could op. Even I picked it up sometimes. Terry could op. Mixwell could op. Even Rush picked it up sometimes. Like, if it works, it works. That's the difference. You guys could op. <laughs> These guys cannot <laughs> op. <laughs> Sure. You know, I think that's like a, a small difference there. And of course, everybody remembers the 2016 legendary Optic run. Moving on. Right? Uh, <laughs> right? Like. I think the difference is it doesn't sound like they're happy to warp, whereas it sounded like you guys w were okay with some times we were in the big green. Whereas we asked Perfecto about it. Man just rolls his eyes. He's like, yeah, I guess I have to do this. Like, you have to be happy about having that gun in your, in oh, your hand, sure. right? I mean, if they're not happy about it, then they need to fix that problem themselves. Uh, moving on to talk a bit about uh, not frozen sleeping, but Cloud9 oh, in he's, the server. He's, doing... he's meditating. Exactly. He's getting in the zone. Yeah, I can't, can't uh, BM him too much for that. Um, Axile, what's the story with this man versus FaZe in particular? I don't know. I think that's what FaZe wonders as well, but he just seems to be really comfortable playing against FaZe. Uh, we all remember that Dallas game right in the playoffs when Cloud9 went to mm. win the, 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 tro lift the trophy in Dallas. That was a big one. And even when they were struggling as a team, right, when he was struggling individually, he would just show up. I don't know if it's the style of FaZe that he feels comfortable with, you know, all the defaults and whatnot, but he's definitely going to need to show up today as well for Cloud9 to have a chance. What kind of version of Axel did you feel like you were on the receiving end of He was yesterday? on point. I think um, I was in a one versus two on overpass to close the game out and just the way he killed me, it was just, you know, he's on point for this tournament. And you need him to be on point, right? Because this has been one of the players that we've been looking at and going, well, oh, is his neck on the chopping block? Yeah, and listen, Freya, it depends. What are we considering? If we're considering short-term victory for Cloud9, yes, you absolutely do need Axile to step up 100% because it pushes the, the ceiling of Cloud9 immediately. If you're looking for long-term solutions, it just confuses everybody when he starts playing good. I thought I had the solution for a while. I think Hobbit's Optic, uh, Optic rather, and then the fact that he's so versatile, I would already have signed him the extension and find a new solution. But then Axile is popping off and then I have to rethink everything. So now it confuses me long term. I'm not a big fan of it. Well, now you get your thoughts together. We've got Trying. a moment because we're going to be checking in with Axel, courtesy of Hecken. All right, Axel, let's start with the easy question. What is the overall vibe right now in the team? Uh, vibe is good. Uh, like, it should be good in China because <laughs> everything crazy. Everything is crazy, uh, especially the fans. Uh, yeah, <laughs> especially the fans. Okay, but when it comes like to your team, like and especially like to you, whenever you guys like get to play against Phase, and especially you, you kind of, I think statistically, you're getting like a Phase buff for some reason. Like, why is it like that? Why do you usually like have like better numbers specifically against Phase? Mm, maybe because everyone wants to win against them, and uh, maybe it's something like maybe routine to play against them <laughs> and uh, yeah and now uh, like we are both uh, after major uh, I think we are both not in the best conditions so it should be interesting would you say that maybe there was like a, a bit of a burnout after the major there was like you know like a sprint and here you come back like you're trying to like readjust and go back in you know like in shape uh, yeah, because um, anyway, on major you gave it, gave to it a lot of emotions, and uh, anyway, after major you have some day offs, and uh, of course it's like. Влияет, как сказать? Ну влияет, да. Like influences. Okay, influence on the your game. And one like last thing, the thing is that right now you are playing against Facecon, but you're gonna have like another series in the end of the day. And if we're looking at like the rankings, like those two remaining teams are not that strong. So is this the series that you need to win in order to actually get to the playoffs? Uh, yes, I think uh, if we will win this match, um, maybe we have uh, good chances to win tournament. <laughs> I think because it's an important game, and uh, I hope we will show good CS. All right, then looking forward to seeing the good CS. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so Axel feeling like Cloud9 and FaZe aren't in their peak form after the Major. I, I think that's kind of evident with some no. of the things we've seen going down. It is evident, but I don't think both teams are in the same position. When you're FaZe, your proof of concept has been firmly established in the last few months. Like You have your formula, it's working, you've had incredible results. You might be a bit exhausted, I can I can give it to you, it's okay. But Cloud9, you're fighting for survivability of your project. You're, you're fighting to prove that this is working. And yes, it's harsh, yes, it's unfair, but you have to give 200% to every single event if you want the community and yourself to believe that this is working. So they can't really, but this man is helping out in that project. Hobbit sees it. He, he sees it that he's playing for his job, really, and a lot of these guys are, because I'm sure that Cloud9 is very unhappy with how this project is going, considering the investment that they've made, right? So soon they're going to they're going to have to show results on a consistent basis or there will be changes. Stanislaw, what's your take on kind of Hobbit and his career arc? Because we don't forget, he's a former major champion, right? He's been around the block. He's been part of so many teams. Do you feel like how he's being used in Cloud9 is kind of, uh, you know, uh, apt for him as a player? I think we don't see a lot of what he brings to a team. Not only is he a great player, but just interacting with him at tournaments, he's a really nice guy. And I'm sure he kind of is the glue that holds the team together when they're struggling. So if they are going to get through this rough patch that they are going through, it's going to be because of him, I think. Yes, see? I'm telling you, I'm trying to get in this idea that Hobbit is super valuable. He's so valuable as a player. He's low resource. You don't need a whole lot to entertain him. He does whatever the hell is needed. He's much stronger now than he was at the beginning of CS2 as well. Like, Yankerson is fighting for his contract. If I was, and Lord knows who would put me in that position, but if I had the deciding power, I would, I would have my trust. Faze, on the other side of things. Um, tell me the story of what happened versus Astralis yesterday. Um, <clears throat> there was, after the major run, I was ready to give FaZe a one get out of jail free card. Okay. A one series where, hey, you don't really show up. You meet an Astralis that's fresh out of the metaph metaphorical blame F jail. They were ready horny. to pound. They were, they were, they were horny. They were horny as hell. And it showed on the server. So I'm ready to give that to him. The problem is that that pass is now gone. And I feel like when you're a team like FaZe and you have the pedigree, there should be a little bit of ego involved. You've just, you've just absolutely got smashed by Astralis. Bounce back now, like immediately. Uh, that, that's it. Keeping up with the storyline, FaZe versus Astralis in China, you know, things are all going according to the narrative there. But yeah, absolutely. And they're going to also, I mean, in a position where you have to play two series, Cloud9, who historically has sort of, you know, a comfortable game against you. And also the veto is going to be important, right? Like, what does FaZe veto? I, is it going to be Overpass or Anubis? Because mm. but if whatever is not vetoed, that's going to be Cloud9's pick. Have you got a take on this, considering, you know, obviously you played C9 yesterday, you said there was a couple of holes that you were surprised that you were able to kind of see in your game? Right, I think Overpass was a little bit weaker from their side. It seemed very predictable from what I studied on them. Uh, I didn't really see a lot of uh, diversity in their gameplay, especially on their CT side. It's very exploitable from what I could see. So I'm sure FaZe is seeing the same things. Uh, so like I said um, to you guys earlier, I think Cloud9, after playing us on Overpass and seeing us exploring their holes a little bit, I, I hope that they discussed that and, and improved on it today. Happening again, uh, do you have a, one or two maybe examples of things you were ready to exploit on Overpass? Like from a like mechani mechanical micro point? Right, so Boomich and Axel play A together, and the most standard thing that they do is they throw both mollies, one towards playground and one towards mid. And if you smoke both of them and just take that space right away, they're going to feel like they're under a, an immense amount of pressure, and it's very easy to take that control from them. But um, the things that they they were very good at adapting later on to that, you know, they brought Hobbit over from B, um, they started to push B, um, but yeah, once you kind of uh, set the pace against them, they get really nervous. There we go. Right. And I think we'll see, you know, FaZe has had their own little adventures at the Major when it comes to the veto, you know, some were successful, some were not so successful. Here they go with one of their strengths, which is also in a way a weakness for Cloud9. You know, but I think overpass is important for them if they're going to potentially win this tournament, right? Like, they can't have so many weaknesses in the map pool right now. I mean, the reason why they're introducing Vertigo is, I think, because they have no confidence in their overpass or Anubis. I think, potentially, Anubis is their perma ban now, except for maybe a team that's, like, it's really low on their depth chart or, and something along those lines. So, yeah, a, big, a win on overpass would go a long way for FaZe's confidence and their run at this tournament. And it's also a map where it was very illustrative, the changes they've made in order to accommodate Frozen. 
because for the longest time we had rain. I mean, in my time, whenever you were also with the Optic time, famously, rain, absolute trendsetter on overpass, we were talking about it all the time. Now he plays Pillar. Like, can you imagine rain playing Pillar on the B side? That's a map where they've done everything they could to put Frozen in good positions. You need to see return immediately just to know that you're making the right choice and to feel it on the server. I mean, classically, when we talk about phase, we can talk about the stars because there's plenty of them on the side. But how's Carrigan tasting? for you today. <laughs> How's your Kerrigan tasting How's today? How's it tasting today? <laughs> Pretty good, right? Yeah, he, he's really leading by example. Uh, shout out to the title on that graphic right there. I, I do think it's a little bit of a double-edged sword, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I think he's got a lot on his shoulders right now. Obviously, a crew with him that is far from peaking, far from being at the very best. And then as a leader, I think you have to sort of compensate a little bit, maybe give that a little extra energy. I don't know if he's got more in the tank to do it once again. But when you tell me Kerrigan is the second highest player in phase, then that uncovers an ugly truth that's behind it. Like, where's the rest of the forest? It doesn't taste good, Freya. If that's the case, you know, how does it taste? It doesn't the taste milk. good. It shouldn't be the case, you know, and even Rops has had a little bit of an up and down uh, performance in terms of form. You know, I, th I think you expected, you hoped for maybe a little bit more from him at the Major. Here he's had a sort of a resurgence, so I think Phase, as it shows, like their runs have been incredible. They made final of every single yeah. event in CS2, right? But they have nothing to show for it. There's been zero titles after, you know, Sydney. So I think that's the problem really for them. And, and if, when you're on a team like FaZe, that doesn't matter making all the finals. You want to win the trophies. You'd rather go out in groups at one tournament, but then win the next one than always being so close and not getting the W. Ways the bridesmaid, but never the bride. Um, now we have the map cemented. Stanislaw, who do you see taking the W on this one? I'm going to go with FaZe. I think from what I saw playing against Cloud9 on Overpass, I wasn't impressed. And then going into Nuke, from what I saw yesterday, the way FaZe played Nuke, I think there was a lot of slop, and I think they're gonna clean that up today. I saw Robs die in uncharacteristic ways. He also had to get like really important 3Ks to win them the rounds. I don't think we're gonna see that kind of same style today. I think they're gonna be more well organized today because of Kerrigan. So I, yeah, I'm gonna go with FaZe 2-0. I'll side with you as well. I, I have FaZe. I do think that the, the kick in the butt they got from Astralis was the good glass of water with lemon juice you need after the hangover. They got it here, they're back now. Electrolytes and all, they're ready. Glass of water and lemon? You never you, do that? That's a do, trick. You that's do that trick. to your stomach from all the acid you but have from drinking? It will help you with the acid. acid. It's burgers, it's coke. No, no, no. It's, no it's, you, need some, need. You, need, you need something Don't, greasy Someone mute this mic immediately. Like you, you need, you need Don't grease. Don't send that information, that's wrong. You need Nobody grease. listen to this man. And also, listen, from what Astralis did to face yesterday, Cloud9 is just going to keep piling on. They will decide to be good again. Axel will remember how to play CS. He has a field day against FaZe. That's it. They're out. They can go. And, and now sort you of believe it is over, it. Yanko. FaZe are definitely going to be winning this. We've got Overpass, Nuke, and Mirage if we do so require it. And what is going to be a marathon day of Counter Strike for one of these two spots. Alex and Chad, take it away. Now, typically, I'd side with Mathieu. You know, he's a wise man, he's well studied. However, I know Yanko is somewhat of a professional when it comes to hangovers. Uh, maybe follow his advice, I don't know. You know, I'm just continuing to spread misinformation on the internet. And my partner in crime for this one is none other than Chad Sponge Birchall. We've got FaZe Clan on the CT side, Cloud9 on the T side. How are you doing today, bro? Uh, look, uh, I'm, I'm excited for this best of three that we have because uh, it's going to continue this journey for FaZe for finals. Or Ace maybe maybe Yanko's bang on, and uh, Cloud9 will dismantle them a full with ease. Start. Here we go. We were just talking about this, about pistols and the way in which B finishes seem to be your preference in most teams. Preference. I missed the smoke, Alex. Ah, that will make things difficult, uh, especially when you've lost at 4v5 early, thanks to Rain. Finding in a forward position, Electronic already cut down, and just like that, Brokey's jewel Barettas make mincemeat of Electronic. It's rain connecting shots. He will eventually go down, but Perfecto walking with a limp, and Hobbit, well, no longer in this world. It's a nice double kill from Brokey. Maybe they're gonna ask for a do over. Yeah, can, can we, we try reset? that one again? Well, especially when you miss the Heaven Smoke and you don't even get out a monster. That is one of the most miserable ways that you could start your T-side pistol. Like, having an unforced error of missing a smoke. That one and that leaves you with that. I, I think the, the kids are calling that an ick. Yeah, though, that's icky. Look at this angle, bro. Ugh. That's icky. Sorry for the What's people. What's your ick? Yeah, let us know. Missing you till on the pistol? <laughs> we had to make some TikTok videos. Yeah. Oh, did you see the one where uh, Rick was uh, guys getting hit by really slow moving cars? <laughs> <laughs> no, the next one will be breathing. Yeah.
Okay, we've got a deep fountain smoke, and Brokey's taking early control. Playground's the angle he's holding. Who's supporting him? Wow, he's just... Frozen's in connector. He'll he's be fine. He's up against the Glocks. He, Alex, he's fine. he knows He knows that he's only got the Glocks, right? But he, he's, he's missed all his shots. He's, he's got gonna be it. fine, Alex. Yeah. See, look, the round's oh, okay. Frozen's here. It's fine. He's just lost the M4. That's all. Right? Yeah, you don't stress. This is all good in the hood. This is going exactly how FaZe had planned. Boom. And then he gets four with the SMG, saves the M4. And he can now drop the AWP and he can to Brokey. Drop the AWP because of the SMG frag. See? It's all part of the plan. See, Brokey offered himself up to facilitate the AWP. I understand. Because if he got all the kills, he wouldn't have had it. Okay, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Let's go. Let's see how Cloud9's first gunny looks. Saw Eddie at the printer again. Yes. Neo was also supporting him. Making sure the printouts come out. All right, Eddie, yeah, I want multiple pages. Black and white, no color necessary. Oh, nice little oh. molly there from Robs. Denied the space, but Electronic and Axile will brute force their way through. Smoke flash and it's looking good in the hood. Discussing rain over towards B. Well, let's see if him and the old master splinter Carrigan can hold on. There will be a lot of pressure coming their way. Is this indicative of a B finish with well, three yeah, starting this way? Definitely so. And uh, FaZe had actually been quite heavy towards A. They started Brokey, Robs, and Frozen to lock down that A site. A wood molly spilling over. Rain. All good as a redeploy of a monster smoke lands. Robs and Brokey have been able to take back over towards the B bomb site. Frozen now playing sentry for information in the back of A. And if we take stock. We can see that there's three smokes, a flash, and a molly for the Cloud9 finish. As overpass goes, slow and steady. Oh, they're going for a boost. Axel's watching this. And the safety of that boost is definitely being rewarded. Let's just see how, despite the pre-aim. Dragon's pushing. He's thinking about it. And he's done it dry. Taking down Electronic against the rifle. Now Brokey's AWP is revealed. This has gone from bad to worse for Cloud9. Mission, rip it up, put it in the bin. Axile gets chipped away. It could go down to the... Could have gone down to the AWP. It was just the, it, the trigger was jammed. Uh, yeah. It got stuck. Horrible. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, I need to make sure he goes to his weaponsmith. It's going to be 3-0 for FaZe. Cloud9 saving three of their rifles. And I expect to see a different looking round as the full gunnies come out. Not into the next. Was, so because FaZe had 4B there. Was it just not an... They started 3A. And then it very, very quickly worked out that Boomic was just puffing up his chest. Yeah, because you didn't see any A control utility you didn't see really anything. applying a lot of pressure, right? Yeah. So you're not feeling the threat on A. And they rotated the biggest weapon over. And here it is. Oh. Uh. Yeah, see, there was a delay on it. Just like the revolver. Yeah, scratching the back of your head after these for the start. It's not a dream start. Your map pick, you know, you want to come and hit the ground running so far. The pistol with the miss smoke. Yeah, it So did. that's a sign of things to come. And, you know, uh, Chad Birch will score a counter-strike. T-side overpass is hard. Very hard. Yeah, that's what he says. Okay. And he might be right. And now they were about to uh, take these saved guns with some upgraded pistols and what you tool. Oh, it's the snake. It is the snake. I'm familiar with this. I credit Apex with it, but I don't know why. No, because they would always do these they more do contact do plays. Look, look at them go. And Apex would lead the charge. I'm a snake. That's a reference for the boomers out there. Ooh, and it's working. Frozen went looking and instead has gone straight down. Big pick from Boom. Rotation through. Rain first to receive. Throwing out Util to delay. Axile with the bomb on his back. Forced into the truck by the flame. We're going to badger them. <laughs> <All right>. Mushroom, <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> nice. Weebles his way through. Trying to erect a boost. Oh, and then they clear the smoke. It's actually quite inspired. It hasn't worked out for them. Oh, oh a lot of damage onto Axar, but now with the code punched. You've got a tough retake here. If your eyes on the Rob's flank, that would be the initiation back in. Does he have backs turned? There are... No Ooh. defuse kits? Ooh, back turned there. He didn't quite expose it. it. was Hobbit considering it. No defuse kits? Yeah, I don't know if you're really going for this, especially now you've lost Carrigan as well. Don't you want to keep those rifles that... AK and a no scope. Oh, look at Robs. Look at the discipline. He could have them both. Huge on the flank. Uh, they need to get on the defuse. Perfecto can win this with the deke, but they're on the defuse in time. It wasn't planted for him in bathrooms. Wow, phase they convert, and they've got to thank Robs for that. A triple kill on the flank. Trigger discipline galore, and a, just a half second to spare. Found a kit. You take that. I really, I think for Cloud9, that only makes things worse. You really feel like that was yours. 
This is the no-scope. Yeah, they started playing forward, so looking for the jewels. And there's Rops, we say keep your eye on the flank. A fantastic little double. Good shot from Perfecto Shaw, but the triple from Rops. You beauty. And 4-0 for FaZe Clan. I think no matter what happens in this matchup, the uh, winner of this will go into the next game as the favorite. I don't even care that Cloud9 lost to FlyQuest in the opener. So it doesn't matter who they face, uh, Namiga or FlyQuest. I would say that either of the winners of this one will be the favoritino. That's the official terminology. Is Rops, well, he's committed to this. Ouch. Hobbit. Far, really fast on that clear. Knows Rops' tendencies. This is the problem. The CT side of Overpass looking for a response in a number disadvantage. Pushing out B feels like a death sentence. Trying to take short water control with losing Con. So many different angles that you have to deal with. So posturing forward in the bathrooms from Frozen and Brokey as they look to fortify. We take a look at the movements of Boomich. You can see transitioning back. Axel will scoop up the bomb. This is telling of a B finish. So wanting to test Rain and Carrigan. Playing quite committed towards Monster. Carrigan playing on the jiggle with the smoke. Also has a molly for good measure. Rain, without any util, just going to have to hit the domes. What he does best. 45 seconds. Carrigan and Rain got an awful lot to do. They have been smoked, but you can see Electronics preparing to proc a flash. Brokey rotates over now. Oh, it's too late. Yeah, Carrigan to trouble. Rain in the molly. Potential double on the plate. Doesn't get it. Sight is lost, and this one even less favored on the retake. Molly will spread. It will de deny the plant initially, but with 20 seconds left, there's no way in here for Brokey unless he gets an overextension given his way. Another molly for Frozen. It's going to be too late, but Axel's uh, low. Oh, wait. He has actually been forced off. 10 Time. seconds. This gets really uncomfortable now. They have to keep their cool. If you could just find Axel, it gets awkward for them. That's what he tries, but behind the sandbags, he's punching in the code. Can't find the angle. Oh, a little bit of an opportunity there that could have been round winning. An understandable risk taken by Brokey, but it does translate into Cloud9's first round. It would be smarter for Frozen to save. There's only going to be the 1400 loss going into the next. It could be a touch and go by. Everybody, to would have everybody would have just enough. And yeah, I think picking up the AWP, Brokey will be able to buy it. A bit overextended, isn't, isn't it? it? So Let's see where it is. Pretty sure it's in the hands of Electronic. Ah, uh, yeah, found it. Yeah, he's got it. So uh, Electronic sent the signal with the shot, and that'll be the first round for Cloud9. Great work delaying with the incendiaries. Oh no, wait. No. Okay, he doesn't want it. He didn't want the AWP. Well, that's fine. We're not going to have the same conversation we every, uh, have every day of the week about Cloud9, are we? No, no, we're we don't not. have to do it. No, everyone understands. Yeah, and if you don't. Cloud9, don't have an all. There we go. Is that it? It's done. Cool. All right, Boomich. Content. I like Boomich as a hype man. feel like he definitely... Uh, Is it because of his singing career? Yeah. Uh, part of that, you know. Oh. I get hyped up listening to Boomich songs in the shower. Who doesn't? Voice of an angel. Interesting approach to the boost here from uh, Rops and Rain. Different angle, maybe not going to be pre-aimed. He says, oh, you poke your head out again. You could be a dead man. You can see he's not pre-aiming the, the angle. There's a chance here. Quick from it, Rops profits. Great start, first blood drawn. Cloud9 already off kilter. I guess just hopefully close towards Monster in case there was a reaction yeah. trying to deal with the boost. And they do have to search and try and punish B. It will be another B-side finish. You can see a Monster Smoke deployed. A nade straight down the gullet of Electronic. And they're going to try and come into Carrigan's domain. Oh, Out of bullets. Have. Yeah, but Flash and the Electronic will profit. Now with a fresh mag, he's found the frag. 2v4. Nice find. A dink at least. Electronic's in trouble. Brokey. Yeah, he just gives him the fight. Not shying away from the engagement. Brokey classic. Good support of utility from Rops there to bail out Carrigan. And speaking of Carrigan, he'll grab another in fine form in this tournament. Carrigan, while some of his individuals have been lacking, especially yesterday as we saw Astralis take care of business to find themselves a spot in the Chengdu playoffs. And that flash, perfect. You can see Boomich coming out of the smoke, hand over his eyes. Cloud9 have enough for yet another buy. 
ambitions as far as a Perfecto Deagle and a Electronic Galilla concerned. Oh, wow, they're putting Brokey solo A. That's a lot of faith. The aggressive A utility speaks of more. The smoke and the molly combo, but there's all the ruse. Brokey will need to make sure he keeps himself alive. It looks like they are going for one of these contact plays. They're not looking to use utility. And oh, if Brokey just posted on the line, he would have had a freebie. Well, they did this before and they got into the site. They can just walk toilets. Long, a gap as well. You can see Brokey's on an internal timer. He's searching for this crawl, but they're all holding the close wall. This is going to get... He's going to get overwhelmed, Chad. He's in so much trouble. Frozen trying to throw out some utilities. Actually, flashed his teammate, I think. Just got a leg. Yikes. Oh, wow. Axile and Boomage with white screens. Find the double kill and, I would assume, the round. Is that a retake you're going for? I sincerely doubt it. Well, that was FaZe essentially being outmaneuvered. They've got heavy B, the rotation back, the space taken, and just the contact play. So Cloud9, to get their second. Do you think that, that the pep in their step was uh, initiated when they didn't find Brokey on that line you saw him fall off of? You know, like once they were like, oh, no one's resisting, keep going? I think they were going for it again because the retake where Rops came. Yeah. Yeah, that was an enemy flash. Oh, it was. Thank you. But he's still got a leg shot off, which is wild. Uh... No, but I, I think they were going for the same play because they, when they had the three saved AKs after the first gun round of the two upgraded pistols, they did a similar play, right? They contacted in towards A and they had a 5v5. Actually, they had a 5v4 uh, where Rops came around the world and flanked and they picked that up. So wanting to rinse and repeat that round and thinking, hey, if we play the post plant better, we can secure it. Well, this time they had the openers coming in their favor. Your boomage, right? You know that the, they don't necessarily have a dreamy, uh, an idyllic, all the nades. And you also know that the two rounds you've won have been on the A site. Does that mean that you're expecting them to have to invest more resources to that side of the map? Is this where you try and return to be? Yeah, well, the big part of this is conditioning the sites, and, and that's what I'm saying about being outmaneuvered. So Carrigan's gone, oh, he's going to finish towards B again. That's why he started four towards B. So uh, as far as chasing the tail, I would say phase are now. So what is the next decision? Well, maybe go aggressive and stall them out. They've done the same opening utility, smoke molly combo. There's plenty of more bodies behind this, but I feel like you're going to have to go all in to try and win this fight right here, right now. Rosen's got an awful lot to do as he commits to this angle. Trying to jump spot audibly. Well, Boomish knows bullets came his way. So at this point, just hit the brakes because as a CT, you can't hang around when the util starts to fade. You don't have the forward fortified positions. And now as they're starting to go through their nades, party cleared out. So I feel as long as they... Okay, look at that one. Applying some... Real sight pressure. Oof. Limits his options for uh, info, at least. Yes, yeah, going to force one of two decisions. Play ahead of it or give up the space. And he's actually going to tuck in towards long. So they will need to call the rotation of Rops over. But again, it's quite quiet through the upper bathrooms until the flash goes off. The Procedural. steps are made. Cloud9, flash by flash, step by step. They're getting towards the A site now. Bomb is quite committed, but it can always drop back. It's going to be down to Frozen playing for some info to activate this round. Well, Carrigan ah, just takes it into his own hands. Frozen massive. can activate. He certainly will. You might even hear this uh, from Perfecto, the jump. He's going to get the freebie. Spotting the bomb. Dis that's jumped up. Very good flash. Fully blind. Rops will clean up as they try and progress. It's boomish down. Perfecto good for the flank onto Frozen. Axile, however, meets his demise at Rops' hand. And here comes number seven. Rops, he's fragging up today. It's good to see. Supposed to be the uh, the top of the scoreboard for FaZe, this boy. Definitely a start. I was talking to Carrigan. One of the things he, his observations about Rops was that he, you know, he was the player that perfected the patience element of Counter-Strike. I think that's a really nice way to put it. You can see there the jump spot. Great work from our replay team. Where that info flew. Oh, for sure. I, I think Rops, when I remember him first coming onto the scene, right, obviously there was the whole situation where he had to go to the face at office to prove he wasn't cheating. Yeah. Uh, but then when I saw him on Mouse, I, that's when I was first starting to work Pro League. I think it was my first Pro League season ever. I think I also played in that Pro League season. You played in the same season you worked? Yeah, then I retired. And then... Oh, was that one of those classics of, oh, we got eliminated, do you want to hang out and do desk? No. No. I know, it was online back then. The seasons oh, would go forever. That's right. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, I I, I was uh, I just had ROPS cam. I'd get the GoTV IP and I'd just watch <laughs> ROPS because he was so procedural. Such a perfect word for his style of play. Every angle. It makes sense to make someone like that a lurker, no? Well, yeah. 
I, I think teaching those players to take a bit of a risk is always the hard part. Yes. <laughs> Never. Like, well, I could just clear every corner and shoot them. This is going to be B Poppy, Alex. Perfecto's B -B Util telling. How does this veteran duo, Rain and Carrigan, brothers in arms, side by side as the flashes come through? Blind is Carrigan. A response is the. Bit of Util. Good HE damage. And it's already broken, actually, to draw first blood. Axile and Perfecto running into the site. It's big for one, two. It's broken, Robs. Lane throws his name into the ring, and they've done enough to repel the invaders. Perfecto, a double kill, not enough, insufficient, as this phase defense continues to rack up rounds. Flash work from both teams has seemed somewhat effective, hasn't it? Perfecto has uh, 17. Was it effective flashes, or was it enemies flashed? Enemies flashed. Enemies flashed. Sorry, we've got to make sure we get that correct. Uh, HLTV is effective flashes. Okay. Counter-Strike says enemies flashed. All right, all Hence right. Hence my confusion. We learn something every day, don't yeah. we? But uh, you could see the rally of Util back and forth. Oof, perfecto has got 17 enemies flashed. He's been throwing them. But good counter Util from FaZe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Bermage and Perfecto with the, some rifles. The other three pistols and Util. Two rounds on the T side so far. Two more rounds to be played. Oh, FlyQuest to winning. You can check that out, twitch.tv slash ESOCSB. That's the URL. Lucy and the dog of B. You can also, I think that's on the YouTubes. As the kids are calling it these days. Same kind of procedural flash progress being made here by Cloud9. Long being tested. Brokey. First man to kind of uh, be able to tend to that, but instead they seem to be re-aggressing toilets. I wonder what's had them back off. The setup over towards B is quite forward in towards water. Rain ready for them crossing backyard to monster. Rops with the quizzical glance up into connector. Carrigan was tending from heaven in case they had been able to grab some room. And well, Rops activates. Might have a whole lot more coming his way. But does that cancel their plans or are they just going to try and find him? Rain heard a step towards T spawn. Oh, yeah, this is just too easy for Robs. Rain, a perfect little distraction. Hang on, could still go wrong. Robs just onto the USP. He's gone down. This could turn around, 2v5. Ah, no time. Yeah, Frozen especially. He's managed to get there in time. So good work from FaZe. Feels like wherever you think you've got an advantage, there's another CT there to support. Brokey will close it out. 11 for Rops and Brokey. So good to see the stars are on form today. Important. Definitely important. Carrigan felt like he was having to do an awful lot of work yesterday. But Astralis, they're hungry, as uh, Stown said in an interview with HLTV. They have a lot to prove. Hasn't been the start to the year they were looking for. Change of in-game lead-up. All that good stuff. Final round. No, wait. There's one more after this one. Yeah. I can't maths. Second to last round. Penultimate of the first half. Cloud9 would love three. Four would be a treat. FaZe in pursuit of the double digits. And Boomich spreading his wings, looking for space over towards A. Already out towards Party. Again, it does look like another B-centric round from Cloud9. They've had to expend a bit of util for the Condor as well as the Pipe Molly. And Boomich having a face check. Spot out, frozen over towards Divider. And this is where they're just going through the paces, calling out the util that's being used. Piping that over to Boomich so they can make a decision for the finish. Oof, a lot of responsibility on Boom. So susceptible to just going down, but it's just presence. Trying to sell it, making sure he's spotted. Barrels Molly lands. Rain and Carrigan to be tested here once more. It's electronic, somewhat of a turret. Especially in his heyday. Not today. Rain gets him and gets away. He's been stunted. And now the rotation from FaZe that was very stubborn. Trying to hold some bathroom. Oh. Hello. Perfecto waiting for the train. Pose. And that's a big pick. Will they expect Rain on the same side? Exile. Diligent. Goes down. Ooh, the drive by Dink on the transfer. Rain's done damage. Ooh, Frozen. Got a lot to do here. Rops working on a late flank. 
Bomb going down. It could be denied, you know. They could lose the round right here if he's found the smoke, but nice option. Oh, still goes down eventually. Two on two. Short. And towards Monster, they've got the info. Where did his health just go? Sounded like it was from Brokey's B250. It's Frozen's got one V2 on his plate, and yeah, boom. They can toy with him. They're going to play with him. He doesn't even have a kit, Chad. This gets really uncomfortable. But still, finding that early extension from Boomich and with his teammates so low, this can still go wrong. Good timing from Hobbit. Frozen couldn't get his crosshair there in time. And so Cloud9, they will post a third. And, uh, you know, typically your claim four is kind of the baseline. I think three is the baseline. I okay. think four is good. Four is good. Three yeah. is a baseline. Okay. Because so essentially I'm looking at it as like, it's, it's like an 11-4 half. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The equivalent. The buy is a bit, a little bit uh, shotty for FaZe. Rob's only had 1.4 to spend, so he only had the min loss bonus. So he's going to get himself a 5 7 with Kevlar. Can get Brokey's AWP the into the mix. Money. That's not ideal. And actually, FaZe are going to push off that. Thank you very much. Short water lost, and they're coming. We're going to have a big fight here. We're going to have a biff, Chad. Oh, jumping. Stabilizes his aim. Trying to find a response is Axar. They're so blind. Hiding behind the smoke. Axar's not expecting this. He can't explain it. No one's expecting this. There's two CTs right behind you. Oh dear, overlooking completely the possibility. And the round just crumbles as a product of that. Whoops. Well played by FaZe. Another unforced error as far as U2 is concerned. That's true. Well, this one is the final round. <laughs> Boomage. Yeah, he's in an, an impossible scenario. No fun for Boom. Come on, Boomage. Show us. Get the movement in. Bap. 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 Oh! oh! Just like that. 50 Just seconds. Like that. The one on five becomes a one on three. Boomage you fans all around the world start to believe. You would never. The in-game leader in the Cloud9 jersey. Go on. Oh, spotted out. And he, I think he started to believe for a second there. But we're going to leave it at 9-3 on the half. We'll be taking a two minutes. Grab yourself a drink. Tell your mates. This one's going down. It's only just begun.
Ni howdy, folks. We're back for Cloud Nine Three. Phase Clan Nine Nine. No, no, no. Sorry. We got two American organizations locking horns here right in front of your very eyes. It's the best accent you've ever done. Thank you very much. What the hell? So impromptu. So well delivered. Face Clan coming into the T side. We've seen Cloud Nine get the bare minimum. And that's with that electronic essentially absent. Sure, some damage, but not enough kills. Just two to his name. Axile as well. The desk requesting to see this uh, star rifle up. Return to his star form. Let's see what happens and what this second half entails. This is the pick of Cloud9. Expectations are high. Farrakh, let's see what Carrigan's call is, Chad. Can you just kind of like enter into his brain and transfer it to the audience? Well, he's gone, I am now the best player on this team, so I will keep the P250 in search. But with no armor. Yeah, I guess look, it is because if you're going to hit the head. I guess he's not scared, oh. whereas some of his teammates actually do get quite a little bit scared. Uh, but by the looks First. of things, it's about taking the map control, making sure connector is clear, forcing the USPs back. A lot of teams will start 4 1 on CT pistols in case of a B rush. Mm. So now that they're able to show presence, force them back into a bit more of a defensive setup, uh, you can see the util on Frozen and Brokey. So we could either have, you know, Bank can drop down util, or it could be a little bit more like Truck and Dice. But either way, it's an A execute. All right, then. What do you do with that smoke? You run oh, through oh, it. Oh, you run through it, especially when Brokey's just gone and done that. He's taken Axile down clean through the smoke. Now, Boomich is a dead man. Brokey's just mad. He's had enough of this. He's just going to run. He's going to gun. And he's going to frag. This is a death sentence to Cloud9. Losing the T-Pistol. Both pistols now. Unless. Ah, they've lost this. Unless. Unless. Electronic gets two with the Julies. Oh, Rain pops it, hop its head like a cherry. Perfecto would be hard-pressed to find them both. It's planted for them in bathrooms. This is already looking like a done deal, despite some heroics from Electronic Carrigan. With no armor, goes straight in for the fight. Confirms he's off the bomb. And unfortunately for Perfecto, he's up the creek. Without the paddle, it's going to be a tenth for FaZe. Yeah, even with those two kills back, and I think the lack of Kid and, and the remainder of the FaZe players playing the retake Let me start safely. believing, bro. Oh. I mean, you, no, I understand. You do your job, but let me do mine as okay. well. Yeah. yeah. You can get... You know, Just I like, in case. I like it when you get excited. Just in case. Yeah, no, that's good. He didn't, though. Uh, but yeah, so... Gave it um, an attempt. Should we just go to map two? No, is it? Well... Because uh, you have the eco. I could spin a yarn. I mean, not, let's not spin a yarn until, like, the guns are out. No, but in the sense of if, if you're a Cloud9 fan... Yeah. There's about four of you out there, I've heard. <laughs> Don't let Jack Etienne hear you. Well, he's obviously not listening because no. they'd have an AWPer by now then, wouldn't they? <laughs> Bars. But anyway. Yeah, come on. Yarn, you were spinning it. All right. So they're going to obviously lose the full eco. Right. And the scoreline will read 11-3 to three in favor of FaZe. Right. Cloud9 will then be buying in with predominantly silenced M4s. Once the score reads 11-3 to three and the M4s come out, they would need to make sure that they win that and the follow-up to bottom out FaZe's buying potential. I see. At that point, the score will read 11-5. FaZe will have to take an eco, depending on saves and plants. 11-6. Uh-huh. Next gun round rolls around. Yeah. They win that one. FaZe are in another half by scenario. We're talking 11-8. The game's back on. I'm with you. Okay. Okay, so let's just see if that yarn's even necessary. Hey, right. but focus on this flash of electronic. This could be the difference maker on the full eco round. $200 worth of investment. And five white phase screens. Okay. I mean, keep, keep, keep going. I'm just going to try and find the definition for facetious. Primed and at the ready. Carrigan. This flash is going to be above his head. The Mac 10 could do all the damage. Smoke fades. Carrigan down. Boomish is in. Bomb ticking, rain on the truck, able to dispatch of one. Rops has taken out Boomich, and now, well, as we all expected, oh. the round will peak oh. to forward into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just like we expected. And this makes the 11-8 uh, to 8 scoreline... Ooh, you take the AK, don't right? you? It's a little bit easier, because you've done a lot of damage. You're going to be able to break the economy quicker than I thought. So maybe we can accelerate that timeline. Yeah, I think we certainly could. It's not for the issues, it's tongue-in-cheek. That's where that was. Yeah, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, as in just slightly... Isn't it facetious as well? I, or could, no. could you have said I was being flippant? Flippant, yeah. Uh, well, flippant is at the very end of the facetious definition, but it also says treating serious issues with deliberately inappropriate humour. Well, if it's cloud nine, it is a serious issue. No, but it wasn't issue. a serious issue of, like, they're not going to actually win the eco, are they? But you were giving it a lot of tongue-in-cheek energy. 
not not flippant and I wouldn't say flippant. Yeah, no, but uh, okay, we're learning. We're all here to learn. But uh, Chad, you were actually teaching us as to why those uh, deaths against the eco could come back to haunt phase. Just like life, finances right. play a big role in where you end up. <laughs> I wondered where you were going with that. Nice. Sometimes you make money, sometimes you spend money, and sometimes you lose money. I watched an interesting uh, tweet thread where people were, uh, they, he was, some guy was interviewing the elderly, asking him about what their uh, biggest that, regrets were. The elderly? The elderly. Is that... Like, elderly? Am I saying that like, right? The elfish? Like... And- so, like 70 plus. Oh, okay. Beings. Oh, old people. Yeah, okay. old people. In my generation. And the main thing that they said is that money is not the uh, it's not the be all and end all. A lot of them, For them to a lot say. Of them, yeah, well, they made it the whole way. Yeah, Houses I mean, didn't cost you need it to survive. 10 years worth of salary back in their day. That's true too. But relationships and love and all of that. People out there can't even buy groceries. What are these yeah, no, just talking about? You need it to survive. I get that. But in terms of lessons in reflection, when you're old and you realise, well, maybe I shouldn't have spent my entire life chasing material possessions. Obviously, you need it the bare minimum. Hashtag bring back UBI. Bring back. Bring it back. It never existed. Well, we'll... Uh Anyway, we're so going to bring this game back. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. It's Cloud9. Axile with the save day. Okay, five kills to his name. Yanko prophesies he's going to turn up and remember how to play CS. Is this his moment in the sun? I think he's going to go down to Kerrigan Mac 10, you know. I've had a premonition. Oh, Axile kind of ate that. And now Kerrigan's got him to 50 HP with a Mac 10 at range. And they're going B. Yeah, but I'm already, if I'm Cloud9, I've got three people worried about Kerrigan committing into the site now. It's a bit suspicious. Perfecto needs a multi. Only the one. It's fine if Electronic can build upon it, but instead they've lost, lost the site. Now it's a numbers disadvantage for FaZe. If that Molly's well placed, it's going to force them and channel them. Here we go. Awkward fights into heaven. Robs has gone away with one. Boom, it's dead on the rotate. Or rather, the jiggle. And reload. And it's Axel coming in for the clutch. Don't forget that damage lingers from Carrigan's Mac 10. Half health to work with two to find. It's Rops playing the first contact here. A nice shot from Axel. Perfect placement of the crosshair. Looking for rain. Oh, it's a clutch from Axel. A necessary one to get Cloud9 and their CT campaign afloat. Tough one. But that saved AK. After the little exchange with Carrigan's Mac 10. Lights them up. Converts the round. Notches four on the board and. Definitely would have been around. They were hoping to grab a lot cleaner, but great work from Axel. The elevation, keeping Rain guessing. And FaZe are in a bit of trouble. That plant helps them out significantly, staying threatening into round 16. And AK, Galil, upgraded pistols. Feels like it might have to be something very B-heavy with this type of a purchase. But no. Four going fountain. Yes, indeed. Well, Stanislaw was... On the desk, we had him as a bit of a guest alongside of Yanko Maniac saying that when Cloud9 do the double mollies, mm. if you extinguish both of them, it applies a lot of pressure to the A defense of Boomich and Axile. It makes them feel like there's uh, a lot of heat coming their way. So we'll see if that starts to manifest as this map progresses. They've definitely extinguished one of the mollies. There was also a smoke from Cloud9 that had slightly missed. That's allowed them to get this fountain control, but still 30-odd seconds have had to subside. Make it 40. As Axel stays forward in the bathrooms, he will have a head-to-head -head on the AK with Brokey. 17 kills for him, and well, wasn't clear in his angles. Axel grabs the first, and aye, able to aye, convert aye. onto Rain in the second. Yeah, nice deagle work from Rain. Axel feels like he may have, or should have done more. Still quite pinned in, aren't they? Electronic in connector. Hobbit dealing with long. Boomich's AWP now posted front of A. It's just perfecto on the B bomb site. Karen goes down connector. He's, He's a, a dead man. Dead man, indeed. Yeah, there's no way he's ready for this. What? And, uh, yeah, Electronics Reaction says it all. That's mad. That's crazy. And now Karen's going to try and sell a little bit of a B pivot. That will keep just one boot planted because there's two of them here. Hobbit, not ready for long. No one's ready for long. How is this? How is this not on their radar? Boomich is just not looking. Hello, everybody. This is mad. Cloud Nine. They have fun. It's Cole Hobbit left to do it all. Good composure, but run at too many threats. Carrigan a distraction. Over to Chad Birchall for the analysis. I guess Carrigan's fake was uh, pretty believable. I thought he was just trying to stall out rotations with that Molotov, right? Because the only way back up from B would right. have been through oh, those flames. Good logic in that. But uh, 
playing a little bit behind the play, Cloud9. Ooh, yeah, no, that's it's rare to see them, you know, caught off in that respect. It's just not doesn't happen at this level of Counter Strike to see CTs not considering the fight. So that I guess, yeah, job well done, or a bit of a, a an unforced error from Cloud9, and it seems it will kind of condemn them to a. a, a Come back and a reverse sweep required. I guess, look, if we look at FaZe, they've been in the last, what, seven grand finals. Yeah. Uh, so they, they keep making it all the way. And in the sense of them losing to Astralis, okay, they're going up against the team. We discussed some of it yesterday. Um, the, the, the playbook, a new roster, a new in-game leader, Bro being part of the team, all of that. We did all that yesterday. And now they're facing elimination. So it's like, oh, we've got something to play for. We want to be in another final. Yeah. We want to go all the way. And, and, and now the stakes have been turned up to something that we can respect. Uh, we find ourselves in round 17, likely to be the final round of play. UMP, Famous, Shotgun, and two pistols for Cloud9 on their map choice. New Cup next. Mirage the third and deciding if we need it, but if the Counter-Strike continues in this fashion, FaZe will be surviving. And that'll be the opener. Thank you very much, says Rain. The desperation. Oh, shoot it out of there. Yep, there it is. You're likely expecting another CT regress at this point in the rounds because they're down a man. So you just sit back in a default spread. Honestly, you just call, hey, they have to make the next mistake. And then with the util you have remaining, once the clock gets a little bit lower, decide on how you want to finish. If they don't aggress, they're going to have to use whatever utility they have, which is now just down to one flash on Hobbit. Things are going to get awfully quiet. Yeah, they should be able to go for the jugular. I suspect this is uh, it's boom next. Ooh, he's done well with the CZ. It's Kara <laughs> again. <laughs> Gets three on the push. Round done. Game done. Or at least here on Overpass. That's a quickie. 13 to 4. Business. It's running smoothly for FaZe today. Live from the Intel Extreme Masters. It's going to be up to Cloud9 to turn it around. Two more maps ahead of us. But for now, we're just going to have to take a little bit of a break because Nuke is in the wings. We'll see what Cloud9 can bring. Stay tuned. That goes with any of my teammates, but <laughs> Frozen and uh, Brookie. I think they're both very kind and uh, <coughs> sensitive. <laughs> I don't know about the Romans part, but uh, they're both very artistic on the server. So can I put the same people? <laughs> or <laughs> I, I can switch as well. Or I'll put myself on a rabbit. I think I'm kind. Hope, uh, at least I think so myself. Brookie on the horse as well. Uh, and I'm gonna put um, Finn on the horse. Kerrigan as well. I think uh, it fits him. I don't know about the anxious part, but uh, I put uh, Rob's on uh, on uh, dog. Trustworthy, honest, it's uh, it's pretty good for him. Uh, yeah, I'll put Neon on Snake. Uh, I don't think he's jealous, but uh, he's very smart and uh, and calculating. So I'm a dog, okay. Enthusiastic uh, and independent at the top. They're all uh, pretty similar. He's a she's a showman, so. All right, sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, Do you ever get jealous? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Not that I know of. Not very sensitive. I think you can be very open with him. And uh, yeah, he finds all these new smokes and uh, and sees, right? So uh, he's very artistic. Yeah, I don't know how much the truth there is to these things, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he's very independent. He's a Slavic after all, so. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Philip is a very romantic guy. I, I get that feeling from him. Overpass brought into the mix by Cloud9 and taken home quite convincingly, Anko, by FaZe. 13 to 4, that's nothing to scoff at. Yeah, you know, Fred, the other day we talked about, you know, last time FaZe was here, I was coaching. You know, I was trying to wrap my head around where did it all go wrong? and. Listening to Rain here, I guess it just wasn't romantic enough. You know, like he said, like Neo feels like he's a kind of, like he gets that vibe from him. I definitely wasn't giving out that vibe. Yeah. 
And that, it was after I left that he got major MVP. So maybe I should have just that been. was the key. Sounds like you did pretty well over there. That what you're telling me is I should become a coach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, definitely. Exactly. We're, we're just rounding in our back. Go coach vitality, bro. And oh, lose the little, one lose day the little will. hair you have left. Listen, it's already a complicated situation. It's not like I have a lot to give away, right? <laughs> that's that's what we that would be gone in the first month, buddy. I'll, I'll tell go you that. I'll go brokey after a few weeks. <laughs> tell you what wasn't complicated. Uh, this game, pretty simple you know, from FaZe and barely anything from Cloud9. You know whose fault it is? You know whose fault it is? Hey. If you're a Cloud9 fan, you know what you hate? You hate Astralis. Astralis did this to you. <laughs> Astralis did this to you. I told oh, you guys. Back to I told you guys, and you didn't believe me. I said the smack that Astralis gave to FaZe Clan hurt them, bruised them in the ego, and they're gonna bounce back and play as if the major didn't happen, as if they had to make a point. They are gonna jump on Cloud9, and that's exactly what they did. Masterful performance on the CT side. Just that's it. Yeah, Cloud9 fans, if you want to blame someone, exactly. blame your players. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones who were on the server. No, but I think the problem is obviously with overpass and you know you get a two, off to a slow start on the T side, you can't win consecutive rounds. But the problem is it was like individually they weren't having enough output in some of those rounds. I mean, you have a 5v4 post plant on A, like Boomich gets a clean entry kill, you get into the site, you put the bomb down and you still manage to lose that round. You know, you oh. can't be losing those against FaZe if you're hoping to win the game. Yeah, I think it's apt to talk about, you know, the players that were absent. Uh, a theme that we were looking in this was Axel. And, oh, wow, look at his form versus FaZe. He was breaking the mold in all the wrong ways not in today. this first one. Yeah, uh, not today, unfortunately. Uh, I would love to only pinpoint Axel. I also think Electronic was very quiet, yeah. um, mostly in opening kills situation. Absolutely catastrophic. I think he went 0 and 6, uh, Electronic, that is. Axel also pretty slow. So you talk about this 5v4. They also never really had situations where the map belonged to them and they had the right pieces. That 5v4 you're talking about, they don't have long control. So Robs is coming in very sneakily, he pounces on. So Axel didn't find a lot of space, but mostly Cloud9 as a whole. And I think Stanislaw, well, he's not here anymore. He was there. I promise you he was there at some point. He talked about overpass being a bit limited. That's what we saw. Like T-side, not a whole lot of inspiration. There's just something sad when you see Electronic hold like connector with an MP9 and Kerrigan walks down with a P250 and wins a straight up duel. Like at that point, you know, Okay, like they're not, they're not going to be able to win this game if, if these things are happening, right? If you can't win like advantageous fights like that, um, you're not going to be able to take down Face Clan. Let's try and look at some positives, though. You know, there was a lot of negatives on the Cloud9 side for the most part. Phase, though, Rops looked back and form. Brokey was firing all the cylinders. Um, I think you're totally right. That was a smack in the face. Uh, the loss to Astralis. They're woken up and they want to make it to playoffs. Yeah, listen, I also think they they manufactured their own success, right? They were super active on the CT side, and mostly if we talk about overpass, Rops is a player that's gonna move a whole lot. We have the highlights from Brokey as well. I listen, whenever Chaos is on the server, this guy's gonna have a good time. I think he showed up massively. I, I focus on Rops because I do think that his success speaks volume about the choices that FaZe made and what parts of them they wanted to play, what were the gambles they were going through, because he's usually the man that has the most flexibility in his positions on the CT side, and that worked out great. For Brokey, it's mostly just shooting people in the face because you're a little faster. You see some of the positions here, they're super favorable for them, like double people holding construction work as the door gets open. That's, that's how you want to play Counter-Strike, it's just luxury. And playing T-side overpass, overpass without an upper can be tough. Can be rough. We circle back to that conversation again. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just one of those things. Like, I mean, you know, sometimes you would make a decision whether you buy or not based off of whether your opera has enough money for an op, right? Like, if you don't have it, you're not going to just buy straight up AKs because it's very difficult to play default with no op, and especially if your opponents have it, right? Because it takes away so many fights, become more difficult, taking map control becomes more difficult. Let's say, at the very least, what it does is makes you expense more utility to get that control, but then you have less. To, to end the round, so a lot of problems for Cloud9. Yeah, and uh, problems going forward is, of course, is FaZe's map pick of Nuke that looms on the horizon. But before we do dive into that, let's check in with the Cloud9 camp, courtesy of Heku. All right, I had an opportunity to talk to Groove about what exactly happened on Overpass, because we saw like when it comes on the T side, they barely managed to get uh, any plans. And he said that like, yes, they made a horrendous amount of mistakes. And he also said that like, when you get to plant and you're in a 5v4 situation, you must win the round. And if you don't win a round like that, you don't take a map. Hopefully it's not going to happen on the second map. Yeah, fingers crossed, because otherwise uh, you're eliminated. This is your run in Chengdu, absolutely dead. And uh, Nuke, 
I mean, we know how solid FaZe are on the grounds of Nuke. What are you looking at particularly coming into this map? Unfortunately for Cloud9, I think your destiny isn't in your hands anymore. That's how I'm looking at this series right now. I think FaZe have everything they need. Not that they are protected from having a deep performance right here. You, you can maybe feel a little too fancy about yourself after the destruction you've just handed over on Overpass. But I do think that FaZe is going to be the one dictating what happens in this game. If they play their good Counter-Strike on a map they've been tested a billion times, I don't think Cloud9 has anything to offer in terms of resistance. I think we're going towards 2-0. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason for us to believe that somehow Cloud9 is now magically going to play much better, right? Like have better communication, better coordination. It's like, well, then what was the case? The, the only because of the fact that this was like the first map of the series or the first map of the day. So they just needed one map to warm up into it. Like you don't have that luxury if you're Cloud9, right? Especially considering that was your map pick. Yeah, and also I wanted to bounce back on, you made the point about the 5v4, that was related as well in the interview. This is very complicated as a team to be clear and objective about why you lost when you feel like you've given up the few opportunities you had. It becomes very complicated to separate, okay, what were our mistakes? What did we do right? What do we have to focus on? You get kind of blurry and you get mad about these rounds you've lost. This is where like group has to step in as well and help them sort of recalibrate a little bit. That's it's really complicated and frustrating. That just tells you the team is in a bad place, right? Because like people are not talking to each other enough. They're not offering stuff. They're not asking for stuff. Hey, let's double swing here. Hey, do you have a flash? Hey, watch out for the long flank. Like they're waiting. Maybe they're waiting for a guy. Maybe a guy's long, right? Like when a team is working and on point, like that stuff happens. And when they're, you know, they're, they're just waiting. Like you're just sitting there and kind of waiting for the game to come to you in a sense. And today, in today's meta, that's not going to work out Yeah, well. this mountain only getting steeper for Cloud9 to be summiting and already. Uh, looks like they've got a bit of altitude sickness. Nuke, the pick of phase up next, potentially a chance to call themselves ever closer to the playoffs of the Intel Extreme Masters, Chongdu. Smokes. See a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. The party won't stop. It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead this late in the game? Hey guys, YNK here with Robs from FaZe Clan and today we're going to talk about warming up, warm up routine, all of that pre-game or just in general, so... I just like to load up CS stats. I think this is the map people just used from the beginning when CS2 launched and, you know, one of the first thing maps you can play and I just kept using it. Yeah, you just load it, up and play. I mean, I don't yeah, do anything yeah, special. Yeah, it like... does. Uh, so you can have different types of settings, you know, or you just go in and just try to pop some heads. Yeah, just go in and pop some heads. I mean, like, you just play all the different guns you want to play, like AK, M4, you know, just the usual, typical um, USB, Glock, Eagle, maybe, um, AWP, if you know you're going to play AWP in the Do matches. It, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever change uh, the, the settings within, you know, the targets moving? Do you have any sort of that routine where maybe you start with targets that are closer up, they're further away, or is it just just coming in and making sure you just warm up the, the whole wrist. Well, on this map, I like to use uh, I take off new spawns. So I just use mid, I guess the two spawns I use. And from here, I just I just play for like, an, for however much, however much time you have uh, on stage, just warm up, um, whether it's 30 minutes, sometimes more. Yeah, just play and s until your arm gets tired and <laughs> you just can take a rest and get back at it again. Music or no music? Um, I don't know, lately I've been playing without music. I think for a long time I played with music. Obviously, we have access to Spotify in many of the events. I tend to do both. Sometimes I like to get in sync with the game and just listen to the AK sounds or whatever, you know? Before, probably the only thing you could actually do to, to warm up was deathmatching or just having actual bots on a proper map. Nowadays, we have 
you know, things like CS stats and, and uh, other maps and a lot of different tools uh, that, that you can do to warm up. So have you been using some of this other stuff, pre-fire maps, whether it's these uh, retake setups, anti-execute setups, any, anything like that? I think I've personally never been interested in those things. You know, there's different programs which you can turn your aim. Um, obviously, like Refrag is really popular right now, but I've personally never been interested in it. Personally, I think it's, you know, very individual thing, whether a person likes it or not. Um, I just prefer to stick to the basics, play deathmatch. Making your time worthwhile is, is enough. All right, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Is there anything else to your Walmart routine? What are you hiding? Any pre-game rituals, special meals, anything like that? No, just make sure you're well slept, well rested. Uh, make sure your mind is in the right place. And I think that's all about all you need. All right, thank you, Robs. This was Warm Up Theory with Robs. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in for the next one. We're headed to Nuke, map two. And a chance for Cloud9 to get back on track. A very underwhelming performance in their opening on their map pick. Now we find ourselves on FaZe's turf. And a machine joined by Chad Sponge Birchill. We know FaZe and Nuke are a, a potent pairing. I assume you match the expectations of the desk that this is uh, is going FaZe's way. 2 0 way to go. Yeah. It's going to be bleak. It's going to be tough. Expect to see. The FaZe Clan boys on their T side start racking up the rounds. It's where Carrigan get extra cerebral, forcing and manipulating these CT rotations. It's all about the art of deception, wouldn't you say? Yeah, look, I, I think if we focus back on how map one started with Cloud9, some unforced errors as far as utility is concerned, and that seemed to trickle through the remainder of the map. When you move into a more technical map, like Nuke, if those issues still persist, well, you're going to have a tough time. The fortunate side of things, they get to start on the CT side. FaZe will be the one setting the pace and the tone. And again, I'll return to what Santa's Law, our guest analyst on the desk that Sutter was talking about, he said, Nuke yesterday, there was a lot of slop. He expects slop. that to be cleaned up. So let's see if they've uh, had the cleaning crew out overnight. Desloppified. Because uh, you'd love to get this one done quick as you like if you phase, conserve the energy, you have another best of three to play at the end of the day. And that'll be against the winner of FlyQuest versus Namiga, which is going down on the B stream, which map number one has just gone into overtime. What do you call in here? We're going yard. I am just loving carrying on <laughs> every piss around we're watching now. I'm taking the P250 and I'm searching. Because you baity boys aren't taking any bloody room. And so he'll do it himself. Fine. Play ahead of the smoke. That's enough info. Thank you. A reaction from Boom, you can see, descending quickly. They're actually, ooh, taking that little bit of a space, that window of opportunity. How many players rotate a B? Three players are down to the lower deck. He's gone up a ladder. Frozen and Rops are in pursuit of him here. And, ooh, Boomage. You'd be noisy. You'd be very noisy, and you'd be under threat. Oh, that was Axar just trying to push back up secret. Oh, oh, nearly got both. That would have been round-changing, round-defining, with Frozen finding Electronic as well. It falls to Hobbit. He's done well to find two. Fecto dead out of <laughs> the Yeah, that's brave. Uh, <laughs> it's not gone well. Well, of course, they were looking there. That's where Hobbit just got two kills from. Yeah, no. But I think, I think he assumed the smoke kind of uh, would... Give him some cover. You know what they say about assuming, Alex. Yeah, makes an ass out of you and me. It'd be better if he said ass, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, whoops. Yeah, that was Axel re-aggressing because the pressure was on Boomage towards Heaven, so thinking maybe there was a uh, gap. He did stick out. A little gap in the smoke there. Yeah, ever so slightly. In. Oh, so zero out of three pistols for Cloud9.
that's that's what you're looking for, really, isn't it? That's a winning recipe. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, in backwards yeah. land. Yeah, it's opposite day. <laughs> it's opposite day. That used to be the peak of comedy when I was a kid. Opposite day, because you say the opposite. Oh, comedy genius. Look at us now. 2014 was 10 years ago. You were reminded of that today, weren't you? I was, yeah. We were talking to some fans on the way over. Saying they, they learn English watching uh, The Flash. Flash, he said. Which I felt like was a real new release. Yeah, no, there was this show in 2014, The Flash. That's how I learned English. Wait. You learned English for 10 years watching a show that I, in my mind, was like three years ago. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, that was about the time I got done for illegally torrenting Arrow. Yeah, you did. Oh, Arrow. I like that. that I enjoyed good. that. Yeah. Don't torrent things, guys. Don't do that. Don't, you get this. You don't get a slap on the wrist. You get a hefty fine. I'll tell you that much. Oh, just use a VPN. <laughs> what? Um, In Earth was that? Sorry, I just um, blacked out for a second there. <laughs> Cloud Nine, are we going to have a game of Counter Strike, or are you going out with a whimper? Because it's a long flight back home. It's a long way to come just to get dumpstered. Don't get dumpstered. Give us a game. Show us some entertainment. Electronic, on the jiggle, with the smoke. Poison. Under an awful lot of pressure and out of U-Tool. Minute 20 left on the clock with one smoke and a flash. So it's tough for Cloud9 to operate in a round like this. How does Carrigan want to call the finish with the secret control? You can always pivot back up. It's like Frozen's lining up a bit of a smoke right now. I reckon he's lining that up with the pin of the nade. That's the uh, unbreakable smoke, I believe. Gonna land on the tippy top. Puffs up as they do return. Looks like they want to split A. And it's gonna work out for a one and done. That is it a chance for a double. Frozen, will he go down to the fan mass? I don't think so. Instead, it's Boomich onto Rob's out hut. 2v2 with Heaven peeking early ahead of the molly. Good work from Axile. He's made this a round. A promising one for Cloud9. Electronic quicking, quickly attending to the single door. But damn, good shooting from Brokey. Threading heads. Yeah, just taps away. Takes down Electronic, makes it a 1v1. Rotation. Swift from Axel coming in from ramp side. Brokey's opted to uh, close out the single door and reposition. Hit. Could be a pretty safe assumption for FaZe coming into this round. It won't be uh, easy to fuse. Messing around with the doors. Makes himself a nice little hole, but Axel, Ax another clutch for Axel. He's got a couple now. What happened there from Bro? He ain't happy with that. Neo, yeah. Had to give him a double tap to get the correct fist bump. It, it, Brokey was really not happy with that one. Yeah, I can understand the logic because it felt like he heard the sound cue, so it was towards the bomb site. Had a chance to kind of make the hole to. That was the most important kill. It was. It was. Was Brokey jumping? Yeah, it looked like he was. Maybe that's why he's a bit frustrated. Right. Yeah, it wasn't unusual. No reason to. No, it'd been a little accidental jump. Happens to the best of us. Well, phase. Plenty of casualties taken. Bomb goes down. Buy comes through. Electronic and Perfecto. The worst for wear with the MP9s. A map like this shouldn't be the end of the world, but we'll have to see how it gets pieced together. Boomich considering his nades. Does he want to smoke? Does he want a HE? Well, it'll be the grey screen deployed. Hmm. Smoke wall towards Yard. I think they may have missed their molly towards Secret. Yeah. So, okay, rain should still get across. Smokes okay. will not fade. So that question does persist. It's being tended to right now by electronic. Axel, what have you got for us? Gets away with just a lick of damage and will be Ow. run down by Carrigan. He's just not slowing down for anyone. Now, Electronic is here early, and that should have been a kill. Should have been, isn't, and instead they've lost the low sight. FaZe coming in it to win it. 
Pumich is down here. This is a death. Yep. So still a chance. Especially if another one goes down soon. Frozen on dark noted by Boom. Oh, Perfecto's up on Silo. We'll take that one back. Yeah. He's Doing looking for Rain. Rain wrapped all the way around Heaven. He's going to try and descend down the ramp as we see Boomich chip his way up the ladder. They're going to look to hold on to their goods. Perfecto would love to get his hands on something a little bit juicier than just that MP9. We've got a Unicorn's chance of that happening. As uh, we'll call that 3-1. to one. Ah. So you add up the 1v1 and then accidentally die into the bomb. It's like, a, I'd say it's just one little Lego brick of tilt. You know, it's Lego there. Lego brick. Just a Lego brick. Not a full tilt. A wall of tilt. But just the brick. This is great for Carrigan. He's uh, doing a great job making the space. Finding those entries. And as we see the buy come together, Cloud9 do not opt to purchase around the AK and saved MP9. With the 2400 loss bonus going into the next, they will be playing it safe. Oh, Boomage top of blue and well oh, has to respect it it's the most direct and old school smoke wall straight down secret can I get the space make the space take up again already applying a lot of pressure well, if it rops here's that he doesn't even comment well, the only person this affects is me <laughs> well the thing with Carrigan is he has his head spotted, right? You take a couple liberties in in-game lead. You don't clear every corner as diligent as you should. Electronic should have this one. Well, with Perfecto's double, Carrigan noted in her. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. Hobbit swallows that with no armor. Just 20 HP for him. Now, he's got Frozen in Lobby. They've kind of locked them in, they're boxed in. They've found angles safe to the clear, but can clear this. he can, and he will, so... One down, <laughs> one bullet through the smoke, and Hobbit's a dead man. He's going to play the fade. They have finally found Carrigan, but now get the bomb back. it is retrieval of the bomb. Priority number one, and he's going to scoop it. And stand and bang. He's actually not running away with the bomb. He's got 25 seconds, so they have to try and commit through this. Good find. Electronic elevated, and it's looking great. Cloud9 off the back of Perfecto have managed to convert a very light investment. Just that saved MP9 and the rifle. Works out wonderfully. That's uh, a reward for their uh, conservative nature in the previous. So that Lego brick you were talking about. Yeah. Is it now like a Duplo blick brick? It's gone Duplo. It has. It's doubled in size. It's rain. Oof. He's going to go down. And that is a fantastic little response, isn't it? Yeah, you see that um, Chachki? The Chibi Weeby. The Chibi Weeby on Was that Hobbit's on Hobbit's death? death? I reckon that's got to be from his... Um, is that to counteract... Carrigan's stones. Carrigan's crystals. Well, yes. if we could take cameraman, if we they're could take a stones, look. Marie, they're crystals. Oh, sorry, sorry. If we could take a look at uh, Hobbit's Chotchki. Yeah, Chotchki. I'm trying to come up with Chadisms. I got it wrong. I learned Chotchki from an American. Oh, okay. We came up with Chibi Weeby. Yeah, Chotchki is uh, is, a, is like a, it's like knickknack. Yeah, and a knickknack is kind of like a Funko Pop. No. No? Don't know what a Funko Pop is. Kind of like a Chibi Weeby. Ah. Yeah. Kind of like Hobbit Orping. Go on, lad. Not known to be an Orper. Just on this map. It's a new Orper. Yeah. What an experiment. What a time to be alive. And yet they still manage to compete at a. Oh, for sure. Very competitive level. They can all throw hands. Yeah. They're good with the. Uh, but you're not going to win trophies keyboard. without an orb, are you? Nah. So that does that. What does that really mean? Like, if, as a competitor, you'd, it puts you in a weird place, doesn't it? Saying, like, well. Yeah, you do the best with the pieces you have, I suppose. Yeah, of course. I mean, losing okay. Shira was such a. Other platitudes for you, if you. <laughs> heavy blow. And you needed an in-game leader. Electronic wasn't perhaps cut out for it. I prefer him focusing on his crosshair. They'd almost hypnotized him into it. <laughs> I would have liked reps. to have seen it. Yeah. Not for everyone.
for a while, Electronic was kind of spinning us a yarn about how he was like done with being a. There's the Chachki. Oh, oh, go back. Go look back. at Bachad. Do you think his daughter gave it to him? That's exactly what I was thinking. Mm. And I think it's cool because then she goes like, "Oh, Daddy's on the TV," and, he sees, and she sees, sees her the, yeah. her own little uh, chibi yeah. weeby. That's nice. That's cute. So how does that counterbalance against the crystals? So my understanding is, uh, obviously, there's a lot of energy and vibrations in all of those things, right? So I would say that um, the energetic levels are going to be probably, yeah, a family and love. Up by top rush. Throws and only the one. Looks good. Shut down. Brokey, however, if he could have found this frag onto Boom, which is still up for debate. Bullets. Yeah, that Hobbit nails it, actually, arriving just in the nick of time. We'll make it four. Okay, so that was a full eco into a half buy. Now we have a full buy for FaZe. Cloud9 have taken the lead. One round to the good. <laughs> see that they're p putting the round together and it's not all on Carrigan. You could see Frozen saying what he was going to do. You yeah. could hear uh, either the Brokey or Rops asking for a flash from one or the other. So... The so base the of the round is called, but how they're going curiosity. to get there. Uh, that's normally for Rops to get out squeaky, isn't it? Uh, yeah, okay. But if it wasn't Rops calling for the flash, well, it might have be been... It. Yeah, that might be it. But this is yard control position from Axar. He will be fighting. Yeah, she swings on a HE, which obscures his peak. So that snipe worked out really nicely for Cloud9. Nice opening kill. I have to deal with him. He might be able to get away. Smoke if he can, there. that's huge. Yeah. Oh, spam. Brokey. Doesn't need to fire a shot. He does spot one there towards Blue. Oh, Brokey. Yeah, he's a bit trigger shy, isn't he, at the moment? Yeah, well, that overpass uh, situation. He still had a good game. Trigger shy. Sounds like a My Little Pony. With guns. But Mitch might try and leer through the smokes. Oh, this is going well, isn't it? This is looking good. He's got nothing. Empty-handed after an aggressive endeavor. Frozen will slip towards the main wall. Ahead of the expectation. I'm not sure Electronics are ready for this. And yeah, it's rain to find him. They just thought they were going down secret. That's not the case whatsoever. Yeah, nice. Look how much space on the map they have. All of this yard sprawl. Still bodies towards lobby. It's going to be perfecto. As we just saw towards A. And Hobbit with the AWP. Feels like he's got the world against him. He does. But this frag onto rain is kind of given to him. The top side's lost, and you've lost your teammate. Robs takes him down. They know where Hobbit is. I don't think he'll be saving this. A wiggle of frustration. We all have him. Hobbs cutting him off to head towards lobby. Is it going to start making their way around hell? So Hobbit, you can run, you can hide. But can you live? What just He just turned around to look at Brokey. What was going on there? He's having a conversation, wasn't yeah, it? It's good to make eye contact. That's, that's true. All right, here we go. We're going to take a good look at Hobbit's friend. Ooh. What do you think the friend's name is? Do you think that's real hair? Actually. Like horse hair or something? I don't know. It looks very hairy, like real hair. Oh, actually, that's kind of giving me the, the Jeepers Creepers. Uh, right? Oh, it does look like human what hair. What if... No... What yeah. if it's a... That would change the whole question about the energy levels. Exactly. I think, it honestly, could be a voodoo Car doll. Carrigan's crystals... It could be a voodoo oh doll. Oh, my God, it is. Hobbit, a voodoo practitioner, a witch doctor of the Kazakh realm. Well, once upon a time, he was a prodigy. Yeah, and he turned to dark magic. That's what it says on his character sheet. Oh, look at that. Flash oh! and in. Rops with a double... Yes, indeed. A site falls. That's what he wants to do every time he tries to make that play. That's like the ideal outcome. Look at this rain. Again, having a walk in the yard. His back turned. Axar will find him. Oh, it's gone wrong. He's been a bit of a nuisance. It's only gone and gone wrong, hasn't it? It's not over yet. <laughs> nice. Wow. Uh, Axar, he kind of knew where he was. Still gives him the fight. B is open for business. Hobbit was audible, dropping off of the heavens in towards A. Carrigan trying to cut off the vent rotation. Hobbit worried about the rotation up the ladder, but that's not the case. Brokey will be punching in the digits, getting the bomb down. Is it in his interest to give us a look? Oh, he should be saving. All right. Next round, they only have 1,900. 
So, he is actually giving it a go. Okay. Well, you well. have to clear single door, double door, control room, vents, the ramp. railing, dark, ramp, clock, and you have no kit. I like the call. This area, I heard people call office, just so that there's a specific call. Or is there a different part of the map that they called office and I just assumed it was that? Uh, office. I heard what? it in a Com video. Because yeah, it could be control. This, with that, that's where, where, the, where the consoles are, yeah. I guess I'd call that control. And, yeah, the, and then the, the well, back. I would call that double doors. Yeah, same. But I, was, I guess maybe there's a little, maybe the stairs between, I don't know. Office. When they were doing a low side take. Dustin called it office when we were playing the other day. Do you know what he was spe specifically referring to? He was saying, let's take office side. Okay. Intradasting. It's this device that these Danish cronies Maybe are having is. their way with us. Yeah. Ooh. You, know, you don't see Perfecto tilted often, do no, you? No, and you don't often see Brokey blow his mouse. No. Usually Maybe his that's finger okay. blasters are working quite well. Something to do with uh, why he's been struggling to f pull the trigger sometimes. Dustin it. Not to be confused with Dustin it. Coach. VP. Where were you when Hobbit locked down round 10? Chengdu, China. In Chengdu, China. Oh, he's been able to pivot late towards red, and, and ra Rain was already quite quizzical of this, so I don't think he'll clear it. This is huge from Hobbit. You might be onto something, Mr. Richardson. Uh, well. Must look up. Or is the movie Don't Look Up? No, we didn't. And now we won't. There's a frag definitely uh, on the plate. It's uh, Now the potency of Hobbit's position is... Precisely. ...gone. And they're already down towards B. Which a USP is not going to get you very far. Oh, oh. Poor Hobbit. That's gone horribly wrong, hasn't it? Nice, nice. shooting. Brokey, uh, charging after the USP with a Glock in hand. Only has an AWP to give over as Boomich looks to reroute. And will get caught, but still, it's the shot. He's going to try and evacuate with the AWP. Brokey, thank you very much for handing that one over. That's, uh, I mean, what have we gone from Duplo? I guess we're on, like, uh, Meccano now. That's the metal one. Make a scale X track next. Oh, yeah. Maybe will, a model train. Will Rain go up the ladder? Vote in Twitch chat now. Look at this cat and mouse game. He thinks he's hunting, but he's being hunted. And Ooh. Oh, 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 I'd be feeling a little silly there. Fortunately, Perfecto has uh, bailed him out of trouble for a minute. That's Rops. Oh, he, the he's going to start running element. now. Oh. Oh. Well, it's all right. Boomish died anyway. Everything's fine. Everyone died. Yeah. Besides Perfecto. Well, as we mentioned on day one, you're either Chung Do or you're Chung Don't. And it looks like Cloud9 have signed up for the ladder. That's your one. I'm Chung Dun now. It's coming Chung Dun for Cloud9 right now. Oh, yeah. It's not feeling great. Want some voodoo, Hobbit. You're right. He needs to unlock his heart chakra. Voodoo, voodoo. What is a chakra? I want to educate myself today. There's seven of them. Okay. Hmm. Grab push, Rops. Takes the first. Traded by Axar. More lobby aggression. Only a Deagle. Brokey. As everybody went down, the Ooh. reinvestments. They're up the ladder. Boomage from behind. And now they have the number advantage. Cloud9 want to walk away from this half with six. Yeah, get shracked. With well, shrunken heads and broken legs. Body parts on the concrete. Faze have got to put this 3v4 back together. Boomage low. Axar the same. Smoked off. 
Electronic and Perfecto likely suspicious. Three angles Rain has to worry about. Well, three fights. He's the first. Oh, cracking shot from Axile. Puts Rain in a bin. Puts Brokey and Carrigan into dire situation. It's Perfecto up next to be tested. He's anticipating this fight. Obviously, Hut is a threat. They could go down the vent. They could. Nice angle there. Perfecto set up with Axile to lock down this top site crawl. Brokey will try and retrieve. He's going to go down. Perfectly timed. That's a big round out of Axile. High impact. Triple kill. And Cloud9 with that aggression towards the lobby. A lobby crunch of some CT offense. The best defense. Oh, Frozen had a lot to say. Had an awful lot to say uh, of uh, potentially how this next round is going to play. Yeah, but just caught on the roof. I felt like he had absolutely no idea. Even they, they knew of the lobby aggression. And oh, well, highlighted by J-Rez there. Or maybe it was Bastion. But regardless, it doesn't matter. That was Brokey who went looking to upgrade the AK. Just completely fallen away. They're going to try and pressure ramp. So Yard smokes. Oh, and that nade on the feet of three. Substantial damage. Axel can mow him down. Oh, and he controls the spray with a flash in his face. Just for the second as well as Frozen goes hunting. Hobbit cleans up the rest. It's only Rain. Now, he is in the low sight, but uh, detached from the bomb. It's the last round, so let's give it a go, shall we, Rain? No reason not to. So we get to see his... Uh, nothing. Actually, nothing. 6-6. Six, six. Recovered CT half in the end there from Cloud9. Two on the drop. Convincing. Let's see if there's more twists and turns awaiting us in the second half of play.
What time is it? Uh, game time. Game time. What obviously. time is it? Game time. Oh, you need to get fired up because that's Cloud9's memo right here, right now. Elimination on the line. Survival for the victor. I am Chengdu 2024. We're in the lower bracket, baby. And it's FaZe Clan taking on Cloud9. Map number two, Duke. FaZe's choice. And they are just a mere seven rounds away from sending Cloud9 packing. I thought it was you were going high school musical there with that one. I thought it was summertime. It's our vacation. Sorry, no Zach Efron here. Oh well. We were going a bit more of a football than basketball. Oh angle. well yeah, you lost me a football there, unfortunately. At least you know for next time. Oh, I got it, I got it. Rushley and J Rats on the ones and twos and well threes, fours, fives and sixes. As we get ourselves started and situated. I like this. I'm gonna stay I'm just gonna talk like this, I think. Ray. Spots out the head of Axile. Axile's been dispatched to work on the P250. I believe it's Fiddy. Axile's caught Rain's scent. So you've used all your nades. Now. I'm just gonna go ramp, Alex. They might get a little bit rambutaned over here. Yeah, Robson readies his aim. Nails the shot. Repositions and in combination with Frozen. They've only got to find Perfecto and Axile. And it's only Perfecto. Axile was down there looking for trouble. Rain gives it to him. Wow. Um, zero and four. Told you it was a rambutan. Not to be confused with orangutan. Or the durian. Are you looking at Rambutan? What the hell are you talking it's about? It's a fruit. And so to get fruited, of course, I don't know an Indonesian fruit. Yeah, there I go. Sorry, man. I used to work in produce. I was a produce manager. It looks a bit like time. a... Um, a testicle? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually. No, the lychee. Oh, okay. It's yeah. got lychee yeah, energy. Yeah, it does have lychee energy. You were thinking testicles. I was first, yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. So, everybody, if you, you're wondering why Brokey has head armor and a USP, well, he wants to get out an AWP. So by not spending too much of his money, he's trying to invest in future rounds. And that's something that you should do as well. You know, you get your paycheck, but you can't buy that new pair of headphones that you were hoping for. Well, what you need to do is, you need to squirrel away some of those pennies. Because you need them, you know, because you get a couple more paychecks. And, you and then you'll be able to buy that pair of headphones that you've been hoping for. Nice. And you also feel like a bit of a tit when you die, three of you, to a USP. Admittedly, less of a kill reward than the SMG. Harosh, die. Well, they better, Harosh. Uno, dos, tres. He'll be on the desk later. He will. Right, a bit of a bonus round for FaZe. The AWP short, but only the M4 for rain. Rest on the MP9s, but very serviceable. Squeaky not even blown off. Oh, it was, just a little bit late. It's not on the initial timing and tempo. Just taking a page out of high cube. That's Brokey. This aggression will be met with violence. Yeah, that's a very clean start there for Cloud9. He saved for that AWP. Yeah, all that hard work for nothing. He dropped them. Instead, Electronic out towards Red and Rain to receive him. Rops is down here. Ooh, lovely find. Ramp's open, however. The Rops is the ramp defender and they just noted him secret. So they'll sprawl. And there's a huge rotation, I would say. A little bit too hefty. Carrigan's been able to liberate the AWP. Boomage is working on a little bit of space, but I love this repons from Rain. Worried about the rat from Ramp, but still might be able to rat Boomage. Hello. Thanks for coming. Not even a second thought about that. <laughs> he takes the frag. Some effects provided from the birch. And round over, just as easy as that. Rain will wrap around from main. Axel unawares. It's up to Hobbit, and he's gone after one. Carrigan maintains that AWP. If Rops could have had a rifle, I don't think he can. He was just too far away. 
So just bringing through that MP9, but Cloud9, despite Perfecto's opening, uh, have immediately been humbled. Yeah, and look, uh, we, we came into this event with the post-major scenario. Cloud9 making the playoffs was, I think, more than I had given them, to be fair. Post-major scenario sounds like a Midwest emo band. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, but they're one of these teams that need to reconsider what comes next. Apparently, there's some rumors in the CIS region, according to Overdrive and the Reddits that people have been reading today. Uh, but them, the Brazilians, oh. need to make a change. Yeah. Fury interview was very down. Wasn't it? But, yeah, that's... Uh, don't don't get don't talk too much about Fury. Yanko hasn't taken his meds today. He might, might start rocking back and forth feverishly. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see... Uh Brazilian team actually be contenders again. Yeah, but the problem is, over there, the contracts are apparently out of control. Because you'd love to get Big Uzera. Oh, okay. Yeah, Big Uzera, K Serato. And QZ. QZ. The A4 is the superior rifle. Don't talk to me about your price points. More bullets is nice. And the crispness when you're on one ping. Brah! Easy as that for Robsy. Ropsicle. And we'll get the plan. But will they get the round? This would be for 10. Bomb has been planted. Double digis. Oh, we know where you are, Hobbit. So does Robs. That's his third high impact round again. He's having a good day in the office, is Robs. And this time he's in Frozen, is joining him at the top of the scoreboard as well. So over the course of these maps, we've seen Brokey, Robs, and Frozen fragging up a storm. If people are wondering the context of this matchup, we'll give you all of that and more. Group B, FaZe started with a win over Namiga. Cloud9 started with a loss to FlyQuest. That was the best of ones. From there, FaZe took on Astralis yesterday and lost 2-0. That put them down into this lower bracket position. Cloud9 picked up the victory against Wildcard. That's how we have this head-to-head. -head. However, this is not for qualification for the playoffs. An extra best of three must be played, and that will be against the winner of FlyQuest versus Namiga. FlyQuest currently one map to the good, have just turned to their map choice of Inferno. So there you go. Whoever wins this one will have to play another game later today and will be the final team locked in for the playoffs of IEM Chengdu. Lobby and ramp aggression. And success is found on either side of the server. Frozen to be the one to respond to any leaks down lower. Hobbit catches Carrigan looking the wrong way. This would be a hard round to put back together. The problem is, Rain is back of warehouse, so for him to activate, he has to start taking some risks, and he's doing so. Brokey's got a chance, though. Oh, Ooh. do you think he killed him? I think he stopped shooting. Yeah, Brokey's chance is oh, only the one. It felt a bit different if Rain had converted. Instead, Frozen finds himself in the wrong part of the map, underneath that bomb site now flooded with C9Ts. I think he's saving on this one, isn't he? No way up the event. Was considering secret, but now is just opting for the safest route towards ramp. The Cloud9 continue to battle forward, bringing it back to just a three-round game. The first... Oh, hold up a second. The first round for them on the T side. How do you explain the, the form of Cloud9 when they beat the one of the few teams that beat the uh, major champions over in Copenhagen. They, they even thrashed at Na'Vi 13-2, uh, 13-6 on Ancient and Overpass. And then they've come into this one, they've lost to FlyQuest, and then they got 13-3 by FaZe on the same map they beat Na'Vi. Counter-Strike maths isn't maths in. No, but again, and, and I know it's a bit of a... Um Cop-out? No, uh, I don't know if it's a cop-out, but just the post-major uh, scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. It really does mean a lot. Because right now, you you had your biggest event. Now, essentially, the rest of the season is these smaller tour stops. And when we think rosters are going to be making changes, I don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes, but I, I would hope, for their sake, that there are conversations about that. Because you referenced this before. Do you want to be a team that can... 
play some good Counter-Strike but never win a final? Or do you want to be a team that can lift trophies? And I don't think Cloud9 are there at the moment. Whereas FaZe have been close but no cigar over and over again. Uh, they're back, getting back into this one, however. Double Orb set up, completely smoked off. Broke already dead. Rain as well. And it's a 5v3 number advantage. So this game's about to heat up. Oh, good find from Hobby there. Oh, finished off by Frozen. He even puts Axile on notice. Tags him up, forces him down secret. Now, Perfecto is the uh, the secret agent in this 3v2. I feel he'll be caught off guard by this Frozen, won't he? Yeah, you're not expecting this at this point, are you? It'd be a very impressive clear. And so, Perfecto, who will profit. And Rob's it's going to be like trying to hold on to this, I would imagine. A double AWP and didn't even get a chance to work it, right? So the Yard completely being obliterated. Rain and Brokey just dropping in the blink of an eye. Axel clearing out A. The bomb's still down towards lower for now, but with Sector called clear. Oh, and now they know exactly where he is. And what he's got. Should be uh, locking in that plan and already setting the hunt. Perfecto is almost anticipating the uh, ramp relocation. Wow, well played. Uh, good awareness. Harosh, the way. They don't need the AWP to function on the T side of Nuke either. Mm, on the CT too. side, I think it's a, you know, a very important part, but the T side, definitely not. I remember back in the day when I would be calling T sides, I'd almost tell my teammates, like, my AWP is not to use it. You can keep yourself a whole lot more mobile. But this uh, it should be a free round for Cloud9. FaZe Clan just investing in. A mere flash. FaZe, maybe if they took their foot off the gas, thought this was already done. Ah, oh, they're going to have to do it the tough way. We'll just become a one-round game before the rifles are invested into the next, and it will be with 2,400 as the loss bonus. A noisy rotation down the vents. I wonder how much Electronic had heard of them dropping down the vent from his previous position. But it has forced the rotation, and now the re-rotate. Yeah, I think Electronic hurt a bit because he's mulling out towards the vent. Being very cautious about this one. Understandably so. No foot faults wanted against the easiest of the rounds. And they're in. Flash, Zoot's combo. It's a satisfying one as Rob realizes he left his gun behind. He wasn't the only one who came out of the vent. Brokey too. I don't think Axile's ready for this. Oh, well, it doesn't matter now, does it? Axile didn't even bother acknowledging it. But my teammates will take care of that. I want to find Frozen. He threw away his gun. Oh, we just heard the Zeus reload. Good damage. Great damage. He might die to the bomb. Yeah, he did. Well, there's plenty of money right now to reinvest for Cloud9. 8.6 for, for Perfecto before he reinvests. Boomish has 8.8. There's going to be a tactical timeout. So Neo, starting to see them slacking. This is where they need to zone in to close out map number two or Mirage, the third and deciding map is just around the corner. Frozen putting in a decent shift, 20 kills. You highlighted his impact just before. 12 for Rops, Rain, and Brokey. And Carrigan, the man who felt like he was having to do it all yesterday against Astralis. Definitely not the case today. Now, will FaZe have to be a little bit more respectful of the space that Cloud9 are attempting to take with their smoke walls towards Yard? They don't have many HEs whatsoever to blow open the smokes, wipe them clean, and look for some free fights. Just one on Rain. Hobbit lining up the wall yet again. So a Glaive smoke for Electronic to work with has to be cautious. Connect with the waterfall and start making their room, making their way across towards secret stairs. 
damn, Electronic trying to find a gap straight into rain. Oh, they'll punish with Tracer Fire there. Wouldn't have had such an issue with a silence then before. It's a big kill to give over from Rain. He also had the info that there's more bodies outside. Cloud9 have been functioning quite well in these gun rounds. Electronic, the one to fall with only nine kills, so it's the rest of them they've been looking to. Similar kind of round with the Perfecto position as uh, we've seen previously, finishing low sight. I think we'd call that a safety net, wouldn't we? A safety net, indeed. Allows them to kind of work safely without having to constantly be concerned about the flank. Agon needs at least one. Oof, and here we go. Finds the first. The second is magnificent. Carrigan doesn't have the bullets, but he will get away with his life. He's got teammates now, and Brokey rotating in. Was anticipated <laughs> through the crack. Formed by his own bullets, the manufacturer of his own demise. Is, it's an 11th for Phase's CT side. It could just be... Ending in a couple of rounds time, or will Cloud9 find their feet once more after a run of three? I think mentally they were like, yeah, this is done. Because they had such a decent lead coming into this, uh, sorry, at the start of this second half with the pistol, the conversions, the first four. But Cloud9 battled back, Neo took the time out, they took a breath, they composed themselves, and now let's see if they can close. A shot to open. It's boom on the T side orb. He's pulled it out. Main punish for his overstep. So there's a deviation from the previous round. It's FaZe Clan are at the disadvantage now. They are heading Rops' his way. Never to be underestimated in these positions. Can muster up a boost for boom. Rops actually perfectly tucked in. This is not really a position you clear with the molly, so... Oh, oh he goes ahead of it. He, he's given it up. Oh, huge issues. Uh, yeah, I think this, they should be considering a save. I think so too, especially now you've been molotoved off. The low site, not lost. Carrigan's fighting for this. Oh, come on. You're smoked off. You're alone. You've got four players heading into your site. Electronics even flanking lower. Uh, flanking to upper. See you later. Frozen's lost his weapon as well. Go back to A. And through all that util, force the rotation, Brokey shows that he's there. Electronic waltzes into A. And they just have to save Cloud9. Good stuff. Yeah, really good calling. I wonder what got Rop's concern to look for the fight after parking himself passively behind the box. I guess thought he needed some information. Stepped out, poor timing, got nothing you, done. When you were saying, you know, it's probably not going to be cleared... Does that mean you you visualize them kind of hearing it all, catching them as they descend, like a real late play? There was a lot to worry about. So you're either going to have to group up and do some type of a, a re-aggression, or you're going to have to hope that one player can get a multi-kill. And if you play a cheeky position like that, and, the, and they do come your way, then you're unsuspected and likely to grab a couple of kills. But by taking that duel, maybe you thought the players were closer. I'm not sure either way. I don't think it matters. As this gets very tough for FaZe. The finances are in an awkward spot. I think that they should just take a bit of a partial investment behind the two saved guns. They shouldn't go all in, which means they're not allowing Cloud9 to get themselves up to 11, but that is the most likely scenario. Because next round, with the loss bonus being 2,400 and everybody's residual cash currently for phase, they will be able to have a full buy. Right. But that's where we're right down to the wire. And it's only going to take, you know, one moment going wrong. Because Cloud9 have looked quite poised on this T-side. They've been able to get away with their smoke walls, getting the room that they're looking for. They seem to be pack rolling a lot. I don't think Rain was expecting a T-side AWP in the previous, which is why he poked his head over the top of blue. But regardless, they gave up that opener. So, FaZe, the pressure is on. And this is where your individuals need to give you a moment of brilliance. Cloud9 are fighting for their life. They are. Backed into a corner, but T-side rounds, they're coming. The bar was set, 6-6 six, six on the half. Squeaky lurk smoke from Axar. Move it again. He knows Brokey survived, so the AWP on the mix, or in the mix, on either side of the server. Brokey's aggressive towards Hart. 
Yeah, it's worked out for him multiple times in recent memory. And Carrigan. Ooh, this is uh, a tough one for him to contend with. If he wants to try and poke his head out once these smokes arrive, he's going to probably get a rude shock. What's the ask? You know, why would he go more forward? That's the question. So, well, there it is. The smoke wall deployed in the second phase, thinking nobody was across just yet, and that catches him completely off guard. And now that AK completely unretrievable. Couldn't have gone worse. What can you possibly do, young Brokey Brokerson? Of Brokeville. California. I think they sent Brokey back up the vent. Yeah. He almost invites them to finish towards B. Faze might play for exits. Everybody upgraded as far as armor is concerned. Brokey needs to get out alive. Might need a support crew. And oh, <gasps> that's going to be too late. Okay, Frozen, your new objective has been released in the dossier. It's uh, mission AWP retrieval. Rain. In support of that. He read the brief too. Ah, oh, good. On the same page at least. Oh, and this gets tough. Thought Axile was considering coming up ramp. If he does, best of fights. The AWP are frozen. He's going to be hunted. Big barrel spotted. Two players coming up ramp into Rops' position, I believe. Oh, Rops has dropped off. Wanted to get himself a better weapon. This is, um, yeah, making the best of a bad situation. The uh, lemonade. The lemonade? Yeah. From the lemons? Exactly. Well, this is what they came into the round with. The AK and the AWP, and they're going to leave with it. Nice. In a roundabout way. Terrorists win. Something about a Dropping smoke. him a smoke. Yeah, so he's going to do the wall, perhaps? Hobbit's been throwing it traditionally. Maybe Boomich is dropping the smoke? That could be. Because he's the AWPer? Perhaps it, yeah. But it has to happen now for phase 11. 11. Hobbit dropped to smoke. There's the info. We got it. Wall of smoke's right off the rim. Did Brokey just drop in? This is a very passive setup. Yeah, what? because they, they're conceding outside a lot, right? So they, this is a turtle setup. Look where Rain's playing. He's not even investigating secret. They have been losing this, like, yard time and time again. There's so many bodies behind it. They're not even trying to play for the fights because in a lot of these exchanges, FaZe have been losing them outside. So it's a full turtle setup. Like, Rain is playing on the railing. So they've conceded secret control, and this is just playing for lobby. So at a certain point, they will have to start worrying about heaven and hell. But Cloud9... Through the second wave again, or poke across. So essentially, FaZe have said, hey boys, do not give them the early fight in the round. Make them run the clock right down for their finish. We'll turtle up, we won't give them a number advantage, and we'll play for the sights. They don't have a lot to finish towards B. It's going to be a molly. That's about it. This is going to be a fight. Oh, he's still got util as well. Rain will throw out a smoke on doors. Oh, it gets really tough now for Cloud9. That's an easy one, though. Descending the vents. Usually a no-go. They're going to go vent to top. They are, but it's, it's all about this duel. It's all about this duel. He's taken down Perfecto. They're up the vent. Can't do anything about it. Huge trade from Axile. Carrigan's here as well. He's the thorn in their side, and he's taken down the bomb carrier. No time for this, Axile. Down, Boomage joins him. Carrigan, a huge high-impact round with no chance for Hobbit other than an AWP into the next. Oh. And so, yeah, your turtle uh, setup, or FaZe's turtle setup, as you highlighted, is uh, is going to break the streak. Because you can see just how much utility they're taking to yep. these multiple waves towards Yard. Because uh, they've obviously looked at the demo and seen how disruptive FaZe are. They'll always crack open the smoke walls. And look, Frozen uses too many bullets. That's his biggest problem, because then they fly up the vent for the trade. Even if you grab one more, still would have been overwhelmed. But Carrigan has had two huge multi-kill rounds on the CT side. The one down towards lower. 
and now on Hart. So his impact on this CT side has helped them get overtime secure. Okay, he's just impact fragging at the moment, isn't he? In the absence of others. He was lagging behind a little bit on the scoreboard. Not anymore. Cloud9, there is an AWP on the spawn. They're not using it. Oh, this implies they could be going for something very aggressive. I set a piece off the rip. Not it might be because they, they've, right, it's been quite delayed. They might just change the pace. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Testing phase. A pace change. Lots of damage. Lots of destruction. It's a double from Frozen. Carrigan's here to receive as well. Such an all in maneuver in the last round, and Cloud9 go down. A quick and convincing finish. FaZe Clan rejects the aggression, repel the invaders, and Cloud9 eliminated by FaZe Clan in two. What a well pieced half for Cloud9 to get back into it, but Carrigan, he's always going to find solutions. They solve the puzzle. And then at that point, Cloud9 looked to change the tune. They were getting space, they were taking yard, they were playing a lot of 4-1 four, four, ramp, 4-1 out towards secret. And eventually that total setup, that's the change from FaZe Clan on the CT side. It's enough to break the will of Cloud9, a top rush, bludgeon to death. It's a 2-0 overpass. Oh. They were not showing up whatsoever. What, I, that call? I can understand it. I understand it, sure, but I mean, it's just to, to do it when there's so much at stake. Your tournament life on the line is, it's an all-in maneuver. It's all the chips to the center of the table. I want to hear the desk's take on that one. Let's go and do that now. Yeah, thank you very much, gentlemen. What a way to be ending it out. Cloud9 thought they could pull off that aggressive maneuver, but they say, hell no. They eliminate C9 from the Intel Extreme Masters Chongdu 2024, and now FaZe, just one BO3 away from making it to the playoffs. That'll be determined by the result going down the B stream at the moment. But uh, yeah, I don't know, kind of an anticlimactic end to that map after I was maybe convinced that Cloud9 could potentially pull us through. Yeah, I'll be honest. Personally, I don't mind the call because what they've been doing the whole half pretty much is slow playing outside, finding openings outside, taking control of secret, all of that stuff, right? And then to switch it up in the last round, even though some guys also didn't have like full money, so it makes sense a little bit on that side of things. To be honest, the question would be, why did FaZe start heavy A again, right? Like, is that something that maybe they remember from practice that Cloud9 likes to change the pace in that sense. But yeah, their protocol was really good with the anti-rush. You could see Frozen was full blind, but still got uh, two kills. And yeah, anticlimactic, but I think it could have worked. Yeah, I mean, it's even more so frustrating because Cloud9 had FaZe's number figured out. Like, I don't really mind the two round that FaZe win because I do believe it's Kerrigan's single-handedly winning these rounds. Like you were talking about a multi-kill in control on the B side where he's under a lot of pressure and then the triple in HUT. This mm. is him just literally manufacturing two rounds where Cloud9 were completely keeping them in the dark. So a little bit of frustration at the end to throw just caution to the win and try that fast play. But, you know, fair play to Kerrigan. Uh, yeah, I love that you bring up giving props to Kerrigan because, yeah, this could have been a totally different story if it wasn't for his own individual heroics going down in the tail end of this, uh, this nuke. Absolutely. Those multi-kills were crucial. I mean, FaZe was struggling after the pistol and the initial conversion to find those gun rounds. And it was Kerrigan who delivered them, right? I think FaZe probably caught a little bit off guard by that boomy chop actually from silo when he found openings in a couple yes. of rounds then their money was gone you know they go from an eco into a half by saving some guns like all of a sudden the game is getting close and yeah cloud9 was finding uh plays but Kerrigan just stepped up, stepped up and uh, shut them down. And it's impressive to see Cloud9 bounce back in because the way FaZe started this game was super impressive. It's a 4v5, but pay attention to all of the movement that's happening on the map. Robs is already in secret, a little bit of a bait and switch for a kill. Rain in CT spawn. There's been so much movement on the map that FaZe have to keep up with. Frozen at the same time is taking that little bit of a gap in the smoke towards door. And these are moments that, sure, you can practice them a little bit, but what's going to matter is the level of communication and decision making here as well. A bit of a bait and switch, noise in the vent, for rain to be peaking from main. Uh, this was, when I saw FaZe win this round, I thought that's it, it's 13 to six. Like there's no way Cloud9 is gonna be able to keep up. So props to them to be able to sort of create an intensity in this game where it looked like FaZe had it figured out. Yeah, just unfortunately too little too late. And it was kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, Alex and Chad touched upon it. I think the overpass will be the thing that we remember from this series because it was just such a slow start for Cloud9. And uh, we know what FaZe like to do best when you give them an inch, they're, they're gonna take them up. But they failed to, they failed to win a single 
single pistol round, you know, in, in this series. Like, that's another struggle to having to play with slow starts, also with the style that Cloud9 has. That's a little bit difficult. Why? Because when you're playing heavy default, right, the CTs, they need to sort of make calculated gambles, take risks, throw in some aggression to break your default. That's way more difficult to do if you're 0-3 down and, you know, losing a round means you have to play with pistol. It's, it's easier when you have a strong economy behind you and you can throw these different things in. You can also have an op, you have the good uh, weapons, the good utility. So, yeah, really struggled without those pistols, Cloud9. I did. agree with you. I also think sometimes it is a, an indictment of a team to not be able to have a map pick that you know you can convert. Mm -hmm. and I think we see that time and time again with teams that are a little bit uh, floppy on how they approach the game. You never really know. There's no guarantee. Sure, because of the quality that's within, they're on a CT side of Nuke, suddenly, hey, they, they put a game together and they're capable of doing it. But we're not in a situation where we can say for sure, this is the map pick, that's going to be all right. That's happening. Well, I think it's fun. Anubis, but unfortunately yeah, here, you know, not I, I think that's also, that's Anubis not is the one map that's not a lot. where you can so, sort of trust them, maybe. Sometimes. Yeah, um, not me though. More often than not, you can't. Um, let's flip the conversation back to FaZe. Obviously, uh, just to contextualize, not qualified for the playoffs just yet. They'll be playing a probably likely FlyQuest. They won on map number like? one. Yeah, I mean, we're just coming out of the halftime break. It, you know what? It, it, it's pretty even. Um, but uh, all things considered for them moving forward, um, surely they're going to be the favorite depending on whoever they face from that B-Stream game, right? Yeah, I think so. Because I think there's so much veterancy that they know not to fall into some of the traps that this very specific format brings to the table, right? One can be being a little too, too content about this first game. I don't think that's going to happen to them. I think they know what's about. Two, managing your energy, your stamina throughout the day. Now, listen, 66 minutes to Liquid versus Mouse, and then only after that, there's going to be that other game where they get to find an opponent. So there's a little bit of energy management that you have to put together. They know how to do it as well. So I, I, I truly think that the window to punish phase has now passed, and they've let this post major hangover whatever term you want to name it and now they're probably dialed in and these are tricky a little bit you know i would say you go back you let your players take a nap probably not kerrigan and neo you know like they need to sort of watch the games you you're hoping for kerrigan as well to be able to get some rest the coaches they don't get no sleep um but yeah you the the main thing is having energy for that final game right like phase is a team when they're on point they will beat any team out there so you don't want people to be tired and sort of sluggish coming into that series and a couple of guys may have may, may be having some trouble sleeping on that team what do you think rain's routine is he's our air force aim high of course he's been so consistent across two maps but do you think he likes a, to have a little banana snack do you yeah, think gym. he's like Lift. a yeah rain lifting? lifts yeah he understands the the positives from from going to the gym in terms of energy maybe not now maybe he did it before the game but yeah i think rain just a rock reeling an incredibly stable player an incredible teammate right obviously in terms of individual performance in cs2 a little bit up and down with the addition of frozen also he had to change some positions around get adjusted to that but uh, yeah one of the guys that you just always want to have uh, on your team and uh, had a good series here yeah absolutely i think sometimes he might be a little bit guilty of disappearing in games that have a lower either prestige or importance he might just go missing a little bit but as soon as the back is against the wall you know if you're phased you can trust in him once again massive step up if you compare the first day to here i know his numbers are stratospheric but it's a huge huge build up compared to day one and i'm, I'm sure we're going to see the same rain again give me some thoughts shanko on how much he has changed as a player since you were in china with him i'm not going to talk about the school like, don't worry <laughs> yeah. don't worry but how well, oh yeah, maybe we should go look it up if you're interested in Sweet Blood Arts. Uh, anyway, yeah, how, we how don't has have he enough, changed? Actually, we probably have enough time to go through the whole series. Oh, Russia. Yeah. Russia um, game. <laughs> well, I think one of the big changes was with also Nico leaving. You know, he was given a bigger role on that team coming into 2022, really, right? He was getting some of the star roles, more responsibility, and he delivered. And I think also he improved he started working a little bit more on his game uh right which also helped like in uh, at certain different aspects of his game and i think he just showed what he's capable of winning that mvp in antwerp right really stepping up for the team and i'm really happy for him because he's a great guy a great teammate a coach's dream as well never makes a fuss about anything like whatever you suggest for him to do he will do it whatever you tell him to do he will get it done and tr do his best yeah. trying right so yeah i wish him nothing but continued success i mean it's a treasure to have in a team like literally it is a luxury to have rain in your ranks uh, i do think obviously 
Dupree gets a lot of praise for the incredible consistency and the success throughout his whole career, but Rain's name is up there in terms of the most consistent mm. player with incredible longevity as well, always at the highest level with different lineups, different roles. He's always there. And also has to be said, probably the best raw aim I ever saw in a player, right? Like his ability to just adjust also when he's out, out of position, right? You talk about some other guys, they maybe have better crosshair placement, maybe better positioning, but raw aim, like Rain is definitely up there. Well, FaZe do survive for now, as unfortunately it's Cloud9 to meet that bitter end here in Chengdu. So let's get a few departing thoughts, courtesy of Electronic. Unfortunately, Electronic, this is where the journey ends for Cloud9. Uh, I do wonder, like, because when it comes like to your team, like whenever everything is going good, there's like smile, there's smiles, like there's giggles. But like, whenever like you start giving away the rounds, the team kind of feels like pretty silent. Do you feel like that is something maybe that is causing some issues or problems? Ну для начала, наверное, так с каждой командой будет, когда которые выигрывают раунды, они будут улыбаться, когда они будут проигрывать важные раунды, они не будут после этого довольны и будут, наверное, с каждым обидным раундом. Проигрышного обидным раундом, да, все будут тилтовать, так называемые. Ну, если вы мне покажете хоть одну команду, которая не расстраивается от отданных раундов и которая не улыбается, когда выигрывает, ну, тогда да. Yeah, he just says like this, like pretty normal for every team. Like whenever you're winning rounds, you're happy. When you're losing, like obviously you're frowning, you're sad. Like and the more you're losing, like, the harder. And he's also saying like, okay, show me, show me the team that will be like smiling when you are losing rounds. Uh, I had an update with Groove like after the first map, and he said that like there were just too many mistakes that were made on the first map. Uh, is was it like individual mistakes or maybe like team decision mistakes? Я не знаю, мы не, ну, я еще не смотрел, мы не смотрели демку, поэтому мы не можем, ну, я не могу так сказать, наверное, это совокупность и тех и тех ошибок. Счет потому, что был максимально разгромный, скажем так, даже по игре, как бы, у нас на первой карте не особо много шансов было там на взятие раундов некоторых. Поэтому я думаю, что это точно совокупность обоих факторов, и не было такого, что кто-то там по индивидуалке, ну, был, да. Не, наоборот, что он был, не просел, да, да, да. да. So yeah, basically he's saying that like when it comes to like the situation on the first map, uh, right now it is hard for him to actually say like what exactly caused it, but most likely it was the combination of two things. That it's not a scenario like where like one player is just like being like is, was dragging the whole team. It's just probably most likely the combination of two things. One final thing is, unfortunately, yes, now the tournament ends for you. But like, what's the next goal? Like, what are you gonna try to improve? Like, it's like the map pool, maybe change like, positions, maybe communication. What is would be the goal? Я не знаю, не могу ответить на этот вопрос. То есть не могу ответить на этот вопрос. Yeah, he cannot say. Like probably we'll need to like to watch some demos, like make do like, some reviews to figure it out. Right, Electron? Thank you very much. Спасибо. Thank you. They just need to work on their aim, positioning, grenade use. <laughs> so, like, that's the meme. It's the meme all over again. <laughs> I don't know. Something seems really broken in this Cloud9 lineup. Yes. And I don't know what... I don't think just removing one player and adding an upper fixes it, right? I think it might even have to be two players. There doesn't seem I mean, to be any... Step. Yeah, I don't think there's chemistry in this lineup, you know, like it just does, it seems weird. Yes, Electronic is right, like when you're losing, no one's happy when they're losing, but sometimes they don't seem happy when they're winning yeah, either. I mean, it's, it's, not <laughs> just, it's not just being mad that you're losing, because any competitor has that feeling, but it's most so the lingering sensation that you're doing something profoundly wrong and that you might be wasting your time. Mm. And I think this is the worst as a player, when you yeah. are aware that something is wrong with whatever work you're putting in, the direction you're going into, and you're investing time and energy and motivation into that for what you think is nothing, Super frustrating. I think that's the problem, but not necessarily that you're doing the wrong thing. I sh think they just feel that their ceiling is too low with this lineup. You know, I think... I think they realize I there's think, a problem in yeah, what they're doing I, now. I, I think pro yeah, I think probably that's the, the issue that they don't feel like they can win tournaments with this roster, right? So then you're like... And you have players who are championship winning players, you know, the core from Navi and whatnot, and you're like, well, how motivated can I be when I don't really believe in this project? And also, I, I know that the way you were winning Counter-Strike years back isn't just applicable now. I know the meta evolves and Counter-Strike gets a higher level and all of the details, I'm aware of that. But still, when you're Electronic, when you're Boomage, when you're Perfecto and you have been winning and you know what it is to win and you're looking at your own team and you think, shit, like the, the way we're supposed to be winning cannot be applied here. It cannot. They had, I'm not gonna go on the whole like simple romantic angle. It's not about that. Sure, they had to go with them, but they had such a way to think of the game, like what can work, what tricks can work, how to approach this situation, hey, back 
against the wall. This is how we can go about it. I, there's a weakness outside. I mean, sure, Boomich found his reign one time, but we talk about it at the desk because it happens <laughs> once every eight months. So it, it must be really frustrating if you're electronic. Like, you probably know how to win the game, but you cannot unlock it. It's like a video game where you don't have the character. You see what you're supposed to do. Behind the paywall, it's and behind you the don't paywall. have the money to I swear that's get what it is. It. <laughs> it's like Mario on Nintendo 64, where you were running up the stairs, you didn't have the, the stars, you couldn't get to the end. That's It's how it feels for Cloud9, and I understand the frustration. But that's where I, I slightly disagree with your point. It's like, okay, yeah, sure, if they could change a couple of people, if we could approve the chemistry, but surely just getting an opera and seeing how that <laughs> works is an easy but solution. But Freya, they had an opera who benched himself. One of the best stoppers in the region that they have. Why did he bench himself? But they didn't have a leader at the time. <laughs> well, they're, they're always missing that, that, that something. It's, <laughs> okay. it's like the triangle: a leader, an opera, a happy team. Choose two, or maybe just one. You can you can only have two out of three. <laughs> you have five dollars, and this one is three dollars, and this. Oh, what do I do now? Sorry, yeah. they didn't have an actual functional team for like about eight months now. It's I'm a fact. glad that I'm not the general manager of Cloud9. Not that I would ever be, but. I I'm thanking my lucky stars, I'm not today. Um, should we check in with the B stream? Because then we can actually mm. theorize what's going to go down later on today with phases, potential it's opponent. It's competitive. Ooh, it's very competitive. Like the first, first map was, over time. Yeah, yeah. It's a FlyQuest had a lead in that one too. Namiga managed to come back. And here, I mean, looking like a close game. We, nothing's guaranteed. Uh, honestly, I know you have seen it too. When you're FlyQuest and you brush Cloud9 aside and you're starting getting on your own high like euphoria about the level you can have and oh my god I could see us in the playoffs we're playing this Namiga no disrespect who the hell are they like it's, we're gonna be BP fine as well like, we're gonna be fine exactly and we're gonna be fine and then suddenly the game gets much tighter than what it should be and you have to immediately reset like mentally you have to forget about we're supposed to win who are these guys we were about to beat VP it's it's pretty tricky as a team when you're kind of fighting to push the ceiling but at the same time kind of push back the lower team trying to come to you that's complicated and they are right in it right now ultimately uh does it matter who wins are phase gonna take down either team anyway i i think so the, with the way they've been playing but i want to see flyquest win so i see how they fare against phase okay and i think at worst case they get another series against a really good team to see what they need to work on and and, and what separates them still from some of these tier one squads that's a fair point well, we can move on to our next game. We have a little bit of an extended break, but make sure you join us back in a few because these two teams already qualified for the playoffs. This series is a question of who's going to be making it to the semi-final. It's going to be Liquid versus Mouse, coming up in a bit. It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead this late in the game? At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right wear and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Trust anyway. All the thieves dress as sheep tell you they know the way. So bite the hand that feeds you to the wolves as prey. Got you nauseous Your shit belongs in the driveway Don't know nothing but you wish, babe So 
they flash on the page Now they're pleading on the fifth and last mistake But I know that dirty secrets that can keep us hold the kiss to the gate Only open for the pawns who sell their souls just to play I don't keep up with the fake, we are not the same So go take your losses, classic and products left in a box with nothing to promise
Turn up this up right now. I like this up right now. You might be stuck right now. This might loosen me up right, up right, up right, up right, up right now. Get off this bus right now. Get acting sus right now. This is this one, one. Turn up this up right now. I like this up right now. You might be stuck right now. This might loosen me up right, up right, up right, up right, up right now. Get off this bus right now. Get acting sus right now. This is this one. I know what you want. I know what you need. Some trees. Ain't no smoke, it's made for lungs, but you believe. But it's okay, we make mistakes, be relieved. So why art thou invulnerable? They're not like me, remarkable. My eyebrows too intense. I rock out like the Brahma. I wanted to be like the Wayne Johnson teacher, said I'm trouble. Once I clock my dreams won't work, I started snapping a boss bubbles. I think it's how creators see. A creator's be perceive this fly, you're whipping right, but off ID, you're broken cheap. I need an electric bike to vend this food, to vend these rules. Get these tools, cause haters drew, they're watching me. Haters discretion and vice. Oh me, oh my, I just want to survive and to see under darkness. Hiding from the light, all we do is push violence. Pain over violence, radio silence.
Liquid versus Mouse. Now, if you're a fan of one of these two camps, fear not. They've already made it through to the playoffs, rightfully earning their spot. But this series decides who takes a hop, skip, and a jump straight through to the semis. We've got a lot to be dissecting here, and we have a very special guest joining us, myself, Yanko Maniac, and Sabrina, head of team operations for Mouse. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, how do you guys go about your day off? Because obviously you rightfully earn a place in the playoffs already, straight on through on day one. So uh, yesterday you had an off day. What is the tackling yeah. that situation? I think for this off day, um, it might have been a bit different from ones that we had during the major. So it really depends on um, what you had previously. So in our case, we had a quite late match the day before. Um, we got home, I think, after midnight, had to eat something and then everyone got to bed kind of late. So I think that day we started a little bit more later, got everyone some time to rest, especially with the kind of full schedule that we have right now. It was more focused on recovery in this case. Um, and then we made sure to also offer something to see in the city because that's something that um, I think players also really appreciate if there's a little bit of time for that. So uh, we had a little activity planned. <laughs> These are lovely pictures. These are so wholesome. Yeah, All the pandas. Yeah, I'm actually jealous. Is it is it worth it? I, I would like to go. Yeah, it's very worth it. It looks amazing. I recommend. Panda is on in that picture as well. Uh, yes, we got some <laughs> uh, accessories for the team. So uh, some of the players had these Aww. cute bucket heads and I got some ears on as well. Did you learn anything about the pandas? Um, They are huge. Like They're much <laughs> bigger than you would think. Oh my God. And they, oh. they just kind of sit around, chill there, eat their bamboo and it's like... All right. It's very cute. We're seeing these nice footage and it opens up a conversation. Time spent together as a team outside of the server, overrated, underrated, very important. What's your what's your take on that? That that chemistry outside the server. I think it's very important. Um, it's something that in our team um, is also one of the big factors that we put a lot of importance on. That there's, of course, also times where the players have their own individual time that they can cho choose to spend how they want to. But there's um, certain points in our schedule where we make sure to come together as a team to um, spend, for example, some uh, of the lunch or dinner hours together or those activities as well. Is everyone on board naturally with the way you do things or do you have sometimes to compromise with players or you basically have just like a one voice about how to handle these activities? Mm, it's definitely also the discussion in the team. Uh, so often uh, when there are certain points, we make sure to um, propose our ideas to the players and they can of course raise concerns or feedback if they have any. Particularly with uh, you know, a new player, like w when Jimmy joined the team, right? Because you guys were kind of already established that kind of family feeling. Obviously, a lot of the guys were familiar with each other from Mao's NXT. What's the kind of process like for getting a new player uh, ready in the squad? I think with how you mentioned that he was already in kind of um, our system with the uh, Maus NXT squad, um, it's not that difficult for him to transition. For example, I also went to an event with him previously to Lofoten, so I knew him personally as well. Um, so bringing him in, he knew the players personally, knew our stuff personally. Um, it's kind of just stepping up the maybe professionalism a little bit and the intensity also, of course, um, also adding the travel on top. But the, I would say, team environment and vibe is very similar across the board. Okay, you mentioned travel, jet lag. How yeah. bad of an issue is it actually and how do you prepare to 
be kind of getting used to it coming here. Yeah. Um, I think we are more on the lucky side for some of the teams um, that, um, of course, we're all based in Europe. So most of the tournaments, we that, that's not a topic that we are like a problem that we will have to look at. Um, if we do travel abroad, that's something that uh, we take a look at in advance. Um, that's something where our mental coach, for example, also gives recommendations, um, also looking at performance there. Um, we try to adjust our schedule in advance a little bit, um, so sleep and practice and those things. Um, and then uh, we try to be smart about it, uh, when to sleep on the flight and when we arrive, um, that we make sure that the players, for example, uh, get a lot of sunlight exposure in the mornings uh, to kind of get their rhythm back into the, yeah, back into the rhythm. Janko, your turn. You can yeah, go now. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Teacher, can I? No. I just want to know, how did you, and I'm very happy that it happened, how did you cure Brolan? How do we cure him? Yes, he Already. looked, he looked, you know, like he was done with everything. He looked like he was going to retire at 20 years old from Counter-Strike. Now he's happy again. He has a smile on his face and he's playing some great CS. Um, I think it's because he's around, um, also people his age who are just having a lot of fun playing, having fun being with each other, spending time together. Um, it's something where he came into the mix and he just instantly fit and uh, he seems to just be really enjoying his time playing. I mean, that's also what he tells us, so <laughs> I'm glad to hear that from him. I, yeah. I mean, it looks that way uh, as well. It's kind of like he's turned over a completely new leaf. Um, you've obviously uh, a head of uh, team operations, so can you give us a bit of an insight into what the day-to-day -day is for you, or is it just kind of depend on where you are in the world, what tournament you're at? Yeah, uh, I would say there's not really a set answer of what my average day looks like, because every day is kind of different. I'm uh, on the road with the CS team, our main one, um, the whole time. So wherever they are, I am as well. Um, in addition to that, I also kind of oversee some of the other teams and the general operations. Um, now with our new facility in Hamburg as well, we'll have um, the boot camps there, so I'll make sure to organize that a little bit as well. Uh, I have, of course, also some you know colleagues who uh, support me very well and uh, in those areas as well, and some of the other teams. Put on your plate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think when we see your team, I think it's obvious the vibes are really good. Uh, and we always talk about how to play good CS, it's important to be loose, right, in games and, and, and to just play loose. And I think that's what makes Maus so good in these early stages of the tournament. Now, I think when it comes to the playoffs, like, the players maybe try to overcompensate for that. It's like, okay, now we're in the playoffs, now it's serious business, you know, let's get our focus in, uh, let, let's get it done. And then you lose some of that looseness that you have. You're a little bit more, you know, stiff. Stiff, exactly. Uh, thank you, Maniac. And Always yeah, how, 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 where do you stand uh, on that? Yeah. Um, it's definitely something that, of course, we've also noticed that we, you know, haven't been going that far in the playoffs and uh, maybe haven't performing as to our own expectations as well. Um, and it's one of the key points that we want to work on as well, that we kind of improve the baseline that we have. So even if, you know, the bigger games come up and maybe the audience or the nerves show up, that our baseline performance um, is at a higher level and like at a steady level. I, I'm aware this might just be more a question for a mental coach specifically, but I would like your perspective on it. We talk a lot about this potential barrier to playoffs. How do you make sure to, at the same time, work on it, but not just have a self-fulfilling prophecy where the teams is getting conditioned about, oh my God, the playoffs are coming, it's going to happen again. How do you walk that line um, yep. being around the players? Um, I think it's about just finding consistency in our everyday routines, um, that it is a playoffs game, it is important, but we make sure to kind of stick to what we know uh, and that the players also find a rhythm that makes them perform uh, kind of no matter the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Of course, we might not, yeah, it's still a journey for us, we're not 100% there yet, but it's, uh, it's the goal, yeah. Speaking of the routines, we can just see some lovely shots here. Chorzy's having a bit of a, you know, rest and recuperation time, meditation, Brolin as well. Um, do the players have their own kind of individual routines that you tailor for them kind of uh, coming into uh, a pregame a couple hours before? Or is it something that collectively you guys all do together? Um, it's something where we offer the resources. So um, that's something where our mental coach works with them as well and uh, gives suggestions and works with them on what works for them specifically. So it's not necessarily something that we impose of them or they have to do, but we give them the tools and then they can find their own routine that works for them. So as you can see, like some of them, they do the breathing uh, exercise that they do before the game uh, and some don't. So. 
I, I just had a question. Obviously, we talk about Mars as a young team, right? But they've been together for a little bit now. And from your perspective, in what area have they grown the most? Like, in what way did they change over, over the last few months, maybe year now, year and a half, for this little group? I think there's many areas that they've improved on. Um, I think someone to point out uh, maybe a little bit here as well, for example, Torji. Um, I think he's grown over the time that I've known him um, a lot. Um, he's one of the ones who's really worked on himself to have those routines, um, you know, go to the gym regularly and um, just with the breathing exercise as well, like those, you know, little things, but they keep adding up. Uh, so that's something that you've, I mean, probably also seen that he's gone, uh, grown more consistent and uh, yeah, just um, they've all become more professionals about uh, doing the work necessary um, and staying committed, I think. Just uh, one final question, because I do believe we need to let you go uh, to get into the game. Um, but uh, there's obviously quite the Mal's entourage that are traveling with you. Is there anyone you want to shout out and uh, say, you know, the impact that they're having on the team uh, behind the scenes? Yeah, um, I mean, mentioned a couple of times already, our mental coach Ole, uh, he's a tremendous help. Um, he um, is with us at most tournaments um, and he's the one who kind of supports the players and um, with, if, if there's any problems that they're having as well and with the preparation of the games. Um, then we of course also have a big media team um, and we make sure also that it's a team environment. So it's not uh, just the staff on one side and the players on the other, but we're like kind of one family. It's a, a cliche word, but I, I think it fits. Well, thank you so much, Sabrina, yeah. for your thoughts and for your time. And yeah, best of luck going into the match. But before we do dive into any of the action, let's uh, get a quick vibe check from Heku with Zeus. Oh my God, is that Team Liquid? I'm sorry. I sorry. Sorry. I, I, I had to do it. I had to do. Look, it's look sunny. Today. I, uh, I, I do. Like I look, look at like all the stuff. But we're not here because of me. We're here because of you. Because, I mean, that's probably like barely any stress right now, right? Not at all. If you saw what we were listening to in the shuttle, ask Merrick, by the way, you'd know there's zero stress going on. We're just enjoying the moment. Life's good. And what were you up to yesterday? Because I, I think I saw like some stories. Did you go to the pandas? Yeah, we went to check, check out. I think it's number one attraction here. A lot of pandas. Hey, fans. What's up? But yeah. It is, it is crazy. The amount of fans we're getting here, it's absolutely insane. Like, are you enjoying or are you already a bit maybe overwhelmed with that? I'm from Brazil, so I'm enjoying the hell out of this. This is nor normal-ish, let's call it, but this is really fun. It's kind of next level. The Chinese fans are amazing. They are. They are. And the weather. And the weather is also oh, like, I think I have not seen sun like in the last like four or five days. Where you been? In Chengdu. Oh, I mean, I, maybe because we were seeing the pandas, maybe it was super nice over there. Yeah. Recommend everyone to check it out. I went there like on one of the days early in the morning, so there'd be like the least amount of people possible. Usually you're the person who says like, OK, don't talk to Casper because he's feeling sick. How's he right now? He's starting to feel better. I mean, 10 days in a row would kind of be a new limit, mm -hmm. but I think he's starting to get a few. If he's up for it, why not? Let's talk to him. So you're saying like you're giving me permission to talk to Casper today? Just for once. All right, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Vibes seeming good in the liquid camp. And you know what? I don't blame them because taking down G2, cementing their first spot in a playoffs with this roster, that's got to feel damn good after so damn long. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely correct, Freya. I think vindication is the buzzword when it comes to Liquid, right? A team that has gone through already a whole lot of a hardship with this young roster and finally just touching, feeling, tasting what success looks like. And I think there's a whole lot of aggression pent up that's coming out that they finally feel like they can show the world what they can do. It was a very strong headline coming in from an interview as well. So I'm expecting a Liquid to defy our expectations and they themselves are ready for it. Yeah, I chatted with Zeus a little bit outside and uh, it's relief, you know, you, you feel a lot of relief for finally showing some results and showing promise. Yes, you, you believe in the project and you're putting in the work and you feel like things are going well, but at some point you need to show something for it. So the fact that they're in the playoffs, obviously two wins, but also playing some good CS, right, especially on Ancient, which we saw Inferno being good as well. I mean, that's going to feel good and that confidence boost can turn Liquid into a completely different beast. Yeah, also, I think it's a bit complicated to correctly assess them from the outside because if you look at the land results they've had the losses are against either very strong teams at blast or 
the conversation of the format at the RMR comes up when you lose against Fury and Complexity. So it's like it's hard for us to gauge. At first sight, failure, failure, failure. Then you dive in deep into it a little bit, and then there are moments where you know the counter strike is clicking, it's just not coming together. So maybe they themselves know that they were not so far away from the truth. Whereas for us, it felt like this was a complete waste of everybody's time. They might be aware that's not the case. Has there been anything that stood out to you as um, you know the biggest positive, maybe the most pleasant surprise coming out of Liquid so far? Twist. I mean, Twist, yeah, definitely. In, individually, yes. I liked it, the fact that they it felt like they had good structure, they had like good protocols, things in place, like they had a good level of teamwork and then also a little bit more positive performances from Yekindar too, because he was most definitely in a slump and uh, was going through some stuff as well and is one of the more important players on the team, has an important role as being, you know, the first guy in a lot of the times and, and, and just being that aggressive player who's supposed to create space for them. Yeah, I agree with you. I think we almost circle back to our Tezis conversation, right? We talked to him in an interview, he said, you know, in my role, sometimes it's really hard in these games, we don't have the confidence, you have to risk it all. Uh, Yekindar are definitely the epitome of what aggression looks like. The problem is when that is absent, of course, it looks a little foolish. And if confidence isn't here, then you have to somewhat work your way through having some of these tricks that you know you can use, and you have to get used to a new system as well. So definitely rough time for you, Kinder, at the beginning. Yeah, and he was very candid about his performance back at uh, the RMR as well. It just wasn't wasn't good enough, right, coming out of him. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it sucks to have to go through that uh, or, or to have to go through some personal stuff. It's such an important tournament. But, yeah, it, it was a unique situation at the RMR. Also, obviously, the format, all that sort of stuff. But in the end, they just didn't get it done when it was the most important. And on the other side of things, they weren't together for that long. I, I mean, it's a team that was patched together from all different sides. So you are going to need time, probably more time than some of the other teams. So yeah, I think really important for, for Liquid that they're showing some results here now. And when it comes to Yekindar, the problem, and I think why some of the worry is warranted is now, it's not an isolated event that he's having a little bit of a rough time. Like ever since the VP days where mm. he put his name on the map and then he tried this different role, he tried to put more responsibility on himself and that didn't work out at all. So then as a player, you have to reassess, okay, where did I go wrong? Am I am I capable of this even? All of the things I knew how to do as a player, now I can't do them anymore. My aim isn't that sharp. I spent a whole lot of time trying to figure out other things in Counter-Strike. So it's not just from one day to the other, he started having trouble. It's been long lasting. Could have just stayed in your lane, bro. Kinda. He was good in VP, you know? <laughs> you know he, he was real good in VP, it's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Not even change the team, but kind of just focus on playing. But yeah, you know, things happen. I'm sure he's evolved as a player thanks to having to be the in-game leader for a little while. Just broadens your perspective. As we get into the map, Vito, I think you know, for, for Liquid, they showed some promise on Inferno 2, obviously beating G2 on the map, so that's more of a punish pick yeah. than Ancient would be. Like, Ancient is also good uh, for Miles, and I think we might still get it as the decider here. Yeah, yeah there we like, go. Look at you, Nostradamus. Ancient, map number three, yeah, it's going to be, it was going to be either Inferno or Anubis. Obviously, Miles removing Anubis, that's pretty easy peasy, and Mirage is still a pretty strong hallmark for and, uh, the Miles boys. And in Miles, like, Inferno has been a weakness for them for a while, right? And then they played it against G2 in those quarter finals and it was just they couldn't get banana control on either T or CT side that with G2 was winning out and they still managed to make it a close game towards the end so I'm sure they were still kept putting in the work right and obviously you need to figure that out that's a really important part of the map but if they just have a little bit more success in that area like their inferno can still be potent I, I think in general Mouse's issue on the CT side is when they cannot make moves when they cannot be proactive, when they cannot just gamble to retake some parts of the map control. Some In some rounds, it's indicated and needed, but you also need sometimes to be able to play passive, have the right setup, make a gamble. You stack the wrong bomb side, it's fine, save, but you are safe on one part of the map at least. I Sometimes I see them struggling doing that. When they're forced into that passive position, it's not as solid as I would like it to be. Yeah, I think also just exertion, his performance dropped off a cliff in that uh, game compared to some of the group stage games. I expect him to have a better performance here. Brolin has been super solid, but yeah, on the, on the side of Liquid, we talked about Ekinder. This is where he will be one of the focal players, right? Fighting for that, but Nana Control and Liquid, similar to Mouse, other team that likes to be proactive, right? You know, isn't afraid of taking uh, calculated gambles, calculated risks, just being the aggressor, so I think we're in for some dynamic CS in this one. I, I agree with you, but I, I do think that for Liquid, 
I can understand relying on aggression too much because arguably they might not be fully ready. That's it. With mouse, it shouldn't be the case. Like you, we shouldn't have to overly rely on that. You're supposed to already have the legwork done to be able to have some of these passive setups. So for Liquid, of course, uh, aggression comes hand in hand with success. I don't think they can play too passively, but mouse, sometimes just call your own you number, know, trust in yourself. What I want to see is two things. Like mouse wasn't as dominant in this tournament as they are in others in group stages, right? It's been a little bit more up and down. 13-11 uh, against Tai Lu, right, in the opening game. game. Then Furia game was, like, really close. So have they settled in now? And will we see a, a good performance from them? And also, how much did these initial results from Liquid, you know, beating Heroic and beating G2, how are they going to affect them? Is their confidence going to be, you know, much higher now and they're going to be more aggressive because that they can be a very dangerous team? Or is Miles going to put them down to earth? And that's the question I'm going to pose to you guys. Who's <gasps> making it through Dang. to the semis? Now we know the maps, now we know exactly how it's going to be playing out. Until they prove me wrong, you know, until they change who they are, <laughs> Miles, I'm going with that. I think they're going to win here, right, and go straight to the semis yet again. I mean, it's tradition, right? What about exactly. you, Matthew? Yeah, I, listen, I do think we're looking at three maps here. Uh, I think for Liquid to be able to be in that position probably unlocks a whole lot of confidence as well. And we know the, the format, we know the specificity of this matchup. So I'm going to say three maps, but I'll still cite the mouse. But we do have the game ready to get going. Mouse versus Liquid and a spot for the semis. Yeah, you're dead on. Semi-finals on the line for the winner of this series. So it's all to play for. And we heard from Zeus coming into it. Liquid aren't feeling any pressure. Let me tell you, Hugo. Mouse milk, most expensive milk in the entire world per litre. 23,000 euros or thereabout. And what if I told you we've got that delicious mouse liquid coming hot and fresh down the pipeline for Ooh. your viewing pleasure for free? My God. That's what a deal. Out. And it's all for semis, Harry. It's all for semis. Whose seed is the strongest here in this seeding match? up who will impregnate their way through the playoffs it's mouse or liquid semis or quarters all to play for and, and these matches can get wild without a doubt right when both teams are already through it's just who can go further well you might see some pretty wild cs we're expecting all three maps but we start on inferno it's liquid's pick a t-side start what have they got cooking well we're about to find out aren't we as uh, it's a very quintessential T-side Inferno pistol. Nice and slow to open up. And so that's why you come in not on a level 10. Right? Yeah. You kind of build into these Inferno pistol rounds. We're professionals, you know. You don't want to start too high, or then there's nothing to build into. Take your time, Liquid. Feel out the banana. Cadian's got a grip over it right now. He's moving up with a P250, clearing angles. Liquid are ready to pounce in middle. Got that smoke on the A side as well. There's the spot. Can Cadian force the smoke out of Brolin? That's really the goal here. Zershan's lining up a flash to pop. Nice pre-aim, gets good damage off. Mouse don't bite. This is great patience for Mouse to not drop their smoke at this point in the round. But ultimately, it's still an A play. Yeah, honestly, I'm really surprised that Maus don't get more spooked by that fake that Liquid throw in over towards B. Good restraint to keep that util out. They've not moved a muscle, have Maus, and now they're going to get dealt the A play. Let's see if their stubbornness was worth it, as they do make oh. quick work of Team oh. Liquid. Toshi <laughs> tears them a new one, and it's just Twist left standing, and he'll go the way of the rest of them. It's Jimmy swinging on Outlast to find that final man. And Maus, well, they were right to believe in themselves. That is a clean pistol. Porsche, that meditation coming into the game, that deep breathing, and he just comes through swimming in the pistol round. Guy's been in the gym, in the lab. He's jacked, he's cracked, and he's put a pistol round on for Maus. Yeah, Miss Moto Smoke doesn't make things pretty either, does it? But I won't say it changed the outcome. Liquid, no bomb plant, but they force a rarity on T side, especially on this map, but they're gonna go quick up B, try and limit test this T side as your kinder with a tech gets a double opener. This is still awkward. Torshi's down middle. In fact, all of Mao's are, and they're trying to stop this bomb from crossing up B. Skulls with some Deegs. He's done a lot of damage, but they've forgotten the package. Left back at ramp. Mao's don't know it. But as, soon, as long as this goes on, the longer it goes on, rather, the more Mouse realize maybe they don't have that bomb. Liquid are going to go for the round the world. 
Senya Kinder in through A as Twist keeps an eye on the banana. Yeah, when you've hit this point and no plants come in yet, Mao's, I think they've realized what's gone on here. Liquid, the, the one major oversight of this round was leaving that bomb behind. I thought Skulls was going to grab it when he was leaving the ramp, but gets bogged down in a fight. Oh, and so now they spread out. Mao's smart about this. They go hunting for your kinder who's let loose over in top middle, and now they completely up and leave. This will give control of the bomb back over to Liquid, but, but Twist is never going to know this. Yeah, so he's going to waste a lot of time. I love this reset for Mao's because not only do they realize the flank's coming in, but now they're both playing a sight each. They're both on bomb denial. That's really the goal. And Twist, no surprise, he expects them to be nearby. He probably will waste his entire round looking for a kill. And as soon as he gets that bomb, it's going to be too late to you know go B and fake it out. Yeah. He'll have to stick he's, he's or he'll have to save. Run in. The, the, the one thing that what could go play. his way is having this smoke. That's true. But really, as Jim Pat realizes it, he can run in and try and deny this plant. So smoke comes in. He's going for the kill. There was a chance there, but not to be. Jim Pat hits his and takes three on that anti-force by round. Really nice try for Liquid, but shame that no one took the bomb. If they got it up banana, that would be a very different round. Double entry for your kinder. Skulls hit a nice one as well. He just couldn't finish his meal. And Jim Pat, the master of the mid round, the god of the late round. Or Jimmy P. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't much more wrong. Oh, okay. There. I thought that was like a reference. A little, or, you know, that's Jimmy P. We'll Jimmy call him P. That. Yeah. Old Jimmo. Well, now it's just this eco you can do a bit more cash to get armor, but should just be Mal's making this easy. You can't double kill again. No one's ever done that twice, so... Yeah, they're here in tag in the molly. And Mal's are actually looking to fight for this top middle. That looseness that the desk were talking about already shining through for Mouse. Oh, oh your Kindar. Makes it a little more interesting indeed. Mouse still have deep banana control, so oh. Liquid have to be ready to get flanked pretty darn quickly. The longer Torshi stays in middle, the more info Mouse have. They don't feel like they need to flank or they need to pre-rotate. He's hanging around very late in this round, and the jump spotting for Zershin is perfect. He sets up Shui for the round, and he can re-swing off of this MP9 contact. Deeg, damage, and there's the MP9 feasting in Banana. They even push mid. Torshi just doesn't respect this eco round, and as long as the impact stops the bomb from going down, all is under control for Mal's. Nicely done. All under control. Ooh, I like getting a here, little yeah, tidbit. Yeah, I'm going to make very, sure. Very good. Two English-speaking teams today. Yeah, I, I, let's I, really go quiet. I know we're meant to talk at the end of the round. No, no, no. But I love listening. We all want to hear what they have to say. Katie and Yakinda trying to figure out what they want to do at B. Let's see what solutions. It's very hard to go early B on this T side. We talk about that a lot right now. And they know it. Good spray for Yakinda. He does sit in front of the smoke in the Molotov. It will cost him his life. One for one. It's not too bad, to be honest. Kadian's going to give it a go as well. That's the round. That kill is everything. If they can commit now, they can get the site. But Liquid is so far away, they don't believe it. It's allowed time for Brolin to rotate. And with a kill in the apartments, Liquid are thrown into monotony. They've got to go back to their default. Delay. And once again, it's Bames John, 7 0 Jim Pat on that A site. Very safe pair of hands to entrust the bomb site to. Playing aggressive over towards short does leave him a little vulnerable to the apartment, so he's going to start to back up now. Here's that. Kaden trying to make it sound like a fake. I think at this point in the round, Miles is just going to commit to their setup. And Jim Pat, he is a very calm player, not shaken, not stirred. 
as he waits for this pop. Jimmy PE 1v3. Are we going to get it? Is he going to go 10 and 0? Going to need to be flawless in this hold because the rest of Mauser are a while away. Oh, he's got it. Not enough here. He's got to get out with wow. a kill, and the nade will help him. Twists, even though he's going to lock in that trade, has to go back for the bomb, something that Liquid keep on forgetting. They get their hands on it, but now the real round begins. 1v3 as it started for Twists. And the rest of Mao's now arrive over towards Long. Oh my goodness. He has no idea where they're coming from, right? How can you? Mao's have taken so long to retake there, grouping up on Long side. He has to leave something open and he believes they're wrapping short side. Leaves himself completely open to that long player and nice shot for Torshi. Jim, Jim Pat getting two on A there. That's just what, that's a Jim Pat round. You called him Jimmy P, didn't you? Yeah, I thought about <laughs> it, but I'll leave that to you. Young Jimson, dude, he's just done it again. So reliable in these anchor positions. What a diamond in the rough. I mean, that's been the whole story for Mouse for the last 18 months. You know, these academy players coming up into the big teams. So many different players performing above what you'd expect. Shui leaving, being dragged back into this roster. But that that talent pipeline, Harry, that goes deep down yeah. into the earth. That even felt like a diamond in the rough, though, right? Also came from the NXT squad, just out of time with the rest of the game. A diamond a in diamond, a diamond mine. Yeah, a diamond amongst <laughs> They're everywhere. diamonds. You've just got to dig. Miles, they can't keep getting away with it. Okay, this smoke missed last time. I'm keeping my eyes on the Moto side. Exec for Liquid early in the round. Yeah, Shui's up ahead of it, though. Just the one and done. It's... Jimmy down in the pit, who oh, will fall trouble. at the hands of this Molly, and the nade doesn't find success this time around. Finally, Liquid have broken through, but that bomb <laughs> dropped over <laughs> the ward short. No. Damn it. They're going to go get it now, and now will. The there we go, eventually. Oh, Exertion's making a play. I love it. Exertion. Got them right where he wants them. That one's free. No one's holding on to the short side. And so gets out with the first. Knows that Naf is in the sight. It's Twists, who's that one unknown quantity. And they're about to learn about him now. As he peeks out, doesn't want to take the shot. And he knows he's got the kill. And Twists, lovely transfer down. Beautifully done. And that's how Liquid find their first. He didn't jump the gun on that spray, did he? Just getting the barrel as Shui at long, but he waits till he has a guaranteed kill. And the transfer's right there to tuck into. Unfortunate for Jimpat, that nade goes a bit shorter. Maybe he takes two kills in that position, but burnt out, just trying to get more value out of his position, knowing swinging out wide would mean Apps player will catch him. Pretty rough spot to be in. Nice early exec for Liquid, changing the tune of this T side. Miles weren't ready for a full commit at that point in the round. Again, your Kinder's risking it all up and on, but they're getting turned into mulch. Oh, dear. Oh. Buried alive. Searching the grave digger. Banana is not your friend. Liquid go back. But a dry orb peak for Cadian. I don't know. I think Torshi's got his... Oh, oh, he's crouched though. Will he see him? He might. He doesn't. And he gets legged! <laughs> oh, that's wicked! That's gruesome! Absolutely no accounting for that. Kadian just reacts. <laughs> Still has a lot more to do in the round as Kadian, but when you hit a blind like that, maybe oh, it inspires yeah. a bit of confidence. He's feeling it. Do it again. Give me one more. Oh, oh, exertion on for the ace. By the way, this round has just been a highlight reel. All right, Skulls, now over to you. They're moving into the site. He hears the footsteps, knows that both players are here. Tick tock. No kit. No kit. Well, but surely worked out where oh, he can't no. be, but they've got to hold on for him. And on the defuse is exertion. He will get spammed oh, off of it. Oh. Skulls doubles up in the clutch. And he and saved I don't, the orb. I don't love that 4K exertion is the no, one to get on that bomb. He was closer. He smoked the bomb. Like, you don't want to overcomplicate it. Oh, mate, you oh, come back to me. Get on the bot. You defuse our cover. You know, oh, that's just good gnarly. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, it's just pronounced the G in Gnarly. By the way. <laughs> I was going to say another word. That is Gnarly, Harry. Gnarly round. The G is loud in that one. Yeah, it, the lack of kit kills the round because you're just going to fake it if you have a kit, but they realize like they just have to stick and hope Shuey gets the kill. So that's a bit un unfortunate for Mal's. Nice clutch out of Skulls. Nice kills out of Cadian. From Brazil to Denmark, they get it done. And Liquid take two rounds on this T-side. Back-to-back -back with one alive each time. Their money is in the air right now. But this is where you can make it that little bit sweeter. Full USP round and one flash. Mao's want to try and fight and cause a bit of chaos. Now, it probably won't get super exciting. I'll level with you. Wow. You're telling everyone to tune out? No, because at the same time, while it definitely shouldn't get exciting, it's Mao's. You're saying there's a chance? No, also, I'm not oh. saying that. I've like tried to play both sides so that I never lose here. It's a good strat. I certainly have an idea. Can they uncover the terrible truths of this five-man mid setup? Or will Mal's come running through that hole? Oh, that's an interesting flash. It goes up and over and into mid, but Naf will take two. Maybe some more. He's down low. Finished off. A couple of kills here. Not a bad round for Mal's. It should be the end of it, though. Can Torshi creep around the apartment and find himself a gun? Oh, Skulls has got him. And Liquid up to three now. Building slow and steady into this game. Mao's a rebuy. Session calling for a setup, a stack. Liquid looking calm, unfazed by the pressure. For Twist, you could even say Grand Slam mentality, Harry. You could. Maybe even say it, like, really cohesively. Yeah, thank you, bro. <laughs> the Gs aren't working today. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. We warm in, just like Liquid have. Yes. Flashing an exertion in towards top banana. He pulled for this little move. So he's got Brolin there with more util ready oh. to lend a helping hand. They try to play through it. Katie, and he's like, well, I've landed one wall bang, so may as well keep trying them. Oh, and he will get it. That was okay. Katie to find sure. that. I thought it was going to be Naf. Sure. And Katie now realizes just shoot everything, and eventually <laughs> something will hit. Just feels like everything's flowing for Liquid. The comms are good. Teamwork looks solid. This is against uh, informed Maus. Oh, the gap. Perfect. Catching Torshi on rotation. Skulls. That's a big pickup. It's going to send Liquid back. They don't want to go into the stack. Now, Shui has realized he's rotating early, but Skulls still has, should have him cut off on this position. It's all on Jimpat. There's one. Oh, Jimmy's going to hold the line. Oh, no Katie and miss shot. Oh, oh what a bad chases man. him with the USP. He's sick. He is sick. He is twisted. He is cold as ice. How does Jim Pat win that round on his own? He keeps doing it. Mal's leave him solo A. They don't need any more men. Just play 4-1. Slipping Jimmy. Steals yet another round from the palm of Liquid. Oh, that is despicable. Yeah, liquid ain't flowing now. No. Jimmy put some ice on it. Temperatures cooled right off after that round. That was one that was really taking uh, shape for the liquid squad, yeah, right? Like, like, that's a great call for liquid. Exactly, like fantastic realization yeah. when Skulls catches them rotating away that now they've softened up this a site defense. Basically, the goal is don't get triple killed. That's like the only way Liquid lose the round. Hard though, isn't it? Yeah. When you're up against the Finnish man that can. Oh, he can. He he did. Push down mid now for Maus. 
Should be trying to lead from the front, and he's jumped past that AWP. Oh. Kenny didn't even oh. realize. He's nearly <laughs> dead before the round's even started. The round's well, ended. Kadian enjoy the next minute and a half. Oh, they won't let him live that long. Torshi just gets involved, throws himself down middle with three kills, and now Mal's are playing with confidence with Bravado on the CT side of Inferno, no less, running down mid in a rifle round. Roland's feeling like us right now. We're just spectators to the madness. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's here. At the end of the, he's like, good job, guys. Keep it up. Another good round. Probably. I'm glad we're all having fun. <laughs> oh, this is the, I mean, this could, this could be such a different game if not for those two massive multi-kills that Jim Pats gets on the CT side. But now it feels like Liquid might get stomped on this first half. Yeah, pending a crazy twist ground. Okay. Because it was him who kind of kick-started the streak for Liquid, right? So yeah. let's see if he can do it again. Oh, now that nade is going to hurt. There's absolutely no denying it. Twist is trying to make that deagle happen. But it's not going to happen as Brolin. He's here. He gets to play. Two kills from the guy. Up against the pistols. And it's a nice little clean stat pad round for Maus as they deal with that one swiftly. Nothing crazy for Liquid found there on the back of their double deag purchase. But it... At least now means they get to bring the guns out here. Yeah, I mean, Zershan's 14 and 6. He's above Jimmy on the scoreboard. So it's just, you know, the problems just keep appearing for Liquid. Each site with their own star. Just been consistently finding double kills on Mal's rounds. 7-3. This is it for Liquid. This is the half right here in this round. Make or break. If they have anything to celebrate at the end of their T side. Okay, the urn spots that jump up, but he's in trouble. There's three TTs here. He tries to bound away. And good timing for him to do so because they need his X position. They flash right back through. I like this aggression for Liquid. Gonna try and punish Maus for going for fight to Banana. They line up, but the kid finds nothing from it. Skulls has found an entry, meanwhile. But look who lurks up in the apartments. The devil incarnate. It's Jimpat. If Exertion goes early here. From where Exertion's all the way down at Banana, yeah. and with this three smoke still coming in, it's allowed for everyone else to go and reinforce A. And so while, you know, Jimmy being here alone is like scary enough, now there's other people left Ooh. to deal with. Torshi even getting aggressive, taking some liberties on this AWP. As they try to crunch into the top of middle, he will get fed to Naf. Not a done deal yet for Maus. Oh, this might be misinfo. He's just cleared mid. They're still gambling. I like that Maus just want to play together in this round, and they've read it right. 30 seconds liquid. Once Comes. again, roll the wrong side of the dice. There's so many numbers on this A site. Zershan gets one. He can peel away and leave it to the men in the site. Oh, he hears the footsteps. Jim Pat out on an island will get run at, run through by Naf. Already for that gives a route in, but with Brolin Tark, they think their job's done, and it's so far from it. Brolin withstands the pressure, and Liquid are done for. They're cooked in this round. With the bomb away from Kadian, there just isn't time. And so Maus make that one look easy. Perfect gamble stack over towards A. Uh, I mean, Maus are making Liquid look stupid. But the crazy part about it is, I think some of Liquid calls have been really good in this game. But Mal's even there. Brolin clears middle, and they still triple rotate A, and that's that's the what wins the round because Jimpat gets nothing for once, and they still get two entries, and then they go and don't clear Brolin. Why would you? He's the B anchor. Like that's crazy. What a half for Mal's. Can they put a cherry on top? This icing's sweet enough. Okay, another entry. Skulls has been doing the work on A, finding a lot of lurk kills. Been the bane of Shui's existence, but Skulls Maus have done it 4v5 before. Saying to the rest of them, like, can we just win a 5v4? Well, he keeps getting the A kill. Yeah. They keep going A into, into Jimpat. And now Brolin. Well, look, this time they're going to try and stick to a B plate. Oh, hang on a uh, second. Maybe they shouldn't. It's stacked yeah. again. 
This time, Mal's realized the strat of Chimp Hat alone is enough. I don't know which side's scarier right now. Torsi on contact. Oh, it's a it's a classic setup with reflash back in. Okay, the orb will rotate. They see nothing, but Sershan spots everything at once. They're going to run him down. So immediately, Mao's just turned back around and are here to support him every step of the way. Util coming out from Liquid. They make a play through this top banana smoke. Sershan top of the board right now and he's got support every step of the way Brolin will fall and so now it is just Sershan in this one alone flash out to try and cover himself but will get run down and Liquid look to break through right at the end of the half here not done yet they're running away I like it anything to pull the wall over Mouse's eyes it can just still hiding back sight he doesn't need to play right now he's just trying to keep up the fake He's going to swing. Oh, Torshi has the angle. And will that tip Mouse back in? Will they even realize now it's kicking in? A long way to go in the last round of the half, but nothing to lose in trying. Can't believe that's the call Liquid needs to make to win the round. <laughs> I think it just speaks to how good these Mouse rotates have been. Now, finally, they know they've got them out of position, and so they try to take full advantage of that last second rotate. And Torshi, even though he's going to get a couple of kills on the exit here, he won't have the time to win this round. So Liquid at least salvage four to round out their T side.
Oh, Mouse are running away after that first half. They set up 8 4 and in big part because of this man on our screens. Not that one, the other one. Jimmy P, look at him go. He had some monstrous rounds in there. Some insane moments where he kind of single handedly turned the tide of battle for the Mouse squad. And the thing that's even madder, as much as we're singing his praises, he's not even top of the board for Mouse right now. That privilege goes to exertion. Bonkers game out of Mouse, to be honest. Some of the gambles, some of the reads, the calls from Shui are really, really nice. And then all the individuals back it up. Now, not to say Liquid don't have a chance. They managed to get that last round of the half. Naf practicing some deforestation. Rim impression. Pre-rotation. Punch trees. Skulls looking down through Banana. Come on, Skulls. Keep being good for those openers. That was like the one thing Liquid had was a Skulls opener. I was about to explode out of apartments. Jimpak can throw that pit molly. And Naf may be in trouble here. Out it goes. Canadian finds that 5v4 instead. Good return flash from the long side. Everyone can fight, but Jimpak still manages to break through, not for a moment, as Yakinda and Twist get it done in the site, and that's the hype we want to see from Team Liquid. Big pistol round coming out. That flash back on short side for Liquid was a gut punch to Maus, who threw every right bit of util, double entried, but no one could help Jimpak because they were all full blind. And an explosion of energy all across Liquid at the end of it. Uh, I know it's not a done deal yet, and they believe in their CT side. But a force up from Maus. This one still has legs on it. It's wild as they rush it down through top mid. Exertion is hurt. But that pain has somehow dragged him into a more aggressive stance. They've also oh. got this kill locked in. Is no Jimmy's way. clean with it? Can he get a second? Oh, oh. oh man! No way. Well, Naf pull nades out. Panic. Bomb oh. makes it. Oh, Mouse, that's not fair. Look, look at Jimmy. Oh dear, you can not find one. Oh, he's got it, but it came at a cost, and that cost is his life. Jim Pat, three kills, Deeg flanked through apps, and I love the space Urshan takes. They realized after running through that mid smoke, they killed the long player. Mouse had a deep mid smoke, and they basically just got to go whichever way they want. Long is open for business. Naf gets caught with a kerfuffle. Jim Pat just delights. Mouse I know, I know it's only map. I know it's only two kills on the Deagle, but that the that's impact. how the Deagle's meant to look. Yeah. Beautiful. So snappy. Only two kills in a force by round to complete put uh, li completely put liquid on their back after winning pistol. That's I mean every time you felt like liquid have a way into this game, Mouse pulls something like that. Triple stack. Let's see. Well, if cats are like Liquid, this one more like Tom and Jerry because Mouse are looking to run away with it. Twist offering up one on the dual Beretta's sure. Liquid losing a 5v4? No. We've not seen that all game. Hey, look, Skulls does not even have to fire off yet. True. They'll we'll have to. They're creeping through the smoke. This is a dangerous call, but. Oh. Are you ready for two in the site? Cadian's on big bait. He must put up something here. Or maybe Skulls. Cadian is playing contact. And they run back. They don't believe. Oh. Wait, there's one. There's one. This bait and oh. switch setup works wonders. And so ah. revenge with the pistols as Brolin is let down. Can't control the spray. And it's caught in the zipper there as that one gets away from the mouse squad. Liquid with an immediate reply. Roland's not having a good game. That, that is safe to say. You can see it in that round. You can see it in his reaction. But generally, you can see it in the map. They haven't needed him thus far. No, but it's more maybe later it could be a problem. We'll have to see. Keep our eye on Brolin. Because he's been slow to start. And you can see the frustration coming in as Liquid. Okay, they win a force by. Back in the game. This one is anyone's guess where it's going. This is what I meant when I said we'd see some very out there CS in this matchup, some very aggressive moves. 
Some very quick rounds. Four and eight. And we got the pop again. Go through it. You it back. Flash out through and trying to get them down into the pit, but they won't get past Skulls, who there's no denying it has been a, a real standout player for Liquid across this map. I'm going to overreact from the first six months of Liquid, not even. Skulls is the best player on this team. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it does feel like... Sure, Twist's had a great tournament, but Skulls just puts up such impactful kills. Well, I'm being a bit tongue-in-cheek, but still. It's been a delight to watch on this team. It would be easy to expect very little from this guy, but he's delivered again and again for Liquid. We need to start unmuting Liquid. I want to hear these Cadian screams. I can hear them ac across the building. Can you imitate them? No. No, it I is. Did, I wouldn't do it justice. No, that's true. This anti-flash setup, that pit player blinded, Skulls finds two. I played with him as my captain. Yeah. True. He is a very animated I was Cadian's coach. Yeah, true. For a BO1. In this game, no less. It's down mid exchange. It's only Glocks, so Liquid have a chance for a nice clean round here. Yeah, no one's ever lost a Glocks. No, it's not going to happen. Like, there are some that you can build up. There's some element of excitement. But I'm not this building it up. This is like impossible. No, it is. Your Kindar in with the backstab. And this one, it's all about just keeping your numbers good. You want five alive. You don't want to lose a single soul. Well, tread carefully. Does miss. Oh, that's awkward. Hello. Skull's okay. That was a little baity. He didn't save him. Swung too late. Can't save everyone. No, but you can try. Skull said, look, it's natural selection at this point, Katie, and you've walked all the way down mid up against clocks. Well, not all the way, but some of the way. Enough of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Learn your lesson. Did I take this risk? No. And am I top of the board? Yes. Be like Skulls. Now, they really don't know where Shuey is. <laughs> the fact that Skulls is deep rooting all the way through spawn, checking every angle, is uh, is interesting. It shows how much map control Liquid were keen to take and then promptly give up. But Shuey's still going to get run down here by Skulls. <gasps> oh, he wins around. My Calling God. it. He wins oh, around. Oh, my goodness. That kill is massive. One on three. Now, they are chasing him straight away. Yeah, he just wants the money. So, your Kindar yeah. puts a stop to the madness. And we can all breathe easy tonight as Liquid do not let that one get away from them. Who was that on B? Skulls? Well, the one who died? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of bigging him just up. Keeping track. Doing a whole keep bit. Be like Skulls, I said, as he gets glocked down at the top of the yeah, you know, Happens to the best of us, really. Skulls apologist over here. Well, not much to apologize for for Liquid. They've recovered very well despite losing the f to the Force Buy in round two of this half. They are up and only down by one. Orp is out. Oh, okay, he didn't do it. Oh, if he did it, he still could. Oh, it doesn't connect. Nav in Banana fighting and Yakinda through the smoke gets spammed. Roland, that's a kill. Four on four. Pressure on Shui now to dead talk. They could have gone for a real gamble here, leaving Skulls over towards A alone. They've put everyone else in defense of this B site, and Naf playing up close with Kadian to take the aggression. They're just going to walk up with this all holding, and they wow. catch Mao's lining up Util. Jimmy tries to bail them out, but Naf with the ace does not let them in. That is sickening from Naf. Opening kill and just dry swing. Nades are being thrown. No one's even thinking about that. Naf finds all five. That is bloody lovely. I love a Naf fly ace because you cut to him afterwards and you wouldn't even know he just got one. He's oh. like got a, like a little smirk on his face. He just goes, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> ooh. <laughs>
Like, look how animated everyone else is. They're like, they've just won a million dollars. And Naf's there like, that was pretty nice, eh, bud? He doesn't uh, sound like that, obviously. That was close. Sick. All right. I can't believe Liquid are in this game. Like, they have every reason to have rolled over after that. First half, some of the calamities, some of the stacks. But they are being put to the test. Yakinda, 5v4, and he's out. Yeah, he, he thought about it. No, no, do the right thing. Drop that smoke, go back to the site. Block Mouse, they're going to go anyway. Into Naf, another multi, perhaps. He's used his whole mag. More shots rallying, but Mouse aren't going through that smoke now. Five on three is under control. Skull's solo defense as Liquid have run everyone over towards B. Yeah, but he's good for two here. All right. Oh, there's one. There's the two he's good for, not the third. Wow, you actually nailed that. Torshi left up in this one all alone, and Twist is already back over to safeguard the round. So no cheeky bomb plant there. Liquid and that's a big deal lead. for Liquid. They've the just lead. pulled up, now in the lead with five in a row. By me. They are running away with this CT side, and in spite of the high heights that we saw out of Maus, how good everyone looked early on, it might not come to matter with Liquid. Looking to change the tune of this series. That's what I mean, you know, when you have a couple of players struggling at the start, it may not feel like it matters, but then you get to 10-9 down and you you need everyone in their A-game. Liquid, consistent kills across the board, barely a differential from top to bottom. Mal's top heavy. And they need those heroes to carry them through right now because this is the gun round of all gun rounds of Inferno. It's Liquid's pick. Torshi, give it a go. Just try to get that info for a smoke shot. It's an AWP B as well, Kadian. Oh! <laughs> He's back! Brolo! All right, any more? When you when you get a kill like that, that's the go. that's hot hands yeah. now for Brolin. Boiling. That's one of three at least. So let's see. Full blind. Oh, this right. is one of the options. He tries to run in. Triple stack. Will pay the price for it. Oh, a little awkward here. Let's just leave banana. This is a weird. Round. He's not expecting the third player there after he gets spotted coffins, but it was an orb. Three beers. Gonna catch Mouse off guard, and this may as well. Zershan just turns away as the re aggress comes in. Torshi's patience pays dividends to Mouse. They're gonna move out mid now. It's just twists. Sole defender on this site. Naf is moving in long side. Will he commit? He will. It's a nice setup. Off angle, pre fire on the shadow. Twist gets stuck in the open. It doesn't matter. Two more from Twists. And he's even given that moment to reposition over towards Pit. And now with Naf in this. Oh, that's a crazy shot from Torshi, yeah. but he's not ready. He's not ready for Naf. Get faked, son. Get faked. 20 second bomb rotate. Oh, God, you can die. He calls off the rotate. They're going to group instead together. and try yeah. to go down middle, but this is going to give enough room for the plant. Mouse have got that locked in. Fear of crossing is there. Torshi's on two, but he'll get it. They're very quick. They are very quick. Can he get scoped up in time? Is he even ready for this? The flash actually makes it blindingly obvious, but it doesn't matter because it's down to the captain. Seven kills. Got to find two more to get double digits. And Naf denies at the door. Team Liquid get it done again. This comeback is monumental. Yeah, they've dropped one round since getting onto the CT side, and that was up against the force in round two, which they, they quickly went on to, to remedy with a force by their own. And since that point, everything has come up liquid. Oh, that was sick. You can't do anything. You literally can't do anything about that. Not even the fastest reaction time can stop that pre-fire. Kenyan ju jumped. Yeah, that's on <laughs> land. Nothing to do. So despite that entry, despite Torshi finding that re-aggress on short, twist double, and Naf's closing kill. That's all that matters. That's all the papers will say. Liquid, two rounds away from taking their map pick.
What a game from these guys. I can't mean. stress it enough as well. The thing that's just so mad is it's not like, you know, Mao's... Like, Mao's looked insane in the first half. They had us going in the first half. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, the individuals, there was just such a, a night and day difference between the two teams. And then Liquid get onto the CT side of their map pick and they show us why they like Inferno so much. It would be very liquid to lose now. No, don't even say that. <laughs> don't even I know say you hate that. to hear it. No, I just, I, I just hate even considering it. They're I'm possibly just, the GOATs. I don't think they will. Just, you know, it would be very liquid. Nope, uh, Skull's not going to overextend there, not going to take the risk. And also, you say it would be very liquid, but you know... Not we have this it. liquid. I, was I, gonna, yeah, yeah. I just mean the orc, you know, come on. You know what I mean. Ooh. Oh, your Kendar re-aggression. Oh. He threw the smoke back, so that's for someone else to hold the site down with. He wants to make a play, and in doing so, will feed Brolin. Put Brolin on banana. Different He's the game. king of it. Anywhere else, eh, results may vary. But he secured the opener in a 5v4 for Mausers. Now they try and regroup with the bomb. It's a great call. Just go for the 5 on 4, execute into what they know will be a 2 2 setup. Unless Liquid are making a crazy call right now, they should never have more than two here. And even Twist is doubting because of Jim Pat's fake. He won't even lurk. He's going to come join them late. That's a good smoke down. But Maus might just have to go. They've thrown their entire volley in. This is a scary call to make. Someone's got to do it, though. Twist doesn't even know if they're in. Through the smoke, Twist hears him coming. He saves the day, but they still get the entry into the site. Twist playing with fire, spamming through. It's going to have to be a retake against the clock. Oh, Brolin's done it again. Double entry, and that will seal the deal. That will be the round for Mouse. What a just safe, secured call. You get the five on four. You let Jim Pat sell a fake, it puts the doubt in Liquid, and there's only one man inside of B. Yeah, I mean, considering this has been a real game of uh, trying to out-rotate and out-maneuver your opponents, it's the straight line to the finish for Maus that pays off for them there. Oh, Kadian! Ah. Can't get away. Skulls, they want that orb, but he hears them pick it up. Gonna try get it. Gonna try and take it away from Maus. One more here. It's all Jimmy. Oh, oh, and the same way Cadian falls, nice. so will Skulls. Can't quite make it up the stairs. I'll say it for the record. This is the best Inferno game I've seen in a hot minute. At least the best I've covered in a, in a hot minute. This has had kind of everything. That round there was like the embodiment of my greatest fear when I was a child. You're running up the stairs and there's something behind you. Oh, it's yeah. going to get you. You can't look back. Yeah. You just have to keep going. The lights are off. Oh, don't. I'm, at, ugh, I'm getting goosebumps just from imagining it. Terrifying. Well, Liquid, is this See, their worst nightmare at the end of the map? Now that I'm an adult, I just have all the lights on all the time. Yeah. So I'm never scared. You pay for that. <laughs> okay. There's still a chance for retribution here. Redemption. Oh, he knows he's coming! Oh. The double drop. Zershan hears every step. Didn't leave much to the imagination there, Decadian. One more player boosted up. It's Skulls. Gonna need a multi out of him as he swung on from Jim Pat. He will land the dink, but not the killing blow. And if Maus follow through with the A play, if they stick to their guns, just like they did in that last round, they're on to a winner. And they've tied this up at 11 all. Liquid are making the right call, which is hope that Maus overthink it and just stay together on B. Whether or not that works seems unlikely, but they also want to plan for the future, plan for failure. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst, have that buy in the next round. They'll need these saved guns. But right now, it looks like Maus have made the gamble correct, moving into the empty bomb site. And so this will be 11 apiece. And I don't think Maus will hunt either. They need the money. So in we go. Plant after the clear and. This is a stalemate in round 22. As Zershan finds the crucial kill to take down Cadian, re-aggressing on Boiler. So far for Liquid, it's felt like the re-aggressions have been the worst moves they've made all CT side. I'm thinking Naf pushing up short side A, dying to Torshi. I'm thinking Yakinda pushing Banana in the previous round, dry. 
And right there as well, Cadian just trying to regain lost ground. Mal's are very good at just setting up early and laying the trap. I don't think you think they're the guys who get caught in the trap, but Liquid, they just love cheese. Only exception, I guess, is Nap running down Banana and getting the ace, but there were three players there doing that, so it was a very different ball game. Solo reaggression has been a huge problem for Liquid in the CT side, despite, again, an incredible comeback. But was it all for nothing, Harry? That's the big question. Yeah. Six out of seven rounds, out of eight, no, seven out of eight rounds. And now Miles are put back to back. Finding a way in right at the end of regulation. Timeout called through for Liquid. Hell, they've got another one left after this. May as well use them. They've got to try and cook up solutions now because, while well, it felt almost predestined after how they did early on that they were going to win this. Suddenly that, that tension, that pressure is building back up again. And so they need answers. We've learned this from the cams is that Russell is a very vocal player. Him and Cadian have a lot of discussions on Liquid's route to this point in the competition. They're talking it through how they can problem solve this one. As you say, Maus, I think thus far, have just done a great job of recognizing real estate that they're given if Liquid are going for anything early and then just sort of waiting, right? You set it up perfectly by saying they set the trap and that's very much a trap that Liquid have been falling into. So this time, Liquid try to set a bit of a pace of their own. They go deep through middle. Kadian tries his hand oh. at the push. And Brolin gets fed a freebie. There's a reply and, and a lucky one at that. You'll take a four on four. Oh, oh. No, why? Why? They recovered it, Harry. And they still went for the banana smoke push. Two smoke pushes in this round. Neither has gotten a kill. In fact, both have gotten deaths. They could have got to dig themselves out of this hole as Mal's Crawl their way to a 12th round double apartment setup. It's nice. Is it? Yeah. Unless Jim Pat comes yeah, gunning I know, for them. I kind of hate it. <laughs> it's, a, it's unique. It's a oh, weird one. Maybe I mean, Skulls you know, should uncrowd. You, you just yeah. need full faith in Skulls. Jim That's Pat, all you need Jim here. Pat, two kills. One. Oh, there's one. Twists in hot water. Nice. He will turn and deal with that man up in the apartments, but he's got a lot more left oh. to do. And exertion runs him down. Claustrophobic in the boiler. What As Liquid way. turned to steam, it's just Naf. He should save. He doesn't want to, but he should. He knows it. Deep down, it's done. There are three mollies in this post plant. Doesn't make it any easier. Sure, he's got a smoke, but unless Mal start feeding him here. Or if Naf hears him running away, I don't think he's going to full commit to this attempt at library. They could pass him. Zershin's in pit, though. And he may as well die with a bomb at this point. Naf isn't attempting anything. Mao's 12 rounds. I can't believe your kinder goes through the banana smoke. That is audacious. And it's full focus for Maus. A very different tone down the stretch of this game, right? Like, as we came into this second half, both teams were yelling. They were both getting hyped up. And Maus have got that determined look on their faces where they really want to twist the knife and steal this one away from Liquid right as the doors were looking to close on them. And it's their map pick next as well. So if Maus set themselves up here on Inferno, 2-0. Feels more doable than ever. In a match that on paper looked like a three mapper. Can Liquid earn that? Or oh, are Mal's inevitable? Very safe round here again. This time Liquid. Back line to their sights until your kinder comes swinging. Oh, the boost again, and he's just fighting it. The AWP finds your kinder. He has been a bit of a liability on the B side this this game. 
Kedian loves it, double jumping sound cue, but it will draw the attention oh. away to try and tee up Twist. Oh dear. Just the one for one, and that is not the heroics, that's not the level that Liquid needed. Jimmy even holding for this re-aggression, but he How won't he win that, that fight. Skulls does well. Okay. To regain a three on three, and the rest of Liquid have grouped over towards this B site. It's Naf Ooh. and it's Kadian, and they are ready to withstand Maus. Who look to move in now. They weren't ready for a second player. Kadian was just seen over towards A. Oh. He's looking to oh. rub the round, but Shuey head on a swivel. Knocks them both out, and it's just Skulls late to the party. No one about from the apartments, and as Torshi holds on, that yeah. Liquid comeback is dead. It's Maus with the turnaround to win this first map, stealing Liquid's pick away. Mouse have got their eyes set on a semi's appearance. Oh, an ambulance, but not for me, say Mouse in that map. What a start from Jim Pat as well, and Shuey, who's quiet all game to close with an excellent transfer. That is the Mouse we're here to see. An incredible map to start off this series. A spot at the semi-finals on the line of the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu 2024. And for Maus, they get the job done. Some great work from young Jimmy. Exertion firing on all cylinders. I'm going to start this segment off by being completely subjective. Uh, this was a really satisfying map of Counter-Strike to be watching. Oh, this was such high-level CS. And this is exactly why we can be excited about these advancement matches that because of the lack of pressure, people just let loose. They try, they cross smokes, they go for the clutches, they go for the multi-kills. One of the most entertaining maps we've had here in Chengdu. And oh my god, was that a feast. And a roller coaster. <laughs> what a ride, a lot of ups and downs, back and forth. People winning Ecos, people winning rounds with pistols, mad clutches, gambles all over the place. And yeah, Mao's perseveres in the end, closes it out. But it was so tight, right? The fact that Liquid, you know, gave some gusto. They looked like they had the legs to maybe even be changing the fate, switching it up and, and taking this map, right? That's why this was such an incredible game to watch. Yeah, it's the second half that gives a depth that didn't really, I wasn't suspecting about this whole game, right? You look at how Mao's played the first half and you're thinking, oh my God, we're going to look at a whitewash again. It's going to be an easy game. Okay, move on to map number two. And then because of these force by you're talking about and Liquid having a couple of good gambles, good intuition on where they need to put their players at, created a whole game out of it. They made Mouse sweat for it. We could hear Shuhi calling 
towards these last few rounds. He had plans. He was talking for like 30 seconds, nonstop, just to set the plan in motion. Very nice to witness. Yeah, it's a crazy impact coming out of him uh, just individually on the side of Shui. But it really was the Jimmy show to be starting off this map. I think we should take a look at round eight because this was just wild coming out of Jimmy. Yeah, round eight is the beginning of what I like to call the Jimmy glazing. And we're going to do a whole lot of it because this start, of course, all about Zershan with the aggression banana. We had a couple of examples here. There's a little bit of a trade. Then I'm going to point out a mistake from Mouse here. I think they get a little bit naive about the timing that Skulls find. That kill, a bit criminal from Torji to walk into Skulls. But what that does leave you is with Jimmy completely alone. And sometimes in Counter-Strike, individuals make the moves. Individuals make the plays. Triple kill from Jimmy here, saving Mouse out of a very dire situation. And now we can start the whole Olabaloo about Jimmy. 25 kills, holy hell! Yeah, incredible round from him there, the jiggling to bait out it's the beautiful. shot from Kadian and get that kill. I think even if he needs all three kills, otherwise they probably don't end up winning the round. He had another great round in the A bomb site, right where he was alone. Miles was stacking uh, towards B with other two players, just finding impact time and time again, and absolutely was a thorn in Liquid side. I love how mobile a lot of these highlights are as well. So many different areas around the map. You don't know where Jimmy's hiding, you don't know where he's coming from, but he's damn well gonna kill you. And it brings such value with your mouse because it's one thing to hope in Counter-Strike that you're always gonna have the right gamble, the right read, the right setup. Sure, that can happen, and as a leader, you're striving for it. But the truth is, there's gonna be moments where you misread the situation. You're going to have your pawns in the wrong place, you're going to be caught off guard in a rotation, and this is when you need someone that's able to do more than a one-for-one. -one. Way more than a one-for-one. -one. Jimmy did it time and time again. He was challenged. He had to save the beans of Miles on the defense, and shout out to him. What a play. And even on the T side, a huh? couple of these entries in Boiler. Whew, that's the eagle round was crucial. Oh, yeah. It was disgusting. I think we should move on to round 11, because this was just a really good read from Miles. It was a stack towards the A-bomb site, uh, and it was a, a, a read that, you know, I uh, I don't know why exactly they made it, but it really paid off in Liquid. We could see them getting caught off guard by it. And that's what I was asking for from Mouse, right? Have a couple of moments where you stack, you hedge your bets. Round 11 is a good example. It's not a good situation to start with. Trades go in favor of Liquid, but you can look at the minimap here in this 3v4. Exertion finds the kill, and then he gets a whole lot of attention towards him. Mind you, he's supposed to be a B player. So when Jimpa actually gets traded, I can't even remember, no, he gets immediately found. What it does, it makes Brolin invisible. Because in Liquid's mind, you've killed the A player, you've seen the rotation, no way Brolin is going to be here. And that's what a stack does to you. That's what sometimes you have to do. You have to have that feel. You're ready to take the L if they go B, but if they come to you, there is no way they suspect Brolin. Huge round, just an absolute a chess mate, as I said yesterday. Yeah, I'm owning the word now. That's it. It doesn't exist, <laughs> but I'm owning it. Yeah, that was an example of great team play also for Maus, making some great calls, great reads, understanding the situation in which they're in, that they need to take some risks and exertion. I think also we need to talk about him individually, stepped up tremendously uh, in this game on Inferno. He's the banana player alongside Brolan in a lot of those situations. So that's where, you know, you need those guys to put in the work. And Brolan, quiet, not, not a great game stats-wise, but found some impact in the second half on the T side. Yeah, it was great to see Exertion, you know, coming off post-major where we had a couple of questions about individual form. Um, In the context of Liquid, obviously their map pick, you know, not a bad showing. This is really high-level Counter-Strike on both sides of things. Um, How exactly are you framing this for Liquid, seeing that they lost I think one. it's good that the individuals stepped up. I mean, we had the Yates, Galilees from NAF, a couple of good rounds from Cadian, Skulls was finding impact uh, here and there. I think though the problem for me is the two rounds in the second half that stand out is the 5v4 where Kinder tries to be sneaky and right before their smoke blooms on B, peaks and gets killed by Brolan. Mouse goes on to win that round. And the other one is in that 4v4 where they had a fast trade, he again pushes through his own smoke banana to try to find the kill and gets punished, right? Like, those feel like hero plays when they're not really necessary no. and that cost them the game in the end. And that's also a condition that we highlighted prior to the match. Like they rely a little bit more on these moves and it's really hard on the fly to find the right nuance when to try, when not to. Unfortunately, it, it bit them in the ass a couple times here. I will also say probably the force by battle won by Liquid extended their lifeline mm. on this Inferno yes. map. Um, Mao's misplayed a situation in my eyes when Shuhei gives his life away on the B side and then they're caught off guard. The timings on A is wrong and League would have two five sevens. I think this round extends the whole game. And we might have been looking at a very much more clear victory from Maus. So maybe a little bit of a smoke screen effect here. Well, Maus's map pick of Mirage does lay in wait for us next. But first, let's check in with the Liquid Cap. I just talked to Zeus, the, the 
coach of Team Liquid, and he said that, like, yeah, when it comes to mouse, they took a lot of gambles, especially when it comes to the IGL Shui, and it worked out for them. So despite them, like Team Liquid, having a pretty good city side, maybe they could have taken a little bit more on the T side, but now it's going to be a second map, and it's going to be Mirage. Gentlemen, how are you feeling about Mirage? Pick of Maus coming into this. Does it smell like a 2-0 for you, Yanko? Yes, I'm sticking with Maus. You know, this is this is uh, their playground, sort of. And I'm sure Liquid is putting work on Mirage, right? That was one of their uh, weaker maps in the pool. But I just like what I'm seeing from Maus so far. I, I'm with you on that. Uh, Maus answered most of the questions we had in their first map. I do wonder if, because I, I haven't really seen a whole lot of Liquid on Mirage quite yet. There was a G2 game I wasn't covering at the same time, trying to caught up with him. Kadian had a very specific way of playing Mirage. Mm. Like you go back to the heroic days and how they were going at it. I don't really know if that's something he takes with him and has the crew play because he's got a different set of players with. So if he has to play the map differently, it might be a little bit uncomfortable for him because of the automatism he's got, the protocol he's got in his mind. So yeah, personally, 2-0, I think Mouse did the most important on him. So we're putting our own Kadian on the liquid side. Anybody from the Mouse side that you think, you know, Mirage is their turf. This is where they're going to be shining. Um, Torji, let's see it. Torji, you know, he had uh, a good game against Furia, found a lot of impact, a lot of good kills, so I'd keep an eye on him. Orpus v Orpus, who knew it? But we need to be getting into the game, but not before a quick break. When we're back, Mouse's pick of Mirage lays in wait. A spot at the semi finals on the line. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? Chris three flick, oh, oh they're making one by one, sex, no way! He wants to... Oh, <laughs> Smokes, let's see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it.
After an unreal first map, Mao sit just one away from securing a semi-final spot here in the playoffs. And this uh, dynamic duo of Dorian Berman and Jimmy Sallow, it's proven to be too much for Team Liquid. Do they have anyone that can match that, Hugo, now that we had to Mirage? I mean, there were glimmers of hope. There were big step-ups from some individuals, but more mistakes made by Liquid I mean Inferno was a bit of a mouse to class. And now we head to a home map, a map they've beaten Spirit on, a map where we haven't seen Liquid on since the RMR. So it's very hard to say what we're going to see from Liquid in this game. Does mean they'll be fresh. But maybe too fresh, Harry. Oh, good start, but nice response. Twist gives up the window, goes to play the back line. Nice time, Molly on B is Shui looks for an entry, but it's all a bit of a fake out right now. Brolin in Palace, bomb under. This A play feels like the end goal for Maus, despite the peering into this B bomb site now. Oh, how does Sui hit that? That's a sick shot, and it might even draw rotation. Skulls is moving over. It's just Cadian on the A side. He's giving it up completely. They have a kit on Twist. They can play retake. They may need to. Ooh. Ooh. Scared out from jungle. Oh, he could have oh, seen Gideon him there. Did, did see him. Yeah. Torshi even full committed to the wrap round, and he's now here with Shui in the back line. That does leave a three on two actually in the sight, and so Torshi tries to come back, but he's oh. not needed, not required as Brolin <laughs> okay. tear through the remaining two for Team Liquid. Brolin's back. Sweet on Mirage. It's a different ball game here now, and yeah, they don't need that support from the late flank or the jungle player. Mal's are very confident. You can just see by that call. What a nice layered attack. The fake into B. The unnecessary entry, but that just made their life easier, finding Naf on Van. And Liquid, of course, force up on CT side. Cadian getting into position just before they cross. This will be an A execute. Cadian in a very difficult position. Molly's going to come over as well, so he's going to smoke that off, give away his spot. Ooh, Tim, dicked by a teammate, I think. Somehow Cadian gets out completely. Now's got to get this plant in quick. They should know they have room now. Bombs at the back, Jim Pat. one should be kept pretty clean. They could have done a good job of causing chaos, but they don't win any of these early fights. And even though Skulls comes up with one, it shouldn't be enough to tempt them into this retake. It's already a done deal. So this force bite does not accomplish much for Team Liquid. Giga blocked. That's fine. Old mates. Oh, Twist has crashed. He's, this this is we've seen this a few times. Is this the smoke nade bug that people are talking about? Like look at his mouse. I think it's something about I, I don't know. I read something. It was something about nades landing on smokes and you know crashing out players. Luckily, I want to say it probably didn't change the outcome of the round, but still, Valve, please fix. Yeah, he's playing off another screen right now. Terrorists. Let it loose. There we are. Not ideal. All right, get the timer out. Yeah, pit stop, back again. They're on the clock. Well, at least with the save, there's still a chance for Liquid to do something here. And they do well to get twists out of there. Protect the VIP at all costs. <laughs> Cyclone's doing the same. Whose man is this? That's nice. That's nice. I wish you'd do that for me sometimes. I'll do it right now if you yeah. want. Yeah, stand behind me. All right. I'm getting up. Thanks. 
Do you have a firm grip? I don't actually know. It's, oh. I don't really know how to do it. No, I'm no, trying to mimic what, hang on, I'm trying to mimic what I'm seeing. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's no, no, like no, this. do better, do better. Do better? Do better. That's it, he's just giving him a, Okay. They're all getting one. Go around the circle. Go down the line. You better hey, why'd you this... stop? That was, Sorry. I was I... just getting into it. Oh. I never go for long enough. That's what they always say. Um, uh, this is nice. You better hope it's a long tech pause or else someone's going to get left out. Yeah. Who's at the other end? Torshi? Well, Torshi's right no, not, here. Sorry, not Zershin. That's the one. I'd imagine Zershin would be at the end. That's it? I know. I'm crazy. Just yeah, two? Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's ignoring Jimmy. The ignoring Jimmy yeah. Zershin is at the end. Yeah, technically. <laughs> it's at the end of the first four. Jimmy is his strict don't touch me policy. That's true. That's true. So he, he wasn't even counted. Space. We're back in, folks. It's not a sauna. He's not interested. We hot. That's his new thing. <laughs> All right, Brolin might have a round laid out ahead of him here. Let's see if that massage worked. B pop. And so now they know they've won the round. It's how pretty can Brolin oh. make it? It's an ugly start. And he's out. Psycron had a stronger grip. You never know. Go on, jump through it, Liquid. You won't. You're right. This is the one time they show restraint in that regard. Yeah. That's a banana smoke. Your kinder will be going right through. It's not a ten alive round. No, someone will go for it. Someone wants those eeks. Should be Shui, but he's the furthest away. Oh, it might Someone's going to peek. Someone, not everyone can. Ah, oh, yeah. it is Shui. Oh, he's got the nade and the jump shot. Brr. Okay, can't wallbang that. Good to know. Not with a Mac 10. Now, something tells me Maus might want to look to do an instant A split in this one. You have a good read of the game, Harry. I think I'm going to trust exactly what you say there. And so now it's all whether or not Liquid are ready for that. Kadian AWP out in this gun round. He's taking it on A. Here's that quick mid split. Should we lead in the charge with the Mac 10 coming through connector for the top con smoke? Oh, the AWP barely hurts him. Out ramp Zershan causing a commotion. Kadian pushed back. They're going to go hunting. Skulls under. They know. Skulls gets one somehow, but that's a laser shot for Jimpat. Kadian pushed all the way back to spawn and to the save because Maus, the pure pace of that round, throws everything through a loop. Yeah, they're trying to speed run this. They want a fast all game. That was a really quick round. It's over before it even begins. Liquid, they're, they're all content. They finally get to bring the guns out. They've got Kadian on an AWP. They're feeling quite good about it. And then round over. Psych. You thought. Nice call from Shuri with Mac-10 as well. Liquid don't know what's happening until it hits them. So composed across the board to open. For Liquid, it's back to the drawing board. Taking a look at Cadian, seeing he does have a good spawn, does Cadian. Hard to have a bad For a spawn. Little, uh, little window peekaroo, maybe. Yeah, give it a Perhaps go. Perhaps over towards short with that AWP. Yeah, all right. No Insta. Hello. Or is he going to jump up apps? He's jumping oh. up. He wants to peek deep into the apartments, and Jimmy is there. Fires off. Sertrum was in connector, though. Twist gets a jiggle, and Sertrum's up. What a shot! How? That's... Uh, that's despicable. I need Cadian POV. Sertrum now in their spawn. Oh. Well controlled. Barely 30 seconds elapsed on the round, and Exertion's just got the second kill in CT spawn. Yeah, this is cooked, man. Mouths are so comfortable on this map. 
Liquid need to win the mid battle. Yakin is trying. That's a great double spray. They know Zershan's here. Twist swings in, finishes the job. And Bomb is loose as well. Suddenly a 2v2 ensues and he doesn't get caught. He doesn't get spotted. This should be a kill. And now it's all Jim Pat who found Cadian in B, but doesn't know tw where Twist has ended up. Where has he gone? It's just Jimmy. Could walk up con right now. This should have him. He's checking mid yeah. now and swings out from lower. How did Liquid win that? 3v5. Big double for Yakinda. That's his best smoke push of the series. You should push him when you're a man down, not when you're a man up. That's what we're learning. This was crazy. Well handled, well controlled to regain control over that one for Liquid, but it's still an uphill battle here. Can't just be the one and done. They've got to start a little streak now. Boosting up, Torshi's off over in mid. He's looking for a way over. Oh, and Kadian will take one to the, uh, I don't know, somewhere on his body. It catches him through the lip there. So it's just a tag, but softens up that AWP at least. Exertion's been a menace down here in middle. And he's looking to keep the good times rolling, but is he ready for skulls? Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Sees him on the jump up. Oh. And Shui secures the kill to Akinda. No heroics from him this time over on short. Orp gets involved. KD and getting out with one at low HP is nice, and it stops Maus from just following through with a B hit here. We're looking to clear the site completely right now. There's no one on A. The bomb is in tandem right now, unsure where to end. Does Brolin play first? He's got full nades. He could try and sell this. But I don't know if Liquid are buying. There's still heavy set B right now. Just believing in the setup. Kadian, low health, but with the best gun for the job. And the nades will make it clear. They start raining in. Kadian knows what's coming. Torshi's still scoped on his position. Kadian playing off a of sound. He scopes. They now know he's at the back of the site. Surely they fake this. They're full sticking. They're full sticking. He doesn't buy it. Goes for Torshi instead. Now Zershan, a chance to reposition. He's the only one here. Brolin's late to the party. Zershan needs that kill. He falls to Naf and the late flank cut down by Twists. Liquid licking their lips. How do they win that round? Kadian just dodges every single fight and the Canadians clean up. And considering how that round starts, it's really not an easy one for them to recover, right? It kind of immediately having to look over their shoulder as they lose that mid control. They lose both mid fights that were attempted. As did the cool skulls are attempt at the fight there. He was just kind of playing the long game. Sure. But well recovered, well handled, and a critical 3k out of NAF on their way to take that one over the line. That's now two in a row for Liquid, who are trying to build something here on their CT side. And it is the Canadian duo up towards top of the board, making it happen. Rebuys in for Maus, but that money that they once had from the 4-0 start is starting to dwindle. And so already some limitations, right? A little less util and critically no AWP for Torshi. If they fall short here, Liquid are looking at a tie game. Play window smoke. They're out, they are speedy. Zershan before it even blooms, already up connector, but he gets blinded and still commits to the peak. Cadian feasts. Torshi with a nice shot onto Yakinda. 4v4 now. Mal's are gonna go for an A split into what is right now a heavy setup. Just no one in the site for Liquid. Wow, twist on the edge. He loves that play, doesn't he? It's cleared out middle for now. Shui's gonna late lurk. And Maus don't have a smoke to execute. Shui top con smoke, that's nice. That's gonna make their life a little bit easier. It'll trap twists inside. Skulls now has a lot of work to do. Doesn't need to commit to this fight. 
Shui starts activating. They're going to claim it together. Great protocol for Liquid. Three players swinging. Shui needs to survive. He can only get one. It has drawn players away. That gives Mal's the space to take A. And Twist's trying to play through the smoke out from Connector. But a lot of space has already been lost here. And so even though he's quick to get out of that con smoke, the site's already been lost. And him and Naf offered up on a silver platter, leaves it all on KD. And it's too far removed. The round too far gone. And so he'll have to run for the hills. It's oh, a not again. Attempt at the hunt even on this AWP. But as we were kind of touching on coming into this round, the money's in a weird spot for Maus. And so they don't really want to throw any more bodies into this. Cadian's looking good to get out on the orb. It's a nice reaction from Liquid. But in leaving that A site open, Gibbs Mouse just way too much to work with. And cleanly done to repel that. That double push from the current top performers of Liquid as they swing out through Con and Stairs. It's like they're all rolling dice, you know? <laughs> See that? <laughs> Liquid time out here. First down. Not going to have a lot. They can try and spread the love and drop some guns over. I said they're not going to have a lot. I lied. They have a, a lot. <laughs> Double up. <laughs> And all the trimmings, no problem. Just lacking the Uta on a couple. Now four ping is a nice sight. Let's see what he's got. Oh, close. Cadian will miss. Nav's got that B angle now. Jimmy's dealt with it before, but he won't go back for B. It's yet again, this mid take twist oh, climbing at that. Timing. Turns and they come out under. Yakindar had one really nice round over at short, but every other round has been the same story. He tries to fight for mid and dies. Oh, well. And so this time he's at least got him past exertion. For now. That fade. He will not be. Oh, he shot. He dropped. Kinder right there. Oh, that's oh. A, such a nice shot from Exertion. Damn. Now every round since that double kill has gone for you, Kinder. He is getting hard cancelled over here towards short. And some hours now, they just group with the space they've gained over here in the middle of the 5v3. And they'll look to commit to this A split again. Shuey's going to go for a bit of a... Cautionary glance in towards this side of the map, and he learns about that AWP. But another kill from Skulls has suddenly five. thinned the herd. It's three on five, attempting to get turned oh. around by the Liquid squad. Katie and lends a helping hand from the spawn, not long enough to keep Skulls alive. But at least keeps the numbers down, and now he's got to offer up something in the clutch. Tap on the bomb, but a re-swing from Exertion oh, brings him down low, and Torshi seals the deal. Mal's are so suffocating. Even though they get three on five to three on three, they chase down Skulls without a second of hesitation. They reface Cadian after he shoots for the wall bang. What a what a read! Like they they pre-flashed it. it was like, you know they were going for it anyway. But the second he shoots, it's just a welcome message. And then every time Torchy's been in window killing this market rotation, it's not allowed. You can't get back out of B. These are brutal rounds out of Mal's. Kalian buys a desperate AWP into an eco now. That's a sign of the times. Can he really be the hero? I don't know. Seeming like one man is not enough to stop this. Incredible t half from Mal's, and it's only just getting started. Oh and my god. That's twice now this has happened to Kadian. Look, did you see him on the camera as yeah. well? Oh, that is unbelievable. Jim Pat is. 
Like this, they're, they're all so fast, man. Like they're really switched on right now, Amaus. It feels Impass like you yeah. get one, like a fraction of a second to react. Jim Ham might be the best player on the planet. Like, there is a case to be made in the group stages. Just give him time. This guy's 17 years old, Harry. 17. He's doing shit like that. Filth. And he's plotting the bomb. The guy's yeah, the full package. Does everything. Go, go and get him, Jim Ham. Earlier than some folks could even read. He's got four kills and two of them have embarrassed Cadian. Play it again, I dare you. I want to see Liquid try and pressure the extremities a bit more. They've kind yeah. of been, you know, in these rifle rounds, they've been like living and dying on the mid fight. Sure. Taking no ramp control, no B apps. Yeah. Give that a try maybe. Because oftentimes, you know how it is, Brolin sometimes gets just left on the extremities over in Palace to kind of try his luck there while the rest of the resources are funneling out through mid. Hell, you can try and challenge Jimmy, I guess, over in the B apartments. Just don't give him the, Don't let him sw swing you and pre-fire you because he's, he's, he's fine doing that. Maybe push him, yeah. Anything. Look at this. Again, the molly and it force... Oh, it's, it looks even worse from his POV. Oh, yeah. Like, what, Kaden, what can you do? What can you do? Not much. Not against that. Like, the molly forces him he moves, then he gets peaked. It's a perfect sequence from Jim Pat. Distinguished young chap. That's a new rank. <laughs> uh. Everyone's getting a massage slowly but surely. Yeah. It's coming Jimmy's way. It's made it. Exertion's Don't there. touch him. He's perfect. Don't. That's the thing, I'd be scared, right? Because like, what if you do just break him? Like, you throw him off. He's in the zone right now. So is Exertion. And it's that same duo from the last map that are uh, cooking up some insane rounds for the Mouse team. I think we're going to go back to more mid fighting to open this one up. Three players strong over in middle with Twists taking a route down into lower. And that leaves him up against the two. Front men for Maus, and he won't live long. He flashed him, but just I think it was a second before Zershan came around the corner, so really unfortunate timing. That's kind of been the story of this CT side for Liquid. Oh, okay. just, when, just when you think something's going to go their way. Sure, he spots the shadow, doesn't need much. Right there. Skull's also here, but deleted at the first turn, and Liquid, well, they're already saving. Get out of there, Shui. Jim Pat's giving you a red carpet. He's not even going to take it. So crazy dominant Adam Owes. Jumping over the boxes. The guy knows mid's clear at this point. She hasn't even been close. No. Might be another flawless round. That's two in a row now for Maus looking to go on the board. And so that means for Liquid, the challenge gets even harder. They're not going to win around and get some freebies. They've got to grind their way to a win. Naf. I admire the courage. He sets himself up over towards the spawn. Low HP on exertion, but Torshi nails the shot. And even though Kadium reclaims one, he's not about to attempt this clutch. I mean, Naf's just been stuck B all game, hasn't he? And it's sure, Jim has been a bit of a problem there, but for the most part, Miles has just been taking mid and doing A splits. So there's not been a lot in this game for Naf to even try. And Kadian is just fighting for survival. Unguaranteed. The fact that the AWP is the thing hunting him is wild. Like, Torshi's his first point of contact. Oh, they no, both miss each other. The Cyclops actually yeah. saves both lives there. They're going to find him, I think. He, oh, he's dead. Oh. Hey, at least Liquid are already in the playoffs. That's what I'll say. <laughs> it's not the they just the wanted world. more time in front of the crowd. Yeah, another game. More reps in. Sure. So can they make it a third map? That's the question. Right now, Mao's giving us the answer, and it is a resounding no. I love that. I'm so jealous you can roll your R's. I can't. can't. No. Wouldn't even attempt it. I will. I don't, no. There you go. That was Just it. Just roll tried. it. Just roll how it. Do you, how do you do that? Just roll it. Oh. Oh, she rolling dice with a peek in through the apartments. 
But that molly holds him back. Oh, look at the Liquid. ramp Hang push. On. Liquid there. They're pressuring the extremities. They're not fighting for middle. They win this round. Calling it now. Okay. I like your confidence. A setup here for Liquid. And yeah, they're going to find Brolin alone. But Shui getting smoked out. Brolin, what's this? Is that triple? That's a bloody nice Molotov, if I say so myself. Here he comes. Can he get baited in by the MP9? He can. Will he clear it? Brolin, unaware. Flick will not connect. And finally, Liquid have something to look at on this CT side. A 5v4. Does that change Mouse's tune? Going back into B. Yakinda needs this kill. He'll find one for one. That's enough. Naf alone at the back of the site. Zertion up connector. Mouse. They are uncertain about where they want to end here. This bomb is still stuck in middle, and Zershan is so blind. I don't know how he's alive. Neither do Liquid. But they've been given a chance to surround Naf in this B-bomb site if they want to take it. Zershan goes back for more. But Jimpat trades, and now it's the Naf show. Not an easy job for Naf here. He hears the footsteps up through short. Oh, swings out and makes it look easy. And now it's just Shui left to find, even though he gets out with one, and Naf will repel it. And so Liquid finally don't live and die by the mid control, and the round looks a lot better. Hey, you called it. Problem is, I just though, heard the word spirit. I don't know. I don't know what the call was, but I heard the word spirit. So yeah, if you're basing any strat, base it off spirit. And sure, a lot of that just involves raw gunfighting from Donk, but with some of these players aiming the way they are, I was going to say is the thing that's so that. scary is that you know it's kind of taken Liquid a long while to problem solve this mid issue, and it's like, you know, it's like not even scratching the surface for what Maus are capable here over on the T side, right? They've kind of just been running back those A splits time and time again, and so now they vary it, now they change it a little more. That's going to make life easy as well. It's first time Brolin has actually played aggressive in Palace off this lurk. Under player gone, but it's always going to be a B hit anyway. Four players were up in apartments. They're sending three now into the site. We've got plenty of defenses here. Even your kind is going to be out in time as he gets flashed through by twists. Mal's moving slowly through apps. Yakinda wins his four on three. Uncomfortable for Mal's, claustrophobic. Given time to go back though and change this up. Good jump check for Yakinda. He confirms that there's no one deep through the apartments. So that's going to free him up to rotate away, but. You've still conceded some space here. Mao's have shown a proclivity to boost up into window whenever it's available. So even this rotate from Yakindar has to be a little more tame. But he is slowly but surely reclaiming some of this map control. Here's that boost up into the window we were just oh. talking about. And Jimmy's going to get out with the kill. As they try to go up through the connector, they've got to be aware. Twist and Nap both forced forward off of that molly. And with Kadian holding down the spawn side, this one's looking good unless... Oh, no. Impact. 1v1, just Kadian left to find. What he to... grabs the bomb, 10 seconds. He's got to go into Kadian. He's got to try and win this on the back of the fight. And oh! Kadian is locked down. No. And it's Jimpat oh. with the close. A big 1v2 to secure a runaway half for Maus. Hey future pros, I have a classic Mirage smoke for you today, and that is the mid-window smoke from T-Spawn. If you're feeling a bit too lazy to learn all the spawn smokes, or you want to smoke mid in the mid-round, this should help you out. To throw the smoke, get into the corner of the bin. 
aim at this point about 75% to the right of the door, then just below the middle point between the door and the roof. Then hold D to walk into the bin and jump throw. Just like that, mid should be smoked off. I see a lot of missed smokes for window, so don't be one of those people. Be one of the good ones. Russells have been jimmied here as Powers really steamrolled them down in that first half of play. And it ends with this phenomenal 1v2 out of Yimpa. There's surely no hope for Liquid here. Maus on a home map looking to make a statement and send themselves into the semis yeah. feeling fine. Even that body language at the end of that half, right? I don't even think Liquid thought Kadeen had that round. Meanwhile, Maus is shocked that Jimmy's won it. You can't really be shocked at this point. This kid is the real deal especially in the group stages. But as you said, semis await Maus if they can just close this 9-3 lead and Liquid already locked into the quarterfinals at bare minimum. Got a bit of a B fake roo here for Liquid. It's kept three over. Boost. Oh, tall sheep. Nothing to worry about, Zershan confirms. Back to B. And Mal's feel the same way. Still triple strong. It's not really many other options for Liquid with this map control. They don't even have a flash to make their life difficult. Brolin can continue to re-peak confidently down this line. Okay, here's Twist to switch something up. He'll need this kill on Zershan first and foremost. Stuck up in ladder with a cross. Brolin will nail the shot. He kinder falls and he spots the rush. Now they know Twist has at least alleviated some of the pressure here. And so suddenly Brolin is left up alone inside of the B site, getting overran, getting overwhelmed. Skulls deals with him. And now Torshi far too late to defend this B site. It's him and Chewy in a undoable 2v4 with bomb planted and liquid. Plenty of time to get set up. Mao's. They might just have to wait a little while longer to get this one over and done with. And the start that Liquid needed. Yeah. If they didn't win the pistol, you could have wrote this one off straight away. So that is at least the, the first step in the right direction. Yet a long road. Let's see if Liquid can walk it this evening. A bit of a, That's a classic Zeus. Zeus that is yeah. kind of his catchphrase. Round his by team. round. He does it every, even if they're winning. Round by round. They'll get pistol. Round by round. And he's not wrong. Yeah, 
Yeah, liquid. It's not an enviable position, but let's see what they can do with it. Quick out mid through the smoke. You can uh, up cat. And it's into a Fama, so not even favored on the weapon. Oh, blocked in. Should we commit? But he's also got cover to trap skulls in the corner who gets out with both kills. Only a dink. Yakinda with a drive by. And bye bye to Maus in this round. Yeah, Liquid are going into where both players remain. So hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. Don't you dare, Harry. Surely it won't, right? It's only exertion and gym pat. Oh, oh that okay. extra second. That You're extra lucky. second saves Twist's life. Bombs going up short, smoke down, and no gap for exertion to look over. So this one should be kept clean for Liquid past this point. Uh, they've got a player trapped, so there's actually guns for upgrades here. Could get out with a Galil and an AK, and I think they realize the Skulls hasn't departed. So the goal has now changed to get this kill. If they do, it's a successful force buy ish for Mouse. Yeah, bare minimum, they grab the Famous, but yeah, they, they want to sweeten the deal, and the likelihood of Skulls surviving coming down with each second that passes. Mouse are just closing in, they are hunting. The Wounded Skulls. Should be easy on five health to find him here. Oh, he knows. There it is. Nicely handled by Mouse, but Liquid still get their second. They deal with the Force Buy. Another round by a round. All I'm going to say is it's the two big threats that get out of that round with guns for mouse. So if you're liquid, you have to play this one like you're up against full rifles. You've got to give them the respect because they very much earned it over the course of this series. Love a B-Rush. What a, what a cool that would be. Liquid have forgotten the bomb, uh, but it doesn't seem like that's where they're going anyway. Got to get their mid nades in, keep the pressure on. Boost up, gym pat. Okay. More aggression in apps. This time on the CT side. He can just keep sending. Try and get the big flank. Just coming back from under. Jim Pat is still in a potent position. Oh, the bomb's coming this way. Yeah, if it was an AK, I'd be a little more worried. I mean, it is Jim Pat. But Nav's going alone right now. You want to trade here. He seems cautious. There it is. Flash through. Nice flashes. Jimmy run down, and even though exertion right place on the AK, he should struggle to get much more out of it. Trying to tap Twist out of the round, and Brolin oh. suddenly emerges on a P250. They run him down. They deal with him. One more man, though. Oh. It's Chewy, and he goes unaccounted for. It's just Kadian left to clutch up. 1v2. That's what he's doing. Going to go looking for Shui back in the market. And Exertion was last spotted over at short. Oh, he's trying to pre-read it. He almost considered that A rotation. Both of them did. But Kadian holds on, and his slowdown here is not to his benefit. Exertion's getting more and more space on this B flank. Does he think that Kadian's still here? That's the big question. Drop might make noise. Kadian steps first. Zershan patience, and it will pay off. Two guns, and they get it done. Essentially a full by round. Yeah, that one's going to hurt if you're liquid, especially, man, you know, one of the guns didn't even play into it. One of the guns didn't even get involved. Jimmy died instantly. But the pistols in tandem with the AK from Exertion are enough for this Mouse team. <laughs> and sure he lets them know about <laughs> it too. loving it. 10-5 and yeah, Liquid can't even land on their feet and convert the anti-ecos. Like, that's the difference in this matchup right now. Kadian. Oh, we've got this battle again between him and Jim Pat, and he's playing very aggressive. Oh, even then. How did that's he get That's insane. Dinged? Like, what? What are you shooting yeah. for? Jim Pat. Chill. Okay, your kinder will not. Kenyon's had a horrible time yeah. going to the apartments. I would just, you know what? I would just say, Jimmy, you've earned this one. Yeah. You've actually done a great job. Kind of an enviable job. Something we can all aspire to be. But they at least get the opener in this round, courtesy of your kinder.
Cadian's telling the story onward to the rest of his team. He's like, nah, look, seriously, you think it's going to be fine? It's, it's not. Most of the time, it's not. But in this round, it is. Naf comes in with the courage. If they get this kill mid, though, if it opens up the retake, yeah, he can't commit to that. You're, you're not throwing this one away if you're Maus. You're looking at, at the opportunity. You're salivating with the prospect through the smoke exertion. He's got a kill on Skulls. 2v3, but low health and uncertain territory here for Liquid. Assertion finds yet another. Brolin quick shot by the Orb, but still the cross comes back for Zertion, who's on three right now and looks for the round. It's the wall bang for your Kinder. It's not clean. It is anything but comfortable, but it is one more on the board for Liquid. That would have been a, an insane round. Liquid try to throw that. They try. The thing that's so wild was that Kadian had a chance to deal with Exertion before he even crosses into the site, but he just falls shy in his attempt of it. And see, so Akindar does well to find success there for Team Liquid. The Maus want to keep these four spy wars going. They go all in here and now. This could really close up the game now. Like, Liquid, that's a clutch round to win. If they get this one, the gap really, really starts to tighten up. It feels like Inferno all over again in that sense. Like the 8-4 or the 9-3 in this case, back off of the four spies. Same vein, if they fall oh. short here, Mauser looking. Oh no. At a pole placing, Brolin double molly, but he's pre-dropped the smoke oh. and now fights ahead of it. See ya. Eva manages to cross on in. No. These MP9s chew through Team Liquid. They're terrified. Cadian's trying to restore order, but while all this is going on, while Brolin is acting as a human decoy, Torshi's coming in with the backstab, and Cadian's got no idea. Brolin might fall, but Torshi should be there to That's... safeguard it and not even need it. Brolin with four on that MP9. He's just ducking and weaving and dodging in the sight, and there's nothing that Liquid can do. Dude, this is a crazy game again. The firepower is immense. We have so many insane multi-kill clutch rounds out of both teams, but especially Mal's on Mirage. What a play for Brolin, the pre-smoke. He's able to actually use Liquid's flash against them. He peeks after it, catches another player crossing under stairs, who's just that little bit more blind. What a wacky round for Maus to win. And as soon as we set up that, oh, Liquid, they've been given another opportunity to perform a comeback, to restart their heart. Maus just removed them from the server. It's only Yakinda's AK. Kadian with the bomb and B, and Jimpa has been his kryptonite. Good night. Yakinda is stuck behind boxes. And Maus are but a round from the semi-finals of Chengdu. I feel like Kadian is, what, 0-6 in that fight to Jimmy over in the apartment? Probably. It's it's not been good. Probably not that bad, but... Maybe 0-5, 0-4. Yeah, we'll give him that. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And Yakinda kind of has to save because it's the only AK they'll have next round. This well, Mouse team is so yeah. entertaining. I hope this is where they can break through. I think this is the perfect event to do so. It's it's less high stakes than the event they just came off of. Uh, I think they seem to be the one team that hasn't been shaken from their results at the major, right? Like, I think even G2, who was saying in the interview, you know, post-major blues, sure, Mouse will maybe informed to make those finals, but they are also an upcoming team. They're a very young team. They will have many more years of this. I think they know that. And as we've already talked about, Sabrina mentioned on the desk as well, like, the vibes are just very good in this team. I think this could be the perfect arena event for Maus to break through in China and make a run in the playoffs. Locking into semi-finals is but one round away. But man, it's been a surprisingly competitive event with some shocking results already. With FlyQuest looking great, they'll be playing against FaZe for a quarterfinal spot later. We've had Astralis running the board through the top side of their bracket. And spoiler alert, they have two owed VP, so they will be in the semifinals as well.
On the other side of the bracket, two mouths. Liquid guaranteed quarters, at least. Heroic G2 is our next game here on this stream, folks. If you want to watch a do or die game for quarterfinals or elimination, the Counter-Strike keeps coming today. But can Mouse close this out clean? Well, they don't have much to go up against here. As you highlighted at the tail end of that round, the AK is the only gun that Liquid have. It was saved forward from that previous so do or die moment here for your kinder. Swarm is trained, but even though it misses, Brolin provides the cover. Drip by drop, liquid run dry. Four pistols remain. Up into the window, that jump could have been heard. Doesn't matter, Torchy just nails him. They can grab that gun, but what can they truly do with it? Brolin will get the warning. Anticipation. He's using the gun as like a, a little trap, right? The moment that disappears, he knows they're here. Are they going to play around it? Twist is going to drop with this. Flash is good. He turns. He still gets a one for one. That's excellent work. The AWP is here. Mal's ready to close this down. Even with that gun retrieved, what can they hope to do? There's one kill back the other way. Nap cooks up Ooh, something else and wow. skulls his eagle, trying to deliver something here. Oh, oh, liquid oh no! But the MP9 reigns supreme. It opens with a masterclass from Jimmy, and he's the guy to close it. Semi finals locked in for Maus. Unbelievable game. This team is looking lights out, strength to strength. Players improving every single day, and maybe finally the chance to make an arena run. It feels like Mao's time. Liquid is still locked into quarterfinals. We get to see them in front of the fans here in Chengdu, China, and we have more Counter Strike coming as said, so stay with us, folks. Mao's truly making magic. Gods in the group stage and securing themselves that semi-final spot at the Intel Extreme Masters Chengdu. And uh, what a nasty way to be ending this map out, Yanko. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jimmy was uh, tremendous all series long, right? Just in the first half, how he was bullying KDN on me. I mean, with those couple of entries, you could tell at some point KDN was just like, I can't believe, like, I can't believe what's happening to me. Like, this is crazy. This guy is just owning me. And yeah, Mouse, another uh, straight semi-final trip for them. And it really felt like the job had been done on Inferno. They very quickly reached what I like to call flow state on that map. The moves were working, the initiatives were paying off. You talked about Xertion, he once again found a whole lot of openings on the T side. Uh, I'm sure this has been a map that was very, very pleasurable for them. And speaking of the devil, of the devil hey man, he's how's here. it going? Well, I think we have some mic issues, but hopefully we'll get those there results. Nope, there nope. we go. Hey, there, oh, there we go. Hey guys, hey guys. Keeping the suspense. Um, congratulations, semi-finals yet again. And that looked uh, pretty clean and easy on that second map, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we played really well, to be honest. Uh, we, we had really good answers. We were playing really slow rounds, uh, which is something that I think we're really good at. So, uh, yeah, I think we had a really good game plan coming in from our IGL. And uh, coach gave some good input. And, yeah, I think we just executed well as a team, and I'm happy. Uh, was it tough at all to game plan, seeing as how Liquid hasn't played for a while, right? So yes, you have some information on them, but you're also probably thinking they have might have changed some stuff, added some stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not really sure, like not to take anything away from them. I think they have great individuals in that team, of course, but um, I don't know. It seems like a bit like they didn't do, didn't change much from last time, we what we saw in the demo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that maybe... I don't know how much practice they get in, in, like in America when they're over there or something. Like, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think that, they, yeah, they didn't really have much new things, uh, in my opinion, at least. Well, you definitely made Mirage look relatively easy from the outside. But I want to talk about Inferno because what a battle it was for us to witness. How did you experience the map? The back and forth, the eco loss, the clutches. Like, how was it from the inside? Well, uh, I think that we were really calm uh, throughout all the games, so it was really nice. We we didn't really feel chaotic in our side, at least, uh, maybe in theirs. But um, yeah, I think that <clears throat> I think that we did play well uh, overall, also on T side. I just think that we kind of uh, maybe jumped the gun too much uh, when we got those advantages on B. Um, but of course, we need to look into it uh, in a demo and r analyze uh, what really happened. But yeah, I think once we slowed it down a bit and we let uh, like Shuhe. Uh, mid round call, we, we started getting rounds and we started reading their stacks and stuff. So, yeah, I think that it was a close game, but uh, I think we played really well. I mean, you played gloriously individually, right? We've got to give it our Air Force aim high. It is going to be exertion. Um, for you coming into group stage, I think 
has become, you know, a, a little bit of a trope at the moment that Maus will always do incredibly well in group stage. Why do you guys feel, you know, so comfortable coming into the early stages of the tournament? I mean, to be honest, I think that uh, we still have a lot to improve on in that regard. I think <coughs> always our... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> always our opening games are really close. Uh, so that's something we're also working on. Uh, but yeah, I think that we, we, we just come ready always to tournaments. We are all really hungry and uh, yeah, I'm just uh, really hoping and believing that we will show that we, we can take it in playoffs this time and uh, hopefully win the whole thing as well. You know, for some teams it's been, you know, like FaZe coming from the grand final here to the tournament, a little bit of fatigue probably from all of that. Where do you guys stand? You know, obviously quarterfinal exit, I'm sure you were hoping for more. So what was the mood coming into the tournament? I mean, uh, I think, to be honest, nothing really changed. Uh, of course, it was sad to lose in the quarterfinals, and also we expected a lot out of the Major from us as a team. But at the end of the day, we still are a great team. Uh, we proved it many times. And <clears throat> I just think that um, we just need to continue on this way. I mean, ma making playoffs, I think, in six or seven times in a row now in tournaments is not something you need to take. OK, so maybe we didn't win the, the titles yet. We're still a young team, but we made the playoffs seven times in a row. And that's something that we, you cannot take away from us. So uh, yeah, I think nothing really changed for us. We are just even more hungry to prove that we can do it in the playoff stage. Um, and yeah, I think that uh, everyone is a little bit tired. The schedule has been tough. Uh, boot camp into major, into two days off practice, into uh, now in China and the travel as well. We have some sick people, myself included. And yeah, I mean, uh, we, we're just looking forward to play basically. and to prove our point again and again. Just to maybe talk about you personally, uh, you are what I like to call a playmaker. Like you take risks, you have intuition a lot in your games, and sometimes it works really well and sometimes it's very complicated. How do you experience that? Being able to be a difference maker for the good and the bad sometimes at the very top level, how is it in that role? Uh, I mean, I think uh, in my personality, thankfully I, I fit it. I think that's why naturally I'm good at it in a way because I really don't think about that. Obviously after the game I will take credit for good plays, but also the bad plays, I will take responsibility and stuff. But in the game, I really don't make, like, I, I will not think about, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to lose the round. I'm, I'm going to always go for what feels right in the timing. And and uh, I mean, when it goes well, like today, of course, then uh, I can put on a performance like this for the team. And I'm just happy that the guys let me do it. Speaking of the game, should we dive into a particular round? Yes, and Exertion. this is to, not to be, you know, harsh on Exertion, right? He had a great game. Unfortunately, this is the one round where it didn't go that great for him, but he team, his team made up for it, right? So early on, in the middle of the first half, oh. right, <laughs> just a default, you're oh. going to go for a more aggressive play towards a connector, right? Going to get punished for that, um, as as we see here, right? You get you got a couple of great entries in the prior <laughs> rounds. Here you die, 4v5, your kinder peaks, dies. So in this 4v4 trade, what happened before this, we can pause it real quick. So what happened before this was, Shui was trying to lurk connector, it was a top con smoke, Liquid as a team, they crunched mid, right? They got the info, they killed the lurker, Mouse reacted really well, immediately pushed A, got the bomb down, right? And then in the 3v3, now we can go back to the clip. What was great here, you're going to see them. Like, they're not going to be passive. Brolin checks deep with a flash. They're coming back. 3 to one peak together. Torsion and Brolin get two kills and just the round is over. Really good team CS. Is there a guy who usually makes this call, like, in 3v3s? Uh, you know, was it Brolin or Torsion? or is it just, like, Everyone's on the same page, really. I mean, specifically in this round, there's Brolan. Like, he saw, he heard the guy CT and he was instantly like, let's just fight the con guys, let's just fight the con guys. We say 3 to 1, we peak. But, I mean, usually in 3v3s, I, I, it, was, it will be me. Like, uh, I, I talk a lot uh, when I'm dead. I talk a lot when, obviously, I'm dead a lot, but I talk a lot uh, <laughs> when I'm dead. And in general, to give direction and give perspective to the team, like, kind of build the. Like, if Kamil is on mid, Shu is on mid, I will tell them what's going on there so the team knows how to play a bit. And, uh, yeah, I think that uh, it, the Brolan did really well this round. and I'm just happy that he called it. One more question for me, Zashan. Um, obviously, it got a little bit complicated back at the Major when you guys entered the playoffs. Um, so for you guys, what's the focus now going into the next stage of the tournament and playing in front of a crowd on the big stage? I think, uh, I mean, it might sound uh, like weird because we have been losing playoffs games, but to be honest, nothing changes. Like nothing changes uh, for us. We just need to do what we always do and it will click at some point and we just need to understand uh, that there is no mental block for us. We, there is actually none, and I'm really confident in the guys. And yeah, we just need to go into the game, just do our own thing. And uh, like, I'm pretty confident we will show a different mouse this time in playoffs. I'm actually interested in that. From, we look at you guys from the outside, and we try to make 
suggestions on what's happening when you lose these games. You live from within. What is the difference for you between the mouse that now just slapped the hell out of your opponent and the one that maybe sometimes struggle in this moment? Like, what what is fundamentally different from the inside when you are living the game? Yeah, I mean, I think that we we tend to play a bit different. Obviously, also in stage, the the comps are naturally going to get a little bit more chaotic. There is more noise, you you hear less. Uh, the game is less perfect, I would say, as you say it. And I think that we are really good at playing a perfect day game. I think we are really consistent in our style. So I think that maybe we play a little bit differently in in terms of that. And uh, yeah, I just think it's down to, to how we approach games, like how we come into the game, like how, how does uh, Shuhei make the game plan? Like, uh, how does Cyclone see the opponent? And like, when when it clicks like today, we just play a, a really good throwing or like against complexity in, a, in the major, right? So, yeah, I think that uh, we just need to do the same. And I think that we are slowly working on uh, consistency on that. I think also it's a bit unfair in a sense of, yes, they got wrecked a couple of times in playoffs, but it was two times against phase one time against G2, which are some of the most experienced, you know, teams when it comes when we have any comes to that. So we'll see who you guys end up facing this time around. I, I lied, Zershan. One more question. Uh, simultaneously <laughs> going down on the B stream, we had Astralis VP. Astralis smacked the hell out of VP. What do you it make of uh, Astralis? I think it was, what, 13-6 uh, on Overpass, 13-7 on Vertigo. Device looking great, Stan looking great. What do you think of them? To be honest, I think they... I think they are playing really well. I mean, I saw the, the game versus FaZe they played. I mean, they, they, they owned them completely. They had no chance. And I think that, uh, I mean, I said it even when they had BlameF, like that they have an insane roster. If you look at it on paper, they have amazing players. All of them can make good decisions and and like do whatever. And yeah, I think that uh, maybe like they found the, the change that they needed. I think Device is doing a good job. He's also, I feel like he, he's a leader in his uh, heart. Like he seems like a really passionate guy and uh, a nice guy as well. So yeah, I think that they are playing really well. And I think they have great players on the roster. I personally really love Stair. I think he's a great player, a great playmaker, as you say. Um, so I have a lot of respect for him since even Sprout days. Um, but yeah, I think that they are a great team. And I already told my team that, like, I, I don't believe this is like a fluke event or a fluke tournament or a fluke maps. I think like they're playing really good CS. And like, I, I'm, I really believe we will see them back in the top five or top six uh, very soon. Session, I will actually let you go <laughs> now. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations you on the semi-final Thanks. spot. And yeah, see you, uh, see you in the arena. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Uh, yeah, where does that leave Liquid then in terms of your expectations going into quarterfinals? You think as you know, is this already above and beyond what you expected Liquid coming into this tournament? No, because I had no expectations. Okay. I didn't know what to expect. Right? We, we we all didn't know what to expect. And I think though at this particular game, this particular result with how Mouse is at this stage, I mean, you know, we talk about them always failing in the playoffs. But if they can unlock that, right? Like if they can replicate the level from groups into the playoffs, that's another contender level team. Yeah, I agree with you. I think for Liquid, any games from now on will be won in three maps. I think that the, the, just the lay of the land, the situation of the team is such that there are punishers that you can poke in the map hole. That's usually the acabe of new teams or younger roster. So if they have the tenacity to push three mappers, why not look for victories out there? I can't really put the format in my head to see who would be their potential quarterfinals. So I'm not going to talk out of my butt. I'll leave that to some more leave qualified expert, people. Yeah. We'll eventually, we'll get a graphic to talk about that. But when a, with a good matchup in quarterfinals, why not? Quite honestly, why not in three maps? What are your thoughts on the Astralis making it through to the semifinals? We heard from Exertion, but uh, I don't know whether I was expecting them to hand VP that much pain in this in the seeding game. Yeah, I mean, they've just stormed through the group stage, Astralis did, and you don't know at some point you were talking about FaZe gets one game off, right? That might have been the Astralis one. Maybe it wasn't that. <laughs> VP, VP was a little bit up and down themselves, almost lost, almost lost to FlyQuest. So are they in some sort of trouble? How good are they actually? But yeah, I mean, all props to Astralis. They were very eager to show up here and, and show people what they're capable of, and they're just enjoying the ride, it seems. I think everyone gives way more than 100%. I think there's like a, a perfect storm for Astralis right now where they are aware of, you know, Device is brand new leader. We're far from being perfect. Everybody has to give suggestions, ID, give their best shot. 100 hours last two weeks on Steam. That's the case. <laughs> that's Maybe, the you know, <laughs> gym in the morning, eight hours sleep, sunlight in the morning, all of the good stuff. Uh, and I do think that also structurally, as Roshan was talking about, the shuffle makes sense and it's freedom. I think Stone has been playing good counter strike here. Yabi has come back to life after a very complicated time in the Astralis jersey. So, hell, it's going to be complicated, no? Right, hit me out, Yanko. We might get. 
phase I, via Charlotte. That's like the third time you talk about it today. It's the Maybe third time. again. Uh, that, yeah. that would be awesome, Freya. Would you like that? Yeah, You're absolutely. not going to be coaching this time, so Yeah, maybe. so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore, you trying? She's really trying to anymore. Mm. Yeah, I mm. want to make you relive that memory one more time. Tell you what, you so I think much. we should go to a break. We've got a bit of an extended one, but make sure you join us back after them because two more spots in the quarterfinals, both going down on the A and the B stream on the A stream. We have got G2 versus Heroic. Only one team will survive at the Intellect Stream Masters. Check it. Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? ...to try and win it in a one v five. Chris three flick, no. oh, they think he won by one six, no way. He wants to... Oh, my God, who does it? So I'm hanging out here with Taz and Hooksy from G2. We're hanging out in Chengdu, or Changdu, as I'm supposed to be saying it, I think. But it's beautiful over here. Uh, you guys been to China much? No. First, First time, time here. Me too, me too. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to exploring. It's already, like, I'm expecting some kind of culture shocks, but right now I think we're getting very pampered and... Uh, yeah. I got my first one at the lunch. Oh yeah? <laughs> I was like, I was looking for my normal stuff and it was like, yeah, there's rice and noodles. No, there. there's, there is a, there's like a ignorant Westerner section right there at the is, back. Anyway. Yeah. That saved me a little bit, but I, I also want to try some things. So. Yeah, me too, yeah. me too. They didn't save me. No? <laughs> nope. You, you must have traveled a lot because back in the day there was a lot of Chinese events. I mean, I, I love everything about you know, China, culture, but I miss my protein. Oh yeah. A little bit. I, yes. I just this one. Yeah, we'll find, we'll find you some. The, the breakfast has got everything. Uh, but moving away from snacks and uh, into some Counter-Strike. Hey, hey, if you're watching. <laughs> um, moving into the Counter-Strike, what's been, I mean, not long uh, for you guys to kind of review and digest Copenhagen, because I guess that event finished, you've had four days, and then you're straight back here, plugging in the mouse and keyboard uh, yeah. halfway across the world. So. Have you had time to kind of reflect on Copenhagen? Or is it still kind of being digested as we, as we sit here? We didn't really have to put in any work because uh, people on Twitter already figured out what we went wrong for us. Oh, so. <laughs> no, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I have to be like, more serious. We spent maybe half a day on, on watching the games and talking about um, what direction we should head now and yeah. what we could quick fix. And uh, we did what we could. Practiced one day and uh, just to kind of, I don't know, not float out into some so you uh, had a post major depression. Two, two week tournament, playing almost every day, practicing before it. Then you get a couple of days off, maybe one day with your family, or, and mm -hmm. then you're straight back yep. to it. Um, not, we're not worried about burnout here. Everyone's cool. I mean, definitely we are worried about burnout. You know, we need to. Uh, take into consideration like more free days and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that but like that's also the dream come yeah. true right that's why we you start playing to travel play constantly on the events so yeah. burnout yeah I mean I think it's overused I mean for me it's overused yeah <laughs> yeah there is there's definitely like there's a there's a clinical diagnosis and there's a lot of people that will just say it when they're feeling a bit fatigued yeah yeah for sure. Um, I've got, I've written down my sick notes. I said, they took down Maus. True. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, was that, hey. that was, that was a, that was a game. I, I had high expectations for Maus. The way in which they were just walking through everything, RMRs, three zeros, just blah, blah, blah. You know, I didn't know how it was going to stop, but you really put it, put it to a, a convincing stop. I understand why people look at them like favorites in the game because of the results on paper, 3-0, 3-0, mm. but uh, the two best of ones they played uh, in before going to the stage, 
was 13-11, 13-11. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of stuff that has to go wrong for that to be a 0-2 day. And, yeah. so, and uh, it was kind of the same for us. We just lost 13-11 against Navi and they ended up being the major champs. So it's, like, well, it's yeah. not easy to predict from such few games and Maus is generally not a team that plays a lot. So yeah, maybe they have a bit of a stage issue as well. I've mm-hmm. heard uh, some rumors about uh, them struggling a bit with big games and uh, when they get in front of a crowd and we are the opposite. Yeah. So it makes sense that the you know, ground kind of gets evened out uh, a little bit. 100%. I think that's an interesting conversation. I was actually just talking to uh, Carrigan about pressure and the, uh, the, the pros and cons of being a favorite, being an underdog. Uh, over your career, Taz, we'll start with you. When you uh, have, uh, you've come into games as underdog, you've definitely come into games as a favorite. I mean, that Katowice run, you, you were kind of the, the underdog, no? I mean, yeah, we were the yeah. underdog, definitely. That, like, at least from public view, but then we hear that every team thought that we are like scary. the favorites. And yeah. I was like, how? Yeah. Uh, overall, like for me, uh, most of the time it was, if not always, we were the underdog. Again, so the you know the Fnatic, Sera in CS:GO, the Astralis, yeah. uh, even 1.6. We were always the underdogs playing against Getrise, Forest. So, yeah. Does that give you an advantage, do you think? Do you think psychologically, knowing you can kind of... If you lose, that's what everyone expected. If you win, you know, does that lead you to taking more risks? You know, can you be a bit more daring in your I mean, approach? It feels that you prefer to be underdog, but if you're the favorite, then the other team kind of respects you a little bit more. Mm. It's not even like that you, as an underdog, you play like more like stupid plays. Uh, every duel you take, you have a little bit more respect. Like in my opinion, like, yeah. I don't know how it is well, now, but from my <laughs> view, that's fine. From my view, like if you're the favorite, people should scare, be scared of you. Yeah, that's a long time ago. I understand why you don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I was just thinking about. We just talked about the mouse game, and uh, yes, it was definitely very obvious to everyone from our team that mouse talked about. Okay, we need to go out here and. You know, show some balls and right. do like make the plays. And uh, sometimes I think they overdid it a bit, okay. which is obviously better than being scared. Yeah. But uh, uh, I was just thinking, like, from I've had a lot of time. Like, I literally went from being the biggest underdog to being one of the biggest favorites oh, from yeah, of one time to the other. So uh, I was just thinking about what we did when we were underdogs, and that was definitely a lot about like not being scared and going for the place and uh, not showing respect. It so didn't change for you. <laughs> you played this, you, you have the same attitude back then and now. You do yeah, basically the same stuff. Like, yeah, oh, it was more smoke, scary to be the favorite. Smoke, like, yeah, it's more go. scary to be the favorite. Yeah, it definitely is. I, I think that being the underdog that's like in a big game, that's like good pressure. And being the favorite uh, in a big game is like, okay, you're here to either do what you people expect or to fail. Sure. And that's bad pressure in my yeah. brain. No, I see. I, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It does make a lot of sense. And then, of course, you know, losing out to the, the winners of the whole tournament. Um, that, that, that always happens if we, if we lose somehow. Yeah. We lose to the winners every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> so you just gotta, you just got to be the winners and then it wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Um, but what, what, what did you think Navi had cracked there? Because they were coming into almost every game as an underdog. People weren't expecting big things of them. I mean, I say that just based off of the pickums, you know, 2% oh, of people definitely, had, I agree. had um, that. But they were definitely on the edge. People were, knew that they were, they were a good team. No one we expected def- we them. We definitely know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know what it is with them. Uh, like, I cannot pinpoint exactly what they're doing. Of no. course, they have like good, calls, good, good reads, players, good, good players. Uh, IGL, everything. It's not like they are bad in that sense. But for me, they somehow can bring everyone to their level in a way. I don't feel like Ooh. they are face or vitality, you know, like always like top three in the world. I don't think they will consistently stay there as well. Okay. But when we play them, for example, I feel like some like a lot of weird things happen that doesn't happen against anyone else. Yeah. And I cannot explain it. And we tried to find like a fix for it, but now we lost to them six times, I think. And we just, we, we cannot figure out what it is. Can I beat this effing team? I mean, we are getting a, a lot closer. Yeah. We are getting yeah. closer to it's it. It's not like, enough. No. I feel like OT them, and a 13 11, right? But if you look yeah. at the, how they play, I think that the biggest strength for them is that they are very like, uh, they, they are playing as a unit mm. in a way that when there is like a game plan, uh, by Blade, 
like they are really executing it like they they are playing for each other really hard and mm. maybe that's what uh, being an underdog brings in teams that there's not like a, you c it's hard to pinpoint a star in uh, in Navi i think yeah. that uh, you saw JL getting an mvp right yeah. i mean he had he's a guy who has insane games like insane like maps yeah game changing maps but uh, bit should be a star right you 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 would think that wonderful maybe it yeah. can be a star, but uh, before this even, he, it, it wasn't like that. So They all kind of have similar output. Yeah, so, so I think that that's what is their biggest strength. That mm. uh, they are not thinking, I need to do something. Yes. I need to uh, like win this round or win this duel. Mm. So when they are losing some duels, it's very small crack on their armor. I like that. I like the way you've, you've framed that. Because I mean, I, my mind is, is going to the... <laughs> <laughs> my mind is going to the... Uh, to the opposite of that, where you know you have teams with more defined stars, like I'm sure for Ilya, for Nico, they have that mindset suddenly where they're like, you know, it has to be me. I've got to do something. I have to. It like it can't. It, if something's not working, it has to be me. And I don't. I don't know if it's a bit cheeky of me, but I'm watching that game now in my head, and I'm thinking about that that JL Deagle round. Sorry yeah. to, I'm sorry to bring it up. Oh, it's, it's fine. Um, but you know, the MR, the MR12, we've been talking about how one bad round, like one loss to an anti-eco or losing both pistols or losing one silly clutch. And it's just so much more punishing now on MR12. Mm -hmm. Did that not only break your money, but did that break your mental a little bit, that Deagle round? Or is because because, you know, on the outside looking in, it could be explained as simple as, well, they, because I thought you were coming straight back. I was like, here mm. they come. This is G2. Oh, they're, they're, they're here now. Yeah. And then one dude with a deagle and it's just, oh, he's caught time. How is he behind me? You know, I can imagine the round. I can imagine yeah. the comms. Oh. Well, I think that, yeah, what? It's like the easy excuse, right? To say yeah. that, uh, you know, that one round broke us, but like you cannot get broken Doesn't, by one round no. mentally. I think that we all kind of just brushed it off because it was like, okay, he had a sick round. Shit yeah. happens, Play all on. that stuff. And uh, we just need to focus on what's in front of us. That's what we've been okay. kind of talking about a lot since Victor joined the team as well, that we cannot like stay in the past of like this round was uh, bad or like we did this mistake and be mad about that. Just focus on what's in front of us. Mm. And for me, it was not about that one round at all. Actually, I think that round was the least of our problems in, on that T side. I think we executed that game plan really bad. And yeah, okay. um, we made some mistakes on some things that we have been through a thousand times, oh. which is like, I don't really know what else to say besides that has to be some mix of like pressure and uh, maybe also this eagerness of like making the difference that mm. kind of messed with that. Because when we talked about the mistakes we did after and we asked people like, for example, even myself, like we were like, why did I do that? I'm like, I don't even Can't know. Explain it. I, I don't Can't know why that went it. through my head at that point as a good idea, but it just was. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I mean, even if, when you watch the game, like you can see after the legal round, we had like two really good rounds to, to bounce back. We had like sick call from uh, Rasmus to go like split mid. And uh, we had 3v3, we planted the bomb on A side, everything smoked. We can True. actually move around and do whatever you want, but we don't move. And then next round we have uh, A exec. And uh, when you look, when we go A, when we are A main, there is nobody on A. And then Wonderful comes yeah. with oh, uh, only one right. guy. And we always, fled, like this angle yeah. is never killing us. Yeah. But because this one planned. moment, <laughs> we don't do it, right? This one moment. And we lose the round, we lose two guys, right? So the round is kind of lost. So yeah. we, had we had chances to bounce back. And I think that it's most important is not to think about, oh, we lost a major, oh, that's uh, terrible. Like we made like semifinals, we started yeah. one, two, so it wasn't that bad, but we can learn a lot from this single game. Like the small details, Smash sounds 12, yeah. they will bring you everything, right? Even Deagle round, which you uh, spoke. Yeah, people see that JR hit like uh, sick Deagle shots, yeah. but, they, but they don't see Ima on uh, heaven between like two mollies in this small square, he's not burning, <laughs> yeah, he has 30 yeah, HP. Yeah. And yeah. when JL starts to shoot with us, Ima is just spraying through smoke and hits Nico to 10 HP when Nico goes up to kill Wonderful. Uh, so imagine yeah. that Ima died from fire, minus mm. one, Nico has 100 HP, and JL hits him in the leg when he peeks. Yeah. yeah. Totally different yeah. story. So a lot of things had to go yeah. in their way. And I think that's why they are champions. Like, like in a, that was their fate to win. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. You never win a major without luck. 
Yeah. You need a bit of luck. Oh, absolutely. But you can also you make your own luck. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like we chase it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the one day. One day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I wanted to kind of pivot into more like kind of uh, macro stuff, detached from Copenhagen itself. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done, guys. Take a breath. Take a breath. <sighs> um, Thank God. So I've written. I've re- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to make you relive it. Yeah, uh, it went smooth. It's yeah, okay. no, we got through it. We got through yeah. it. Uh, it's basically, it felt like you're on the couch. Like, how does that make you feel? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just leave that. <laughs> Not good, man. <laughs> Not good. Um, so yeah, I went to the break. It's a bit of a I'm silly. Not crying. You're crying. A silly topic, but um, three months you've been coaching now, moving into that space, and uh, I, I've, I just spoke to. to Neo, when I first spoke to him at the start of uh, his thing in 2023, I asked him, what are you doing? And he said a lot of just observation, you know, like I don't want to, I'm just kind of learning how the team works before I start put in, I'm impacting them. I mean, you're there now, you're behind the boys, you're taking your timeouts, you know, how, how much of a voice have you found in the team? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what, is it something I said? Yeah. <laughs> He's I taking mean, his timeouts. Sometimes. Uh, okay. He's okay. still new to the game. Well, that's I what mean, I'm saying. I'm saying you got to get used to. It. I know Neo didn't take any of his for the at the start because he was just like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm in a position yeah. where I can contribute. Yeah. Uh, well, I, uh, I do take some time out. Sometimes they are good. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes could be better. It could be better. Could be better. Yeah. Okay. But uh, if I don't do it, uh, I will never learn. Absolutely. I will never talk with the guys. Uh, oh, was this time out good? Like I prefer to mess up uh, with a timeout yeah. a little bit, the timings, and then hear from Rasmus or other guys that maybe we could do timeout a different timing. Yeah. Then like talk with Rasmus, you should t- take a timeout this round. Like, bro, like I need to do stuff how I feel Absolutely. at some point and also listen to the guys. But uh, it's not that, I mean, I thought that it would be like this, that I join and I'll observe and, and chill and relax. But then <laughs> yeah. I feel like every event it's like, I kind of need to step up with every event and try to bring more to the team. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I feel that I'm learning a lot every tournament and uh, every like practice. And there is a lot to like, you know, uh, oh, I learn at this level. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of comeback to tier one, but uh, every like tier one has its like different eras and the way you play the game. So yeah, it's slowly we will get there. Yeah, yeah, but is it is it exciting to you to be able to kind of you know you've kind of been given the keys to seeing how far the game has changed since when you were competing? I mean, I bet there's multiple times your you, Rasmus is because when I'm talking to you sometimes it's the same. You'll say something offhand like, oh yeah, they were just doing like you know the Hellraiser smokes and then they did this and then all these references that are just like beyond <laughs> me. Just how how tier one teams talk. I you mean, know. we have different names. Like sure. I use, you know, the other uh, naming of the smoke yeah. lines. They're doing the 3D like Max. Yeah, <laughs> They're so, doing so. Titan smokes. Titan oh, smokes. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, that's VP. Yeah, there's a VP for sure. A VP we still use. When we get trained back, or if we get trained back. Yeah, that's then, then we are back to my, you know, warning, yeah. finally. Now, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's not that hard when it comes to, like, even, like, the ideas. Uh, I, the main thing I have problem with is like uh, naming all the lines and the uh, mm. tactics and uh, stuff like that. But overall, the idea of how you should play or what is a good play is yeah. still there. Yeah. It's just, you know, I also understand that uh, when you go in, you need to give space. It's like I cannot like go in and say like the Erasmus, listen, T side, we could do this, this and that. And he's like, mm, no, I'm like. <laughs> Yes, because this wouldn't really no. be good. You're not right? get very so, far. so I prefer to like uh, understand how he thinks, yeah. how he likes to you know call, uh, how the guys enjoy the game, and then I try to you know uh, maybe chime in. But uh, at this level, when the team, team you are playing like one year together, like maybe not with without uh, Nexa. Nexa, we played together for actually almost two. Yeah. yeah, so it's like the team is set. Mm. Like there is a lot of set things, so you cannot go. You kind of catch uh, like. With them change everything like you need to understand the system yeah 100 percent. and and that feeds into the point i i brought out just before the cameras are rolling but i thought it was an intro i'd be interested to hear counter-strike players opinions on the valorant discussion right now they're having about players having not they're not allowed to have notes on the desk 
Mm -hmm. I'm a pet. We know him from his Counter-Strike coaching days. Uh, is obviously really unsatisfied with this. And then the Valorant community as a whole seem to be quite like in agreement that it's a, it's a good thing to not have notes because it's like, oh yeah, but you know, they can't have oh, for all these excuses they're saying stuff like, um, yeah, it kind of ruins it. Like if they could have just a whole dossier of every strategy, they'd be like, okay guys, refer to section three, paragraph two, we're going to do the B. <laughs> You that's, know, that's why if, we don't have notes. If, if that makes us better to have like a whole book like that, then fine. Like if but, it makes some people better, but I mean, you have. I see most teams now have like at least an A4 sheet per player on mm -hmm. their on their desk. But can you give us insight into what's on there? Is it something as simple as like who you're expecting to find on the sites? You know, the, your enemy team's position, so you know if it's a different stack or something. Or you know, like I can't imagine it's it's not it's, like a whole playbook on there, is there? No, I think it's very different from like team to team. I think. Yeah. Just from like the top of my head, I think Navi is one of the teams who has the most papers. Actually, I think Blade has always been like yes. kind of giving out pieces of paper, and I obviously I have always no see you collecting it yeah. like at the end of the match. You'll yeah, be yeah. like homework. Oh, I'm the I'm the same. I'm almost <laughs> so collecting it because nobody needs to see this. Absolutely, nobody can see it. absolutely. But I think that what should be on there is maybe like player positions from the opposing team, and then. Maybe the tactics that you want to run. For like the minutes map. of your like pre-game meeting, like what you said yeah. we we're going to do, you just have it in front of you so you can remind yourself. Like for yeah. example, short, yeah. most of the time I'm the only one with notes on my team oh, really? because okay. I want my players to focus on what's in front of them mm -hmm. rather than what we talked about before the game because that's kind of to, I don't know, make you ready for what's to come. But most of the time the opposing team will change a lot of stuff because they also anti strat so you yeah. you don't want to go like in 100% focused on the opposing team and forget about what you're doing and mm -hmm. what you're good at but uh, i think against uh, navi actually especially for nuke uh, i want to do some things we haven't done in a while and i just wrote down the roles in case people forgot them yeah okay. but um, yeah there's nothing crazy with you, us you said the word anti strat which just had me thinking like what does it feel like to to be anti stratted I've obviously never experienced it, you know, I'm playing pugs, but like when you, when some, something that's always worked, you know, like a call, cool, uh, I don't know, a particular approach to your default or a CT setup, and suddenly you just kind of realize these boys know exactly where we are, what we're doing, and they've come up with yeah. a way to, to, to solve it. Does, is it, or is it not that black and white? Is it not, we've been anti stratted it's more it's, just... it's, it's never like, okay, we cannot do anything that we usually do anymore. It's yeah. never like that. No. But I think for me, first of all, I do a lot of, pre-work to not get anti right. like we we talk about a lot about like uh like how you if we have been doing something for a long time or like we try to change uh, before yes. meters and stuff and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh you know it's normal for like every yeah. tier one team to to know this and i think that nowadays everyone is just ready for for people to anti as well so yeah for me it's not really that that big of a deal and i always have like a not necessarily a backup plan that I thought about too much, but it, it just it's just there. I yeah, don't know. absolutely. I mean, you know, the from my surface level, just being able to do something around that worked, and then being able to do a round that feels the same but with a different finish. You yeah, know, that's like that's when I bet in-game leadership just feels like. No, when, <laughs> when you win, when you win, yeah. when you've made the call and then you fake out the same call and then they're all in the wrong place and you've got an open bomb sign, you're planting the bomb, you're like, oh, oh when, the best in the game. When you come up with something innovative and it works. Oh, and what, then, like that Molly on Ancient? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's credit to Nexa, actually. Nexa? Yeah, okay, nice. I think he was the first one to find that one. But uh, when you come up with something new and it works, that's, that's where it hits real good. And when you come up with something new, yeah. innovative. Yeah, but it players does. can't really execute it. <laughs> <laughs> it stinks. It stinks. Hey, you like guys? Why, I promise it's a good why, idea. I, I say it will work. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes we need to fight and beg a bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, but trust me, guys. Trust oh, me. But he's yeah, new. Yeah. He's new. He's trying to find the boundaries, and sometimes he goes a bit too far. You need yeah. to relax. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to give you the plow, baby. You gotta have yeah, the plow. Sure. Yeah. Oh, listen. Ah, the, the plow stopped the, when Victor stopped. Yeah. <laughs> nah. ran, ran out of fuel. But uh, there is potential. There's potential. Okay. For no, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. We try, yeah. No, we try yeah, to yeah. rise the fire up. Uh, Absolutely. Like, dancing around this. Thing. Yeah. Dancing around the fire. Cooking something. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, they're definitely cooking. And last question is, of course, for this tournament coming in. Uh, 
goals and objectives. A very diverse cast of teams. Some teams that, of course, you, you faced over in Copenhagen, you'll have some mm. head-to-heads you're familiar with. Mm. Any particular objective? You know, I assume playoffs is, is a must for, for G2 at this point. It has to be. Uh, yeah. I, I will give you uh, what, what I say to the guys every yeah. tournament we go. It's like, win, yeah, it, that's always like uh, something what G2 wants to do. Yeah. But for me, it's the most important that we leave this event. And when we talk about the event, we are like, are we better? Mm. Like, are we better than the last event? Yeah, I just nice. want us to have this feeling that no matter the result, we end up the event feeling that we played better than last event. And at some point, like, you cannot... Because at, there's no no point where you get like to the peak like there's always stuff you can do better there's yeah. always uh, things you can do better in game especially in international roster so for me if we leave this event feeling that we play better than we play the major i'm happy i like it yeah so it's the same mindset i also had it, it's, it's not so much result based it's, it's more about like can you look yourself in the eyes after and yeah. say like you did what you could, but as Vix also said, we are still D2 and we don't go into a tournament without expecting a win. That's no. just how it is. So, um, but yeah, I don't know, in terms of like, we come straight from a major and uh, I doubt that anyone on our team has the same amount of hours past two weeks as, as we had at the Coming major in. semifinal because simply like boot camping for a month straight, yep. then going to a two week tournament, then home for Four days where we practiced one and a half of them. Yep. Sorry. It's just uh, <laughs> no. I wanted this one. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to keep the steam to 100. You oh, know, yeah. so understandable. Yeah. So yeah, just going to try and come away feeling like a, a better G2 than the one that arrived. Yeah. 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 Or the one that left Copenhagen. That's oh, yeah. always the main goal. Ah, really cool. Also, you know, give the fans feeling that oh, this team. They got I, to see I love G2. to watch them. I, yeah. I need to come and watch. Uh, I need to turn on the game and watch them. Then we are in a good spot. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good to talk to you guys. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, We're going to leave it there. G2 baby. Check them out. I am Chengdu.
Namiga, Cloud9, Fury, Alin Vision, Steel Helmet, Wildcard, Tyloo, 9Z. And guess what? Now we get to send either Heroic or G2 to DE Airport as well. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Intel Extreme Masters. We're all the way over here in China, and it is the very last day. A day for redemption for some, but a do or die for everybody. And I'm going to be joined by Maniac. I got Elfish Guy down in the end. We're going to walk you right into G2 Heroic. And that's a good matchup to close the day. Yeah. I mean, summer just starting the day. Uh, you know, I hope you guys had a good sleep. You yeah, were feeling great, nice. walking yeah. about, hanging uh, around, just hanging around. And here <laughs> we're about to close the day. But I think the Counter Strike has delivered enough for me to be sustained today. That's why I'm still here, smiling. Yeah, hopefully this game is going to do that as well. I feel like it's a good matchup. I feel like there's a lot on the line. I mean, G2 potentially getting knocked out without making it to the playoffs. Ooh, that wait, would do you have be. Are you beating them? Is that what's happening? I don't. Oh, right, just, right. just I, as I, I thought he was I, already. That's a bit of a spoiler. That. But hey, I mean, it is. <laughs> It is a possibility. We'll have to wait and see how how heroic it can play. But I think for G2, that would definitely be bad news. And that would certainly get the uh, the rumor mills going again. Of course, everyone likes the rumor mill. It's we the do. internet. We love the rumor mill. But yeah, let's start with our attention on G2. And let's start with some of the things that uh, we can highlight with this team. I think one of them in the conversation has been around Nico. Uh, that's been one thing that's going on with G2 that people have been kind of looking at here, there, and the other. Uh, but overall, Hunter also maybe falls in that category? Same family. So, oh, you know, we can, we can play around a little bit. Facts. Uh, I know, Jordan, you wanted to, to touch on a little bit on the Hunter situation. I feel like he's evaded quite a lot of criticism and maybe yeah. more of it would be warranted. Well, I think that's actually kind of the thing, right? Because he has been a little bit under the pump in terms of what's the conversations happening around Hunter coming into this event. And to be honest, I mean, things kind of started slow. We didn't really see great stuff from him on day one. I mean, day two started to look a little bit better. And what I wanted to highlight was that he did have a better game yesterday night. Now, obviously the thing is, like, there's a massive caveat in there that it was against Linvision Gaming. So, I don't know if that necessarily really tells us a whole lot, but if we're talking about peaking at the right time and slowly making your way into the tournament, maybe getting a bit more comfortable, getting over the jet lag, getting over the tiredness, whatever it may be, it now starts to become that time where, okay, you can't be missing anymore if you're Hunter. You, it, it's okay on day one. It's ah. maybe not okay on day two, and it's certainly not okay on day three in an elimination game. So he's on the upward trend. He's in, going in the right direction, and we have to hope that that continues today. Yeah, just to, to maybe add on his numbers as well, I think Hunter's skills are generally pure impact. Like if, if the roles he's playing, the position he's in, very rarely just racking up free Glock kills, you know, padding the stats or, or having eco or save kills. I I feel like he's very invested in like do or die situations just to hit that uh, bit of a bull or bull mark. Bull mark? No, that doesn't mean anything. Bull I mark. was gonna say. I like that one too. Yeah. That's see, right. I did chessmate. I did chessmate earlier today. <laughs> I'm just. You did chessmate again? No, nope, on purpose. Okay. Okay. You know, that's... that's the one. But I do think that whenever he finds kills again, massive impact. So when he's having that good game that you mentioned against Linvision today, obviously a win condition. So oh, we've got Hunter out there in the open in the wild. Right? Are you the other one now. Now Nico. So like. Look, if we put these two sort of similar trajectories right here, where is Nico right now versus where he was three months ago? I mean, the, the trajectories are not similar at all. It's a completely different story when you when you talk about Nico. Uh, I just wanted to have a little bit of a look at his numbers the last three months and then the one before that. And I think this is what's really interesting in CS2. Uh, I know the transition was very tumultuous for him. It was way below what we expected. Everybody was disappointed and worried about him. But now I feel like we're seeing a, a return to grace, step by step. And and it is very interesting as well, a uh, conversation, because some people might just stand and say, oh, but you know, you just have to adapt. You know, it's just a new game. You, you know, put some hours in the game. It's going to be fine. Your know, is doing it. And fair enough. But I think when you're Nico and you were in CSGO, the best rifle there was, then you had mastered whatever was needed to be done in CSGO. To be successful, you mastered it. Like you had an art and you perfected it. You had the best cross replacement. You had the way to shoot the rate fire as all. Well. And now suddenly you're in a game where that doesn't really work anymore. And it took me, it took him maybe a little bit of a longer time to do that and it hurt his confidence. Oh. And now we're starting to finally see some signs of life that changed the whole G2 story. Slowly but surely, but I've got to be honest, it might even be a better storyline if you start from the bottom and build your way back up instead of going from CS GO straight into CS2. Yeah, it's kind of like being... Neo jumping in the Matrix, just falling the first I, time I, around. It, it's just proof that you can do it all over again, you know, that you are still going to be that guy that can really work hard, that you can make it happen, and, you know, rather than it just be easy from the, from the start. Which is never supposed to be easy. Right. Uh, well, it might be for Nico, but that was the other game. Now we're in CS2, and we've seen some of those woes. We've seen some of those trials and tribulations. Now we hear from him direct. I have Nico here by my side. Nico, today you're going to play against Heroic, but overall, when it comes to maybe the team's performance, maybe during this tournament or overall performance, when it comes to Monazi, he's pretty much pretty stable, no questions there. With the rest of the team, sometimes 
people are doing good, sometimes not so, like it fluctuates. What does it depend on, like the map, the series, the opponents, some of you ate at breakfast, I don't know. Do you, can you like, maybe somehow like, pinpoint what has the most influence? I wish it was the breakfast, but it's not. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's a bit harsh to compare us to Monesi level. I think he's playing insane right now and I'm very proud of him and I hope that he will continue playing. It's uh, helping us a lot. But when it comes to us, uh, yeah, I think uh, this event has been a bit uh, shaky, I would say. I think like we could see some, I don't, don't want to say potential, but we had, you know, good games like me, Hunter, like Nexus is playing also really good. Uh, I think he surprised most of the people as well, and I'm also proud of him. But I think it's mostly down to me and Emma. Like we just have to find our group again. Uh, we have like good games here and there, but just has to be more consistent in my opinion and uh, that's probably one of the reasons why we struggle against some of the opponents that we shouldn't have but uh, what's the reason behind it I don't really know maybe it's a confidence we maybe we just need more uh, like more good games in a row in order to overcome it but uh, yeah I mean we are definitely not happy about it but we are do doing everything in our power to to overcome it yeah probably if you would know the answer you would just take care of it, but if you don't really know, you can only guess and like, try different things. But right now, you are going to play against Heroic, and so far, also they're kind of like a team that maybe like when it comes to Nikodos, or when you test us, like a performance that goes here, up and down. Like, How exactly is the team going to approach this series? You're going to play your own game? <laughs> Standard one? Yeah, that's a pretty casual answer, but uh, no, I think uh, they're very hungry for a uh, playoffs appearance. I think they haven't managed to go to playoffs since the start of the year or since they created this roster. So I think they're definitely hungry and they want to they wanna get there. But uh, when it comes to us, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't want to say we just need to play our game because our game sometimes is not even great. So uh, we just need to find ourselves somehow a bit more and be a bit more stable team overall. There's a lot of up, ups and downs, good maps, bad maps terrible maps from time to time but uh, overall uh, we had a good preparation just before the major and uh, we, I just hope that this is all uh, has been a learning lesson that we are just improving as a team and that at some point we're going to hit our peak and uh, maybe it's going to start from today. And you just mentioned that they are hungry. What about G2? Is G2 hungry for trophies and playoffs appearances? I mean yeah, we are definitely okay, they are loud as well but uh, no, we are definitely hungry. We want to like play on the on this stage. I think we have a lot of Chinese fans, and we are going to do everything in our power to to secure it. But I'm just saying, like they, they, because they didn't make it to playoffs, I think they are going to be really like you know maybe a bit more loud. But we need to just make sure that we match the energy, and uh, we will do that for sure. We want to get to the stage. We want to we want to lead the trophies as well. And uh, but overall, hoping for a good game. All right then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, a little bit to unpack there from the Nico side. Can we can we do like a vibe check on that interview? Like okay. did, did you do you feel what I was feeling? You you started this segment talking about rumors and sounds and noise around the G2 camp and I I cannot shake that feeling of uncertainty. When we talk to G2, when we mention G2, is that's a team of course on a good day can peak. I'm never going to take that away from them and God knows when they step on the stage, you have to be careful, you have to be mindful of them. But right now, I don't even know if they want to be together, one, are going to be together, two, what's going to happen in the near future. It's very confusing, and that's an energy that I cannot really pinpoint. Yeah, and you know, finishing third, fourth at the major, it's not like necessarily... It's not bad at all. It's not the end of the world, right? You know, but it does kind of beg that question, you know, sometimes, where's the world beating G2 that we were sort of promised? Uh, you know, they had a great showing at the AMA, as Jacob might say. Uh, but yeah, as, as you can see right here, this is the result. This yeah. is what they have to show for, right? I mean, it's been pretty slow going, hasn't it? But then again, like when you consider quote unquote slow going, it's like you're still top six in the world. You're still top four in the world. Like that's really not that bad on paper. I just think the thing is the expectation is so high for this roster and we still haven't seen them at their peak. And that's what people are really looking for, especially obviously with that JKS change, uh, of course. especially from those of us who are coming from down under, you know, we want to see better. We want to see that actually coming into play and being worth it, but uh, hasn't really come together yet. And in some ways, uh, yeah, that's that's 
a whole thing by itself. Like, you could go all the way back and just say, yeah, these things might have set them back a little ways. However, when it comes to playing against Heroic, it isn't necessarily being a setback, right? Like, we have a pretty good track record as far as G2 is sure. concerned. We're talking about Katowice. Of course, I mean, uh, the, the matchup, the head-to-head -head heavily in favor of G2, uh, that was Katowice, of course, 20, uh, 24. Um, four maps to one overall, they've played twice. And for the funny story, they played in this very moment or in very stage of the group stage, which is lower bracket final, fighting for that quarterfinal berth. And G2 uh, made relatively light work at the time. That was the 2-0. So listen, the matchup is in their favor. I do think that G2 is a better team. Uh, I think that Heroic now have sort of, they've lived the short honeymoon period they had when they put the roster together in Katowice. They beat Vitality, they beat Game Religion, took everybody by surprise. And now they're a bit back on earth in some sort of ways. The victory versus Furia was very meaningful to them. It was very meaningful to Kixon as well as a leader to establish himself with that roster. But G2 might just be a, a step too high. So let's do it this way. We look at Heroic and we kind of examine this other side here and we kind of put some highlights here on, on Nikodos just the other day. You know, we wanted to see his impact within the server. So have we gotten that? Are, do you feel fulfilled, Jake? Jordan. I don't know. I don't know that it's for Jacob on the mind. Well, that's a that's a bigger question. Come on, let's not get into that one. But I tell you what, as far as Nikodos has been concerned, I don't know that he's necessarily had that impact in the server that maybe you would want from an Orpa. And I guess the issue is, you know, it's no better time than now to kind of bring that to the table. But you're having to do it against Monacy, and Monacy's been, I mean, see. Come Everybody on! knows there's no need to kind of continue to add accolades to his name. Which is the craziest thing. You look back at that major, right? You look at the stats across seven maps. This guy is leading the stats, which is nuts when they only play six, technically, right? Uh, currently in CS2, I think people agree that only really Donk holds the candle to Monacy. Yep. That, that's the current state. I don't think there's any other player that is more in shape, in form, or better uh, than the two names we've mentioned. Now, what really is problematic about Nikodos is that, sure, on one hand, you would say a lot of snipers would pay in comparison of Monacy, and that graphic is obviously unfair to whoever is being matched. But the issue is when you consider the numbers in isolation, they are already problematic. <laughs> yeah, They already are problematic. And it's uh, an area of the, the Counter-Strike that they don't really have to play with. They cannot really rely on that AWP finding opening kills, punishing the aggro moves from G2. It's really going to be Monacy dictating whatever long range duels happen. He's the one that's going to have his number figured out. It's going to be, you know, it's always entertaining to watch. Don't oh, he's get me wrong. I really, hella entertaining. really love watching the guy play Counter Strike. So, in doing so, we need to know where we're going to be playing Counter Strike. In the three maps, potentially, where do we end up here? Hmm, this will be an interesting one. Um, I think for me, obviously, you'd be looking toward a nuke initially to come through from G2. You, 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 yeah. But uh, Ancient for Heroic, I actually don't mind. I think there was there a few options, it. but um, yeah, Ancient Nuke, that, that doesn't seem too, too surprising to me. I think what's more interesting is actually what's this third map going to be. I like that ban from Heroic. I think Anubis, that's a scary one to go toward against G2. Honestly, yeah. very, very scary on that map. So Ooh. I was expecting Vertigo, and that's what we get. And uh, look, Ancient Nuke, Vertigo, I feel is the way that it made sense. But I don't know that that necessarily is going to be great news for Heroic anyway. I mean, G2 feel comfortable on these maps anyway. And the thing is... You trust in, you trust in G2's Ancient? I, I feel like on the CT side, it can be a little complicated. It is one of the maps where Nico has been silenced at times. Not exactly in, in a position to shine too, too much. You know, having to be playing on the B side over there. I think the thing is, for me, like, obviously, when we look at G2, they're uh, a team that's kind of comfortable across the board. I think they're going to be good enough in this matchup to sort of find their feet regardless. And even if it doesn't come together on Ancient, I'd still look at them to make the series happen in that reverse sweep fashion. And I think Nukes are a great platform to build off going into Vertigo, which they've also already beaten Heroic on this year. So uh, I'd say they feel pretty comfortable with the way that that, uh, that veto has played out. Mm -hmm. I'm not too disappointed as far as G2 is Look, concerned. I think past the maps, a, a term, like a buzzword I've been we've been using a lot here in Chengdu is hunger. Like the hunger for teams. And of course you can make the case that Heroic, which we have on camera right now, are hungry to make that first playoff, to find success, proof of concept of their lineup. But I would argue that if you are G2, the playoffs at the Major is not something that is supposed to satiate you. Like mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not supposed to have enough with it. We know the circumstances, we know what happened against VP as well. We know that prior to that, success hasn't exactly been around the corner. I think doubts are probably creeping in inside and outside of that project as well. So you are looking for wins. The wins when they mean way more than just, oh, they've made another playoff. It's about, hey, do we actually see a future together? Like, is that still on the cards? Jordan said the word reverse sweep, which, uh, you know, maybe. We'll find out. Uh, where does your hat lie, Maniac? 
Uh, I, I have G2, personally. I okay. have G2 in this series. Yeah, I, I don't think that Heroic is equipped currently to deal with G2. That w it would require another performance from uh, from Hunter and Nico, probably again, to open a conversation. And uh, I, I trust in the man on the screen right there. Trust yeah. in the man, trust in the process, and trust that this is a very, very important game with all things considered. That's right, with it being the last day of the group stage, we do get to send somebody home right here, and then someone gets to survive to the weekend. So, G2 versus Heroic. We're going to be looking at Ancient, the nuke guaranteed Vertigo should we need it. G2 with that CT-sided start on Ancient. Let's see how this one unfolds. Your storytellers this evening are none other than the major finalists themselves, Harry and Hugo. G2 want more. Playoffs is not enough. Championships and trophies are the goals. But right now, even group stage is in question. It's Heroic on the other side. G2 did it twice at Katowice, Harry. Twice over Heroic in this very matchup for the quarterfinals will bust. But still, this roster continues to make us ask questions. Can, can Heroic on the other side play up to the level today and find an upset victory into playoffs? This is the final game of the group stage here at IEM Chengdu. Yeah, with everything to play for, you want to bring your A game from round one and a pistol underway. You already have G2 fanning out with a triple mid lean early. They dismantle that and go into a more standard 2-2-1. But they're going to be ready for this A hit regardless. Heroic looking to move up through main. Hunter and Nexa lie in wait. Swing out from Nexa. It's just the one and done. Hunter trying to hold the line here as he darts out through the smoke. Will get found and will get dealt with. Heroic have found themselves with a bomb plant. Oh, through the smoke as well. Keekson getting some good control in this post plant. On the fade. Monas, you got to be careful. Two players here. Can he snipe one out? Yes, he can. But Kixon gets aggressive. Hunting down this kill. Nico just trying to buy time for Hooksy to move in. Kixon's dodging death for a moment. Oh, the last bullet doesn't connect. And he turns. Nico just swings. That's G2 with a pistol. I'm loving this new smoke we're seeing. The molly in front of the smoke is becoming such a problem that CTs are even throwing, or sorry, Ts are even throwing a smoke for CT that lands behind the default box right here for Hunter, meaning he has to swing out to take a fight. He dies after one, but one is enough from him and Nexa. And G2 clean up that pistol. Yeah, me and you were talking before this. I really wanted Heroic to hit the B site in that pistol round, man. G2 as a team, they love a double A stack over, over in these pistol rounds. Very common start to their pistols. At least seem like Heroic are aware, right? Not mollying the same position Nexa always plays on these pistol rounds, which is that big box. Nexa on these difficult solo sites. Whoa! Oh dear. Get owned. Hooksy so bad, man. Why did, he, <laughs> why did he stand there and let Tessa's go? <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Oh, that's, yeah, that's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. Nexa has hit a golden timing here. Or has he? Oh, he has. Come on. I mean, he doesn't know they're there. Though. Yeah, but... This could be very unlucky. Because even when he kills the bomb coming in, th he's, th he'll die. He'll get traded. So this is just one, right? There it is. Bomb dropped. He's like, oh, they're coming in main now. Look, they're behind you. Pop out into the site. Modesty with an ugly spray. It connects into the wall. And Hunter, they're already crossed, so not much he can do. He oh, even the nade. Nothing going right here for G2 in this round. Sometimes it works against you. Bomb planted and Heroic find their force by. Surely. Yeah, G2 aren't going for this. This round just has like a bad omen. Just a bad vibe about it. It yeah. started with a jump shot. Nexa gets timing the main. They miss the nade on the players crossing. Monacy with spray. That's just too many signs that this one wasn't meant to be. Check it. Bop. What? He, he, he fired one bullet. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> One bullet, Harry. <laughs> Give it. Bop. And it's perfect. Right where the crosshair was. 100% accurate. What does he know that we don't? Terrorists win. Okay.
Okay, Nerds getting allowed to start. Nerds is a requirement for this game. Going to need him to step up against G2. He's had very important matches where he's gone completely silent and that's not done Heroic any favors, but the peak of this player is undeniable. Wow, timeout used very early. Almost shockingly A detilter, early. maybe. Yeah. Guys, it's fine. Guys, it's fine. Well, I think Taz has had a very good job of like keeping a good read over these guys, keeping everyone in check. G2 are pretty liberal with their pauses. Sure. And clearly, out of all the ways it could have started, that is maybe the worst. That is, yeah, definitely the worst, yeah. All right, here we go. Two rifles, Nexa on an SMG. And Heroic yeah. with the, yeah. No, I was going to say, you know, also when you're coming in to try and like force buy back like this around the saved guns, you want to have an idea. You want to have a game plan to enact on. You can't just default in this round. So they will kind of default in this round. A 2-1-2 two -two to open up, but eventually starting to lean. Oh, I was going to say more players back over towards B, but that's not the case, actually. Nico's left here all alone, and everyone from Heroic is coming his way. So Nico has got to make a stand. Ugh. Good for the first two. Late trade from Nerds. That at least gets Heroic in. But Nerds has got this bomb. There's a certain limit to how aggressive he can be, and realizing that will be his downfall. Going back oh, in, God. he falls out of the round. G2 trying to cook something up here on this force buy. Kicks and team killing him in the process. That will slow everything down, which buys time for Hooksy on the flank. Kicks has been spotted. He's now cornered. Oh, and Monacy just swings out with the clean shot this time. It's just Nico Dolls. He made it up ramp, but how much further? monacy has got that cross. He spots him. And Nico Dolls, 1v3, feeling undoable here. And Monacy just ends it. Hooksy's got <laughs> Hooksy's got something to say this time. That was ugly spacing for Heroic. It felt like one of those rounds where everyone is throwing nades and so no one is entering. Look at like good kills from Nico, but they couldn't have been made easier by the delayed swings of Heroic. And Monacy just playing his timing peaks, nailing them. We have Heroic rebuy, of course. And maybe a speedier round in middle attempted. They smoke the molly. Ooh. Honestly, re aggro across in the middle. I'm trying to keep them guessing, but he's got low ammo in this M4. Now, no ammo in this M4. They're not able to pressure him yet, but that molly forces him to commit out wide. And oh. Hunter can't hold the line. Tapped out back in red. Heroic want their revenge, and they want it now. This one's off to a rip-roaring start. Nico going to try to take up ownership of middle. But this splits the defense 1-1 one, one across the map for G2. Great call for Heroic to just stop. Look at them on the mini-map. They're in a line. They've got every single position covered. So if G2 try and make any info plays, they're going to find nothing but death. No, it actually makes a step, but it's all a fake. And that's... Oh, Nex is in trouble here because in the back of his mind, he thinks he's being flanked. How long does he hold this? Oh, Nico gets that info middle, but there's three players, or two here, rather. Nico can at least stop Shush from escaping. Here's the thing, that Shush is just kind of wasting time yeah. right now, right? Like, Nico's hanging around because he knows that this fight is too good of an opportunity to miss. You've got to play a trap. At the same time, he's now, like, not helping anywhere else, right? And so suddenly, Hooksy left with a lot of responsibility. And I like that Nico actually just kind of draws the line in the sand there. He up and leaves. He decides, all right, look, I can waste all the time in the world anchor down on this one fight in middle or I can go and help out and he will get here in time to lend a helping hand to Hooksy who will end up needing it two kills from the captain oh, Nico no. overran and so that's the plant secure with a hat trick from Nertz it's all left on Nexa that hurts for Nico one bullet would have made this round a reality it still can be Nexa instant kill Nertz is low gets time to reposition playing for the swing playing for the kill playing for the round and he takes it by force Four kills from Nerds, the Scream sent back, and Heroic pick up that anti-eco or anti-force by round. 
I say anti, actually. They lost the previous one. They were, it's know. forced by wars, man. Yeah, We're every, in everyone's this. buying right now, except G2. Surely they call it off. I say that, you already see them purchasing up, risking it all. They're going to keep doing this until someone takes that two in a row, especially with it coming down to a 1v1, right? Like, you, yeah. you want to try and capitalize on their weak money, and hell, everyone that's forcing is one so far. This is the weakest one yet for G2 now, so it's not ideal. Great shots from Nerds. Ooh. Blanket of fire. Shush taking A main. And we have a heavy setup on A. It's just Nico's Deeks. Ooh. Late mid take is perfect against the limitations that G2 have in this round. Running dry on util now, just this Molly on Monacy. And Hiroki going for a B group anyway. Eco. Deeg would go a long way here. 40 seconds left. It looked like they were going to give Nerds a bit of room to go and explore, but he will just rejoin the rest of the pack and see, so, yeah, they are going to follow through on this B play. Second volley of Util coming out now, and Nico's got to deliver Ooh. with this Deeg, or else it's a oh. done deal. One connect. Any more from Nico would be so valuable to G2 with the rest of the squad far and away. It's left the chance, and smoke spam for Shush. Shush is kind of scary on this B site when it comes to smoke uh. spamming. Just thinking back to that game yesterday versus the Fury. Bangs. Yeah. So this one's written off. The force buy for G2 doesn't pan out, but if they're able to keep players alive, they essentially get another go at it in the next. Without that same option to reset, that's the only annoying part. Someone needs to help him here. They have to exit. Oh, it's a mess. There's a double kill here. Hunter, take it. While well, you got it, the nade will certainly help. Okay, they just jump him down. And they will be fine and dandy here. Maybe not Shush. Oh, just about. <laughs> Can he keep this up all game, do you think? It's every round. They've finally broken the money, though. There is a reason to cheer for Heroic, because G2 save a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of nothing. And Heroic now control the game on this T side of their map pick. Yeah, something that's really, you know, at least getting me excited in the early game here is that Nerds is looking both confident and like he's got the aim to back it up, right? He's coming to this looking pretty warm as Nerds, and I think there are a few players that heroic success is kind of bound to. Yeah. I look at Tessas and Shush as like pillars of consistency. And so outside of that, right, your X Factor players is very much Nerds, kind of goes without saying. And I also think Nikodos, who's a bit, you know, hot and cold at times. Definitely if the streakiest. You, yeah, if you if you get one of those two having a good game around your consistent pieces, heroic get real deadly real quickly. And so with Nerds giving us the goods to open this one up, that bodes well for heroic. And see if he can keep that up across the series. It does feel like the ceiling is high for this team, right? And they have a couple of legit wins in their pocket as a new roster, but. Still yet to make a real run in a tournament. One over G2 now would be pretty perfect. Look at this play. Kixon's crept in. He's telling his team to get grouped. He's not wait, he's not going for it. He wants everything. He wants the glory as he knifes Monacy and finds Nico on long. There's still a cave player, but it's only a 5-7. What could go wrong as Nexa drops that bomb? Arms up, armored up, and has 30 seconds to make this round weird. That's ugly. Needed that kill, and so it will fall the way of Heroic. Four to two. Nice play for Kicks and getting behind G2 and making the money while he does. I mean, Nerds might be the, the guy left to his own devices in Lurks a lot, but Kicksan is not immune to finding little timings himself. He does like this. Cheeky. 
Even with how that knife kill comes in, that gets G2 like paranoid about gaps that physically didn't exist. He just found a route up through the ramp, but it looks like he came from the red room. So they're left very confused at the end of that round. Oh, they missed oh, it. Ah, attempt at the, the bro, the molly there. They landed it earlier. So we'll give them that. G2 wanting to fight down the ramp again. They're walking down. That smoke should make it very clear. Nice molly in, but they're already ahead of it. It gives Tessa's warning. He's looking nowhere. Eco will catch that kill. Yeah, I guess, you know, to leap to Tessa's defense, because I'm like his lawyer or something, they, they, they don't have mid control, right? So could be paranoid that with that smoke coming down from the door, he's going to get swung on from both. He's trying to tuck in and obscure himself from ramp. But yeah, you know, you're dead on. He should have... Should have had forewarning to be looking there. It's just he didn't really feel safe at any at any angle on that B push. So wow. a little awkward as he arrives a second late. Util up and over now into this A site for Heroic. And so once more, it's this hold of Hunter and Nexa left to withstand it. Oh, this smoke did land perfectly though. He can still fight over right side. Nexa repositions, jumps up on the break. And well, he'll go down after one. Hunter can hide out. He doesn't need to commit to this, but he drops the AWP. A nice frag to put this in uh, easy position for G2 to close, and Hunter just takes every single fight. Gets the MAC-10, it is no problem. G2 back on the board. Going to have a lot of traded rounds in this series, it feels like. While well, teams feel each other out. Hunter's a big guy to look out for in this game because he has been... I'm sure Nico has been all the talk of the town in terms of underwhelming in CS2, but Hunter is right by his side in that vein. The big game player, yeah. and we have no time to wait until this stage. Even when we do, he hasn't been there, so he needs to step up in this matchup alongside Nico. Nexa, that'll do nicely. Double spam on the smoke push. Gets into an awkward spot now with the bomb, very far removed, right? Shush all the way down over towards elbow, left here alone. And he's terrified that even if he peels away for a moment, G2 could come pushing in. He will have to leave eventually, but likely just going to hold till that smoke fades before he gets moving. And so G2 going to a retake setup over here at B. Yeah, aside from that one whiff, this is a great angle for Nico. And he's got Hooksy taking his first contact, so for the most part, this should be G2 at least thinning the herd on the push. There are two smokes if Heroic wanted to run some sort of execute. I mean, that's the thing. G2 are giving them the room to get into the site, right, and, and actually plant the bomb if the smokes come down. They're set up to retake here and just play the 5v3 out. It's if Heroic decide to go contact in this moment that Nico is suddenly given an open runway to try and end the round. And yeah. Hooksy playing this kind of bait and switch with him. It's perfect. Going to be able to swing out after contact is taken. And they will combine to knock all of Heroic out of the round. Ooh. 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 Nico is a passion. That's what I want to hear, Harry. Yeah, give me some of that sauce. Yeah, go on, light it up. And I mean, like you were saying, that's a perfect setup considering Hero don't execute their, their contact there. They don't want G2 with full warning or early rotates. Also, they want to catch, you know, G2 player in the site, in the cubby, on default, you know, on a timing who's looking cave, looking back. But no, G2 are fully stacked. They're, they're pa playing passive angles. Hooksy setting up for Nico, and they combine very well though with three players. So could not have gone worse for Heroic, who are now on a full eco and just chatting it through, looking at their notes. Bit of revision before the exam. At least Heroic have done their prep. Like I said, they've already lost this game twice over at Katowice to G2. And their opening and closing game of the tournament. But Ancient was not a part of that match. You know, to revisit what you were saying earlier on the hunter line of inquiry right i think one of the reasons why nico draws a lot more attention in that conversation is because he is you know and was the, the the kind of best rifler towards the end of go he was the guy with the highest ceiling out of the two of them um but i think it's rightfully deserved that some of that criticism is now shifting on a hunter as well because 
There's no doubt that you haven't seen, at least with Nico, like, sure, it's infrequent, but you've seen glimmers of, like, he's still in there somewhere. You just got to get through all the all the rust first, yeah. you know? Like, But I, I feel like Hunter's had some pretty consistently weak performances. Shows the bomb. All the way through the donut. It's just the Glock, so it shouldn't get exciting. And Nexa makes quick work of it. With a bit of help from Hunter, the lead now taken by this G2 squad. G2 are very good on anti-ecos, like proper anti-ecos. Don't let those rounds get out of control often. You laughed at that. Yeah, I'm no, just because it's like... why I'm wrong. Yeah, they don't often lose to Glocks. I think that's, <laughs> I mean, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, know? yeah, that is a good thing. There are teams that are... Short, Furia, and then <laughs> the list really ends there, you know? <laughs> Liquid, maybe? Um, yeah, sure. I shouldn't be celebrating them for that. Oh. Also, we were saying Nikodos, sometimes a bit streaky. Yeah. 0-9 to open up the map. Ooh, lost streak. Minus 25. Nine times over. Let's see if he can get back in. No AWP. No problem. This guy's a solid rifle. Yeah, I actually read, read a take that he's a, a rifler laughing as an author. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, he's had great games as all, but like he's also... Oh my God, these mollies. Like, sometimes he's one of those players who you'll, you'll see, put down your pick up an AK and, like, quad entry, and you're like, well, just do that. Let's see, though, because G2 have put a lot of pressure on this round. The spam, the nades, they've kept Heroic humble outside of the B site. Falling back to a passive setup, nerd to middle, but he won't get anything here with Monacy on the cross. It's nice and comfortable for G2. They can afford to play 3B. Nexa is floating, but... River leads him back to the B site. Downstream, Hooksy drops his smoke on a jiggle. Rook trying to rope their way with a bit of damage. Force out the nades from this B bomb site, but still a smoke remains. Inside Fortessa has got to be careful. This is a dead easy double hooksy and putting them in boxes. And there's the help from Nexa. Nicely done for G2. Oh, they are slaughtering them. Any more? Nexa. Oh, he does fall to kick some, but there's a third man there. And a confident G2 right now picking up steam with four rounds in a row. And next to top in the charts, you know, I think you want to talk some positives for G2 in terms of their rifles. The uptick in form that we've had at Anexa since he moved into this squad has been very notable. I think he's one of the key reasons why G2 have actually been able to, to keep themselves competitive. You know, there's another huge one in there, obviously, that goes without saying, and that's Monacy. But, uh, ooh, fast B play here. So this B site's going to get tested with Hooksy dead after one. Bam. Nico won't be able to stop that plan. Instead, focuses his attention down the ramp. And in oh. comes Hunter. Cleanly done. Ouch. Can't quite finish Kicksan. He's got another chance at a clutch here. Oh, oh another Careful. dink down range. Nexa can't get ahead of himself. Full mates. He will need help from Monacy. Smoke on the bomb. And Nexa's just sticking it. Full faith in Monacy. Monacy won't miss this shot no. and as kick sand tries to come through it's denied so well handled on a round that could have very quickly got out of control there those are the ones that can be really tricky to contain and deal with right heroic kind of playing like they have nothing to lose they're only on tech nines so they're real confident they're in your face and the g2's credit they do a solid job of only letting that first player get through. Everyone else, the entire round was just trapped at ramp. Yeah, Hunter's hitting heads right now. Had a big 3k on A. Comes in with two more here. It's been part of these triple B setups sometimes. As has Nexa. It's a, uh, you know, numerous B players here. The heroic can't seem to break through.
but getting Hooksy logged back in and locked in. He's just composing a fire tweet, actually, I heard. Yeah? What about? I don't know. He's going to retweet the jump shot quickly. <laughs> And caption it like just hooksy things or something like that. 10k likes. You do manage his social media, so it's a good idea. Actually, I don't want to take credit for that. Let me see. How often does he even tweet? Yeah, who cares? Who cares? That's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Seven to four. And G2, this is, a this is a good game. It's a good game from G2. Hero can't get a handle on it. They won the early game with the those economy rounds, winning winning their force buy, winning another force buy, putting G2 on pistols, and ever since G2 have had the big guns, Harry, they've come through with a streak of five. So looking to make it eight four at the half. Nick Dawes will go a T side without an orb. Yeah, it's kind of sick, honestly, for G2 that they're in this position without Monacy really doing anything thus far, right? Like, he was involved in locking out that, that attempt at the kick sand clutch. He's had a couple of kills over towards middle, but it's not like one of these games where we're sitting here going, oh, thank God Monacy's here for G2 or else they would nah, be done. You there. know, like, this is, this is a team effort right now. And so a good time to get mileage out of Nexa, Nico, and Hunter. I think in a way, Heroica quite lucky that Monacy Zorp hasn't been hyper-involved as well, what with Nikodos being so quiet. Yeah, finally got his first kill. Yeah, that was in the little Tech 9 rush, I think. No, no, it wasn't. When was it? It was. You it were was? Believe oh, yourself. I should have just believed. Killed Nico. Nico v Nico. All right, Hooksy's back in. There's the there's the headline. Good news. As the G2 captain takes to the server again. His kick sound looked like he's playing. He's like really focused in that moment. Football manager. Yeah. <laughs> he just tapped out. <laughs> he's taken every bit. He's taken Dortmund to the Premier Leagues. <laughs> here we are. A little timeout called in <laughs> for heroic on the back of that tech pause. Yeah, they a, need to try and come up with solutions here. Final round of the half coming up, and it, it has been a, a long time since heroic last posted around. Timeout's a requirement. It doesn't scream that Heroic is stressed. It just screams that they want to make the most of this last round. And even though they probably wouldn't have called it without the tech, that little break in communication, they want to get back on it. They want to make sure they're strapped in. And five rounds on the T side would be decent. They'd be so, you know, solid for Heroic. So can they put it together? Again, Orpless. But that's really by choice. They've had chances. Even this round, they could have got it. So... I want to see maybe a late mid take again for Heroic. G2 are harassing a lot on B lane with their Molotovs, doing great work there. G2 think it's a mid take. They start three strong. Monacy supporting flashes as that Brolin Molly. It will sort of land, but Hooksy's already through it. Very aggressive in cave. There's Nerds popping through the mid smoke that goes a little deep. Alexa loses his head. Good timing on Hooksy's smoke, but Tessas will not be fearful of him. He knows he has him trapped. And takes the kill as well. Heroic cooking with gas now. Five on three. Just got a group. Let Nerds lurk. Oh, dead though. Up in red. Finished off by Hunter. Good diversion of G2 to go and clear out the mid man, but a missed shot from Monacy, and he can't recover on the Deagle. Oh, ooh. -hoo -hoo. He burns alive nice. with Nico dead over towards B. Heroic. That pause might have been worth it after all. They're staring at five. And it's only Monacy that stands in their way, wounded and hurting. Bomb plant coming in. There's no hope for G2 here. Monacy, a dead man as he moves up the long side. First shot might connect. No chance. But he still has so much more to do. And Heroic, well and truly set up in these post plants. You've got a trade available from Kixan. 
Monacy might seem aware of Tessez, but that shot sails past, and Heroic's pause is worthwhile as they pick up one more round to close out their T side. Hey future pros, knowing some B smokes on Ancient can lead to success, so let's look at the classic short smoke. To throw this, stand in the doorway in the middle of this section. Aim at the tip of this leaf. Then throw the smoke. Pretty easy to be honest. From the same spot, you can also molly the pillar by aiming at the gap between the plant and the wall. A very easy but effective combo. G2 gunning for the playoff spot, the last playoff spot available here at IEM Chengdu in Group A. They fight Heroic. They already beat twice back at Caddo and look to make that a third, a hat trick here on Ancient. It is Heroic's map pick after all, but G2 lead the way by two rounds. It's a close game. It's not really the Monacy show though, as you were saying. We're getting kind yeah. of everyone else. It's a, it's a nice look from G2. One of the most standard openings for Heroic here is that they don't actually elect to have anyone over towards this A site, and G2 look to use that in their pistol. On the flip side, good bulk of G2's pistol rounds like to be a little bit of lane control, and so it seems like Heroic tried to play around that fact by jumping up fast down in middle. And as a result, they never meet G2 till the A site's already lost. That's yeah, a really hard situation to win. Kixon has the bare minimum smoke kit, but it rests on that first fight. And he is modestly to come jumping around the corner. There's the util dropped and the triple setup wins out for G2. There's a fourth man. Does respond. Nikidos has to do so much more though. 
Getting that kid off. They clear the top boost. The tap works. Hunter gets back into safety. And Nikodos can smoke kit. Hunter forced to swing. And Nikodos baits him out. He doesn't even go for the tap. Hunter just thinks that smoke is enough. Woo! Okay. Everyone's flaming today. Everyone is flaming. And that's a great recovery round for Nikodos, who doubles his kills in the pistol, wins a crucial 1v1, and Hunter falls for it, despite a pretty perfect game from Hunter. Oh, clean shots. You get why Hunter swings there. It was pre-tap. It is a mistake, but if Nikodos taps, it's the, it's the fear of, you know, you don't know if he's sticking. He's inside of the smoke. It's a bit of luck. Tries to catch him moving yeah. towards the bomb. No, I think, if anything, it's just well played for Nikodos, someone whose confidence could have been put into question after that first yeah. half. He, plays, he, that, he plays that clutch very, very well. He's back. But victory could be short-lived if G2 would get, would get straight back to work here. And Force Buy comes in. They've got control over here at B, and they even managed to trade out Tessez back in the cave. With long control taken, this should be a really tricky retake. Smoke comes out for Heroic. That gives them kind of a little channel to work between up and a short. Nico tries to plug that hole, but ends up falling to other Nico. And now Hunter, 1v2. Where have I seen this before? And once again, Nikodos is going to put a stop to him in that clutch. Um, you just feel like, you know, Nico. It's so hard watching him play sometimes because he goes for these fights that any other player probably shouldn't go for, but you trust Nico, you trust his aim, you trust that he can win it, and then he doesn't. Like, he gets smoked out long. He can play the, oh, it's an open bomb. He has a crossfire between him and Hunter. He knows they have to push short, and so with that logic, he just fights them. But when it doesn't work, it looks silly. And he leaves Hunter in an awkward spot who has to play aggressive because he doesn't have the gun for it. So. You just wonder, if Nico played that smoke, if he stayed long, lets Hunter play first, that's probably G2's round, man. But he should win those fights, and that's why it's so hard to watch Nico right now sometimes. He spent years winning those fights. Okay, Heroic. They actually start a man up for a change. They deal with this A rush. Shush gives it up. Oh. It's a weird smoke, but it might give him some room. It bounces strangely, and Modesty punishes. Nika Dolls drops that bomb. He goes through the smoke, almost a second onto Nexa from Nerds. It's trades back and forth. Who is comfortable? The answer is no one in this round, and so Heroic will keep the discomfort, keep the pressure on. Yeah, swinging out from spawn. They still don't know about Kicksan here. Nico is going to have to hit the flick, and it's a lot of damage, but not the killing blow. They know he's in Temple. And they'll deal with him easily. Let go! No! <laughs> Fucking bots, man! <laughs> <laughs> you need a new line, Nerds. You need a new line, but I do love the energy. it has been doing that since round two. Keeping it up. G2. It's an awkward round to lose where Heroic just throw themselves at them pre-plant, during plant. And we never make it to post plant. That was a 7 5. Now recovery all the rounds for heroic. Did G2 have a response? Oh, buying here? Oh my goodness. For real? Yeah, they're, they're still damage trying. Damage is on, They're but... still trying to capitalize from that early damage in the yeah. second round, right? That's been what they've been chasing. That. that Delayed gratification here, but for G2, it does mean they're coming into these first few rounds with not much to go off of. They can chase the dragon, Harry, but they're going to keep drawing and losing blood. Round by round, relying on barely rifles. Three Galils out mid with pace. Nerds allows it. Fill red. That leaves Donut to A very open. Oh, Hooksy, what a great play. He's heard Nurse's rotation. He's gone through his own smoke into Donut, but they're still committing B right now. Maybe over committing. Tess says they want to trap him here. They want to finish him off. He somehow survives the cross. But Hooksy the whole time has got to be calling. Guys, I have space. And that he does inside a Donut on a near empty A site. 
Bomb could get caught right here, oh, right now. It's just has gone aggressive up three main. And they don't have this real estate, so Nexa had to be considering it. There's just too many uh, variables there for Nexa. He's even paranoid about mid. Ooksy's backstab. Well, it nets them that kill. They've got to go back and get the bomb. Luckily enough, Hunter's up for that task. And so if Ooksy could have held the line, there might have been a path to redemption for G2 in this round. It's dead. With him toppled. Hunter left in another unwinnable clutch. They know. A shot, but close player. It's nerds. No easy beast. What have you got to say about that one, nerds? Cool and calm as he walks it over the line again. That's, yeah. Felt like a very delayed back to A for G2 after Hooksy get all that, gets all that space. Felt like he had the read. It was a solo A player in that round. Off of Nertz's info. G2 just get hung up at B and even the bomb rotates solo. It's just like a round where you're scratching your head when you lose. And G2, they buy again. It's like the best nade you could possibly throw. Oh my god. Heroic. Not good damage with the nade, sure, but they will still be tested here. It's nice. a contact play from Nico out towards ramp. There and they is. get both the kills from it. Tess says it's time to shine. And it's only the one and done. Heroic called the save immediately. That's the Nico we know and love, Harry. That's what we want to see. Contact rifle up ramp with no util. Double entry. Back to business for G2. Not always reproducible, but when it happens, it saves G2 from this scary economical situation of just buying every round. Finally got something to work with. Yeah, I mean, it's always a treat watching Nika go for those contact plays, right? You just can't run them every round. That's the shame of it. Come on, let's go. Yeah, Nico. Come on, let's go. That's nice. He's believing in himself. <laughs> he and he's said, right. <laughs> if I had Galil, I lose the round. He's right. If he had a Galil, he would have yeah, lost the that's round. That's why you give Nico the AK. Is there a question about that? That's why, of course, they have put Hooksy on the Galil here. You want Hooksy to be the worst player on this team. Let's not delude ourselves. He should be the worst player on this team. That's a good thing, to a degree. You must be very happy right now, then, as he yeah. sits bottom of the board. Well, the reason I say it is because no, he's not always the worst player on the team, and that's a problem. That means the stars are not aligning. Look at this, though. Fast execute. They've got everyone here. It's 10 players in a tiny little pocket, and no one can stop the bomb. G2 put it down in the midst of the madness, the artillery raining in. On top of the boost, kicks and clears. Oh. Good spray control back. What's going on? 2v2. Everyone's fighting, and it's coming up in favor of G2. Nerds now needs a masterclass with no kit. Half ticked. He moves in. Grab the kit off the body here. Swing from main. Looking to come through for Monacy. A couple of jiggles. Waiting for Hooksy to take that contact. And now they hear Nerds. Oh. Monacy's clean with it. And that little pep talk, that little fist bump from Nico after the last round does Monacy a world of good. Breaking. He comes up big with a 3K. And with that, they break through Heroic. That is a, a wild round just across the board. He highlighted it. Ten players boxed into the site. Everyone spamming smokes. No one finding anything. And then suddenly all the kills happen in a second. You're not sure if you're winning or losing till the round is over. That's his pissed, man. We've seen the energy he's brought in. He wants to take this team to the playoffs. He's got a hero rifle, sending it in main. But oh, they line up. They were shooting Shush. Nerds just flies into the stream of bullets. And G2 like that, they should have won the round. Even if there was a stack here, there was nothing to play with. And G2 won't jump it either, which I respect. Cycle that gun out, guarantee this round. They don't know what they're walking into. G2 have restaked their claim 
on this map. Felt like Hurrah could woken up. But is it just early halves for Heroic? G2 looked to long the game out. Shouldn't be a problem here. This one's, this one's fine. Tessa's going to get chased down. And even though Kicksand's here, a dead man walking. That's G2 up in the lead. So they take a pretty clean round there to distance themselves from Heroic, who still aren't out of the woods in terms of their money. And it's a terrifying spot to be in this late in the game. Being faced with these positions where losing a round feels like you're giving up the next one as well. And because of that little, uh, you know, hero venture on Nerds in the last, his money is in a rough spot here at a key moment of the game. So even how they purchase, let alone what they do with it, is up for discussion here for Heroic. A timeout called in. See, Taz does not have as much to say. He just uh, wants G2 to keep cracking on with what they're doing. Doesn't feel that need to intervene right now. Yeah, does Nerds have to pay for his investment? Seems like it. No one willing to front the cost. Nico having a solid game. He's had like two awkward rounds. Everything else has been I mean, really nice. It was Nico who kind of kick-started this whole three-round streak that G2 are on when he contact walked up through the B ramp, right? Monacy 3K on that A hit in the 10-player A site fight. Closes that one too. He goes ahead of the smoke with the orb. Scared of a B push and for good reason. Got a couple of CTs crawling their way down. That smoke is so wide in front of the door. Nico looks like he wants to play inside of it. A risky move. And Heroic won't overcommit. They see the flash coming, they bounce. Look how much space G2 have got. They are about to crunch this A site. Wait, no one's looking. Do they realize? Heroic, no eyes on this one. Honestly, just gets a free flick as Shush caught last second on the turn. They might not check boost, but Nerds is clear from the backside. He was getting crunched, and Hooksy kills on a plate here. No steps made. He might walk in, but he still takes one more with him, and that's info. That's enough. That's a round for G2. Yeah, even getting out with the one there is is huge for, uh, for Hooksy. If three players managed to save here with a 2900 coming in, you would have still had rifles out on everyone in the next round. Instead, it's a really awkward decision. Like you can get you can get four rifles here, but you're not going to have a lot of util to back that up. Ooh. And even then, it's far from guaranteed. G2 are trying to hunt this a little. It's a good hunt for G2. They definitely should throw a player in here and have a look. A kill would make a difference. No doubt. And denied after one. There's still a trade. And maybe you cut your losses there. But nonetheless, G2, make it expensive. And Monacy might even drive that home. A tag. Oh, oh. Nika Doz is lucky to live. But G2 are just happy to be here. 11 rounds to the nine. Four rounds in a row. And they know they're not running into much here. It might have to be heroic giving up map point and playing for OT. G2 with their backs against the wall coming into this matchup. Out for redemption on Heroic's pick of Ancient. Hunter, insane rooting out through mid, all the way up into heaven already. Tessis plays ahead of this. On the left hand side, he's going to cross out. And so he's dodged, like all their attempts to pressure him back in cave. That's the gun removed as Monacy finds Nikodos. It's juggled forward onto Kicksand Shore. But at this point, G2 sat 5v4 up. Something would have to go really, really wrong. And heroic to find a way back in here. This is terrifying. The flash absolutely wrecks Tessez. It's a trade, but that feels like not enough at this point. Kicks, and they know, is the rifle on this B bomb site. G2 can make moves elsewhere. They're going to start to rotate that bomb around. Group Monacy and Hooksy. 
As G2 hold for re-aggression, knowing that Heroic kind of have to make a play if they were ever going to win this round. That's with two smokes available, but as soon as that one fades, they'll be close in main, ready to go. So there's a gamble here from Heroic, isn't there? As they start to move everyone away from B, they up and leave the site. And they just go join Nerds in defensive A, just in case G2 head this way. Ooh, you can't really change anything, but Nico's cleared B completely. They know they're going into a stack at the bare minimum. That's something. Oh dear, 5-7 shoes through one. Monacy got a clear close. Nerds can win this round, but Monacy pre-fires him. And Kixon can't stop the inevitable bomb going into the site. Just makes it back behind the boxes. And that was his chance. That was his one opportunity. Instead, death and destiny for G2. 12 rounds. It's one more buy for Heroic to stomach. Oh, Kixon could have won it there. Yeah, yeah. As you say, you know, you don't get much of a chance. Also, what a round out of Monacy here. Like, he yeah. was very aware oh. of exactly what was required there. You said it, Nico cleared out all of B. They knew they were going into the stack, and it's very well handled from Monacy. Oh. So heroic, can they keep this one alive? G2 just looking for the all-in A hit, and only Nertz resides there right now. No one saved this A site in this CT side for Heroic. It's been a bit of a problem piece, and again, Nertz is alone in this position. I don't think the exec is coming in. G2 go for the second volley of Util. This is the real deal. This is the knockout punch. Nerds uses his smoke, but the Molotov does expire on the CT one. Shush overwhelmed immediately at Nerds. This game, this map will live and die on his fight. They are boxing him in with an open plant. G2, it feels like nothing can stop this 13th round from coming in. This retake's really awkward. Kixan was still hanging around at B, waiting to see if they're getting lurked on. They are not, and so he's a very, very late rotate to rejoin his team here. They wait for him before they commit to this 4v5 for the map. See. And so that's like a lot of time oh. tick off this bomb. Random spam for Tessez starts it well, but there's so little time left to work with. Oh. They get all the kills, but they've got to get on it, and Nexa can't swing out and put a stop to it. That's why Heroic waited. That's what they were waiting for. Oh. They don't lose a single player past Shush. And so they go into that 4v5 retake. Things look awkward. They get out with everyone left standing. Wow, very well coordinated. Everyone knowing exactly what to clear. The random, oh, the random shot. It was one bullet. It was one bullet. It was barely aimed at that corner. Look, was that even a misclick? It could have been. Tessa's versus Hooksy has ended up being like an incredible head dead. He got yeah, the jumping tap. Absolute joke of a 1v1, like those two kills. Oh, but Monacy. That's how you want to start around if you're G2. And look, this time they don't wait. Nerds has taken up middle. And there is so much room on this A site for G2. Hooksy through the smoke. He will dive through. Nikodos is behind on heaven. Right now, they don't even know they've lost A. This smoke on Donut is about to make it pretty clear. Hooksy comes hunting. Nico Doz punishes. But again, we need another clutch retake round for Heroic. Oh, this is super deep already. And Monacy's moving into position as well, which only strengthens this spot from <laughs> Nexa. Stolen. Not even needed. And so now as Nerds waits back in the Donut, oh, he's got Nico Doz alongside him. The spam does not connect. And with a CT plant, there should be absolutely no way back into this for Heroic. It's looking done. Caught out of position with the opener landed from Monacy in middle. And this is a very good looking G2 that we're getting right now. Monacy top in the chart, sure, but Nico is right there behind him. And throughout the majority of this game, it was having to be Nico to find the rounds for G2. He keeps them in it long enough that the rest of them now get switched online. And as Nerds and Nikodos fall, G2 steal away the heroic pick of Ancient. Nuke waits up next, and G2, they can feel themselves moving closer and closer to those playoffs. Yeah, this might be a hateful matchup for Heroic. This could be the third time in a row that G2 have won this game in a crucial match. And now that we go to Nuke, it's a safe one for G2. Let's see if they can finish off the series.
conclusion of the first half, it was G2, and at the conclusion of the map, it is G2, but albeit heroic, make it very difficult. And by that, I mean everybody's fighting for a lifeline here in Do or Die Day on the last day of our groups. That being said, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters, everybody. We have one on our hands right now that it's got some sting to it. Yeah, it was a pretty intense match. It was uh, enjoyable to watch, I'm going to be real with you. And I do think, you mentioned first half, I think this is where the mission was accomplished for G2. This is where I could have imagined issues arising for the CT side. And I think they came up with pretty cool solutions. We're going to talk about it later as well. If you set up switches here and there, and the seven rounds just felt enough. Yeah, very back and forth though, wasn't it, right? It, yeah. was, a, it was a tough one to imagine which way it was going to go at the halfway point. Uh, I will say though, real effort by committee from G2. It didn't really feel like anyone went missing, which is a fantastic sign going forward. Yeah, it does kind of help to paint the picture of like, hey, this is the G2 that we want to see. That's the one you want to see. And then for Heroic, you know, falling just short here on, on their map pick. Um, expected, not expected? Ooh, uh, tough to say. No, I, I think I had Ancient going Heroic's way, although I, I have G2 winning possibly in three maps. What I didn't really expect is the, the complete shutdown that happened in the second half. I mean, I think Heroic struggled massively to keep up with the change of pace, but I'm jumping the gun. That's music for later. Oh, don't worry. We can get into some music right now. How about this B site? Like, what happened here? Yeah, I really liked how Hooksy synergized with different players and different setups throughout this entire game. We're going to see a couple of highlights here. Uh, his back-to-back -back play, sometimes with Nico, sometimes with Monesi as well here. Overall, I think the B defense from G2 was extremely tested, which makes sense. It would have also been a weakness that I would have tried to target it had I played against G2. Obviously, that's not the case. Heroic tried that here, but we'll see. A little bit of aggression in the mix. That was here, the double push ramp. Uh, that's once again Nico and Hooksy here. Same thing. It's a back-to-back -back sort of two-punch combination when they strike and multi-kills arise once again. So it's happened in the cave as well. I really think that Hooksy and G2 overall thought about, hey, how can we change things up on that site and make sure Heroic never really know the setup we have in, pay dividends? Yeah, I mean, look, I think on the other side of the coin as well, when we take a look at the T side, it was the same kind of a question mark for me where G2, it felt like things weren't really going very well for them in the first couple of rounds of that half. And then again, you talk about adaptation, you talk about changing things up, they start hitting those bomb sites quickly and, uh, and, and getting a little bit more of a contact play kind of a style coming through on that T side. And that's when they started to find some success as well. So we're starting to see some nice little change ups coming through for G2 in a lot of these cases. Some nice sparks of life that mm. you really got to have when you're in the lower bracket. Like it's really got to be like, it is. Uh, let's look at that second half. Let's talk about round 16. I think you were right on the money. There were some issues for G2 early on in the offense. Uh, we can have a look at round 16. That's a great example. We'll see here G2 trying to play the map control, being really contested and contained by Heroic. There's a couple of here exchanges happening. Mid-map has been taken, but weakness in the offense as well here. Tess sneaks in. There's no real trade. Hunter was a good second behind, so Tess is going to be uh, able to survive. Shush, meanwhile, finds a gap again, pushes, catches next up with it, pounds down, nerds into Monacy. All of these kills are happening when G2 isn't ready to fight. It's a map control that is failed. It's Heroic who's making sure to catch G2 off guard. And what ha what's happening after this, and that's the exciting point, is that G2 realized, wait, hold on a minute. Yeah. We, don't, we don't need to play this Counter-Strike. I don't want to play none of that map control BS. How's <laughs> about some contact plays, some first intention rush, simplifying the point of attack, and that worked for them. I think it was the very next round or the next couple of rounds. That oh, they yeah, they started, they, yeah. They went straight into B, mm -hmm. uh, contact play, and then the very next round after that, they went straight into A, contact play, and both of those rounds worked fantastically. Some very, very nice entries coming through from Nico in particular, who, again, we highlighted at the start of that map and sort of said, okay, well, we want to kind of see that same trajectory continuing, and it seems like that was the case here on Ancient. Speaking of trajectories, is anyone going to slow this Monacy guy down? I don't think it's happening. Is it ever going to happen? Like, this guy really is putting in that bread and butter. Definitely. A little bit diesel-like, slow start here. CT yeah. side wasn't exactly uh, necessary for him to step up, but have a look at the numbers on the wow. T side. Oh, my God. When G2 picked up the pace, you could definitely see what luxury it is to have Monacy within your ranks because he's capable of keeping up with the, the, the pace, keeping up with the attack, and finding those kills. Would it be with the rifle? Would it be with the AWP? He did that once again. And if there were moments on Knife's Edge on the T side for G2, that you can damn guarantee that Monacy was here to close the door every single time. If for a guy that posted like 95 point, or excuse me, 91.5% of, uh, of the damage, you know, like that's a lot of damage going into every single round, right? <laughs> it is pretty cool. Like that, that is actually what, uh, that'll catch up with you. If you're I, on mean, the I mean, he's doing it with the rifle, he's doing it with the orb, he's doing it in the start of the round as well. It's not as if he's not having these sort of like impactful kills, you know, these are not throwaway frags or anything like that. I think four of the rounds in the second half there, Monacy got the opening kill mm. for uh, G2 and obviously that puts them in a fantastic position when you're able to play the round out 4v5. You've seen him swing out there on the A site and just kind of take 
take point. that, that frag. Yep. But that is the point, right? Usually, or most snipers have a slower rhythm and pace to how they want to play the game. Yep. And as a leader, you have to sort of accept it. You have to set them up. You have to give them time and freedom to find the picks. Monizy can just get on them roller skates and just follow you. He's going to follow you and find the trades or the opening kill. You, Hooksy, you know you can play fast Counter-Strike. He's, he's thriving in it. Look, man, he's not wearing roller skates. I can assure you that they've got to be rollerblades because this guy's just flying around. Speaking of which, we've got Heku flying around somewhere trying to catch up with the heroic side. What'd they say? All right, I had an opportunity to talk to So about what exactly happened. Well, we saw that in the second half, G2, even though like, they lost the first rounds, then they managed up to bump up the speed and they just kept on being unstoppable. So said like, yes, like those retakes were really, really hard. And even though they managed to take one, the other ones were almost impossible. But there's more maps. So for Heroic, it's a reset. It is a, it's a really do or die now that you've got just one map left in the series, potentially. Yeah, and it is pretty dire because we're going to New York right now. And the last two times they played G2, obviously, not only did they lose, but in the defense, they felt like they were a little bit just outclassed. Flat. Yeah. flat is maybe too harsh of a word, but okay. still, uh, it's six rounds and seven rounds, respectively, lost on the defensive nuke. And the problem that I have is that I think the formula that worked on Ancient here for G2, which is picking up the pace, is something they're absolutely capable of doing on nuke as well. Like, you'll see, whenever they feel like it, these fast inside plays, either straight from spawn or 10, 15 seconds into the round with a couple of nice nades, they can do that. I don't know if Heroic can keep up. Yeah, I, that's where Nerds needs to thrive, right? Well, definitely. I mean, I think not just Nerds. There's a couple of players on that uh, Heroic roster that we can highlight that we would probably say need to step up from Ancient into Nuke. But I, I mean, look, I appreciate what Heroic is trying to do with the veto there. You know, they're changing things up in the last couple of series. But unfortunately, what you can't do is you can't change up your perma ban. And in doing so, that's going to allow, again, G2 to go back onto Nuke, which is, as you said, the map that they've won twice in a row. Will it be a third time in a row? Well, my money's on yes. It certainly feels like it's going to be G2's night tonight for a 2-0. But I tell you what, I've been wrong on this analyst test before, and it might not be the first time. Hey, so. Don't worry and about you're, it. And you're not going to be the last person either. 100%. I promise you that much. Uh, hey, we did, uh, I don't, maybe maybe we go into this, maybe not. I mean, Nico walks by. They don't want to play Vertigo, according to But they don't. And no, I, I they, can feel that. They really that. don't. I kind of don't even want to watch Vertigo, to be I, I think, personally, Nico probably hates that map. And I agree with them. There okay. we go. I said it. Oh, uh, he said it. So it must be. Uh, it must be true. Hey, so does the series end here for you, Jordan? Yes, I think so. You've I checked it so. out. I'm feeling pretty comfortable. I mean, why wouldn't you be as G2, right? With that history that they've shown. I mean, it's not that far away uh, that we were looking at Katowice and they were able to get those wins on the board. And as you said, they weren't even super tight. They were fairly comfortable oh. victories. So it's looking pretty good tonight. I feel like all the guns are blazing for G2. They've got their stars working. In the case of Monacy and Nico's also showing up. I mean, we highlighted Hunter as well and said, what is he going to be able to bring to the table i wasn't down on his output either i don't think he had a bad game there on ancient so it feels like the G2 that we're getting tonight is the G2 that we want to see and the G2 that will make it through to the playoffs. Yeah, and they have the right level of intensity as well, right? It's not exaggerated, like they're not screaming around every round they win, but you can feel that there is a little bit of intensity, there is a little bit of will in there, um, a couple of like gr smiles and grins whenever they're winning rounds. Uh, in terms of vibe checks, it's where we want them to be. Right where we want them to be, or well, perhaps where they want to be. Hey, look, we are going to go to a quick break here. As you can see, G2 taking back into the server, Heroic trying to find their way into this series, and so far we do lead ourselves in a nuke. We're all going to get that CT sided start. We return. This is the Intel Extreme Masters. At some point in every gamer's life, there's a question to be asked. Do your clothes match your hobby in any situation? Or do they just represent what you dream of? No matter what situation, there's always the right way and the wrong. The only real question is, which are you going to choose? Decide for yourself. Smokes, you see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. <laughs> This is not FPL! This is a major! Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. I wanted to ask you a little bit about the major. I'm sorry. Uh, what kind of happened there? You guys were doing so well, and then after that complexity game, things really changed. Uh, so, can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Uh, I will start with me. I, I just played really bad. Uh, I didn't feel any comfort zone during the tournament. And I will say um, it could be a game changer if I would play good. But uh, as a team, I think like we learned a lot. Like we, we didn't communicate the best. But I would say for the next tournament, like we learn a lot from this tournament. So what's the mood like? Because you guys were playing well and you were on the way up, right? But you're still a relatively new team, not much experience as this lineup. So what was sort of the, the talk after the major? Um, like the topic at least it was just enjoy the game. I think like in the major, we, we were having fun. We just didn't hit our shots, at least me. Uh, but I know for a fact, like, we gonna be, I'm telling you, like top five in the world until, uh, remember my words, until the end of the season. I believe you, man. I believe you. Thank all right. Ciao, brother. Ciao, brother. Uh, we're not gonna do this to all the people in the back. I wanted to ask you a little bit about this tournament. Um, you guys are going up against Liquid first. They haven't played in a while. So as an in-game leader, you know, how does that change your approach when it comes to maybe preparation and all that stuff? Yeah, it's going to be a bit harder than usual to prepare because obviously they haven't played for like a month or something. But still, at the end of the day, we will still try to play our game and focus on our things because we know that if we do that, we can beat anyone. Liquid in the first game, have you given it any thought uh, about that particular match? Not too much because we're prep later, you know, so later I'm going to focus more on that. But for now, I'm just trying to feel the environment, you know, getting used to the time zone, stuff like that, and then I'll focus more on the game later. And what would be for you personally, you know, what's your sort of goal for this tournament uh, for your team? I mean, I think we would like to make playoffs at least and just see how far we can go, you know. I think we can go all the way if we play our top level, so let's see how it goes. All right, man. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. That was Team Heroic. Well, G2 Heroic might be developing into one heck of a, a rivalry, one that Heroic have always found themselves on the receiving end of. G2 are in search of a three-peat victory over this Heroic squad, and seemingly always at pretty pivotal junctures, Hugo. Yeah, opening game of Caddo, closing game of the group at Caddo, and now the same situation here at Chengdu. There is one more spot left in the playoffs, and G2 feel right before it. Nuke has been a go-to map for them, and Heroic now have to reverse sweep after losing their pick in the series. It will not be easy, but when is it ever easy in CS? True. Uh... Do you hear anything, or is this... No, no. Okay, it's give, okay, me, give me the worry. sound effects. You no, can... no, no. That's your job. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, they brought him back. I was so ready. They put the pressure on Norris right. to hear you pew pew. It's instead P250 outside, and Glock's running down Nika Dawes. He hits a nice one. Oh, my God. He is in a lot of trouble right now, and he couldn't find a second target. Two kills come to the good of G2. Big flank. Oh, and he takes the shot, but no connection. Not to the kill, at least. Three on four. Shush, this is a precarious position to play the dual Berettas. 
Bomb is still trapped to his right side. And while they've cleared the lobby, they know that G2 are slowing it down in the yard. But they just can't get a grip on it. Back to main. Shush. Aiming a far up close. He transfers. Nico will still get the kill. And Monacy's in heaven as well. Now the bomb can come through main. And G2 not in a bad position at all. Oh, now Monacy able to get involved. And he spots out that last player as well. They know that Nerds has to make this rotate happen. He's going to try and beat them down the vent. Gets in just in time. But Nico a little faster and that pistol round well it's sort of the ancient story all over it's nico and monacy stepping up and getting the job done for g2 gotta say the vibe is looking good in the g2 camp right now if uh, if we look over at heroic the ones that are tasked with having to recover this for me it's going to be important that one nikodos doesn't start 0 and 9 again well he's already off to a better I start i know yeah uh, he's already doing better with one um <laughs> Every little counts. But also, just think, even even down to that matchup yesterday, how important and how much better Heroic look when both Nikodos and Nerds are looking good on this map. I think it really frees up some of their options. These two are the ones that kind of swap out those yard duties. Sometimes you'll see Nerds start off over towards heaven and then Nikodos takes it. And in rounds where he doesn't, they might double up outside. Sometimes Nerds gets aggressive and Nikodos is the one playing that rotate area. But... They're going to be they're going to be paramount here if uh, if heroic do want to recover. Contact ramp. Tessis is deep down secret. G two won't make noise. They just use this to take hell control and yeah, Nikodos finds out the hard way. And not only out, they are in with another round. It seems looking to convert on their pistol. Vent drop is heard, so they're ready for a player at single door. Safe plant. An exit will come in, but ultimately stress-free for G2 on their conversion for now. Monacy is very good at the game, if you didn't know. Yeah, he's part of a very... Uh exclusive club really it's just kind of him and donk at the top end of the uh yeah the stats no, not even just the stats just the eye test but the stats as well Terrorists win. well if i can see clearly i see a 2-0 for g2 whether that's in the map or series remains to be seen Maybe both. Heroic are going to have to dig deeper than ever before in this game. A team that had a fantastic debut to this year, right? Think about the Katowice. They beat Astralis in the play-in. They beat Vitality. Suddenly, it felt like this team could be a lot stronger than just the pieces on paper. But choked it at the major. Sure, great win over phase. Nothing else in the elimination stage. And it's still hard to put your finger on how good this team is, but failing to make yet another playoff for Heroic would be disappointing for what they probably believe their level can be. Yeah, I mean, you even heard that's in that uh, interview piece with Yanko that played during the break say we're, we're going to be a top five team at the end of the season. And he said, mark my words, you can remember that. So, and he's had faith yeah. in this squad since the very beginning. It was him back at Kato who was giving all the interviews saying, I think we're going to make a run here. That was fresh off the formation of the squad. Like, you didn't even really know where to place Heroic. And as you say, they had some very legit wins at Kato. Of course, locked out of playoffs by this G2 team, who are now looking to do it again. Yeah, and right now, it's a great start to this T side on a very comfortable map for G2. Nico's nailing them. Monacy 2. Now we have G2 getting ready for his upper pop. Hunter can split main. So only kicks in the sight. Got a good gun for the job, but what a job he's got to do. Up the vent with a flash. Kicks and gives it away. Shush. Oh, that's a surprise, but he can't convert it. And Monacy gets both openers. Nikodos has fallen in, but not long for this round. 3-0. and 
Easily done for G2 Flawless. Now the buy comes out. Integral heroic start early. When we saw them styling on this map the other day, like you said, it was that one-two punch of Nikodos and Nerds outside. It's a very aggressive outside rounds from Nikodos. This all, even Nerds flanking lobby at times. But if you consider who you're up against on those outside T control rounds, it is Nico. No easy feat. Exec Util getting thrown in while Hootsie tries to make a play and it's oh. a drive by. Doesn't quite get Almost. the second. Nearly good for the kill to kick Sam, but nearly won't cut it here. He's able to get out into main. Flooding over him. Nikodos in at the back of the site now. All that stands between them and it is his teammate rotates in through heaven. G2 come to a bit of a halt here. They know where both players are now. And so with that info, they're going to react quickly. Monacy makes it down the vent. Simon Hunt. Uh, Taking all this space over towards Hell, they're trying to toy with Heroic, and they have split the defense. Nikodos kind of has to react by taking lobby control here. When it goes quiet like this, it's the only option he's left with. But that will open up this top site for G2. This is weird, though, because Monas, he has the bomb, so Hunter will just say, I have no, I, I don't know, I can't find him. He's He's got to be here somewhere. He's probably in lobby. Monacy still has to cross, so Hunter trades with oh. him. Monacy hits the shot. That's out of nowhere. Free plant. And Tessez, who had to at least consider that B was an option, has been dragged back up into the unknown. 1v2, and they've taken their positions. Only dangerous this plant isn't necessarily for the hut. Tessez could get a full stick off. Let's see how he ops. They wrap door. And that will allow them to just swing it together. Monacy is lights out. Another 2K from him. And G2 just keep the good times rolling. Yeah, uh, it all started you know, back on that first map of Ancient with Nico kind of getting the ball rolling. But the moment Monacy got switched on, it felt like uh, he, uh, he didn't slow down throughout the remainder of that game. A real late game activation. And he's bought that momentum with him into the second map now. And that is, you know, the the... the the whole prospect that makes G2 still tantalizing is that they, they're able to do so much when it's only Monacy who's consistent. If you do start getting mileage out of Nico, you know, then how much better does this team get? If Hunt is able to start delivering in key matchups again, ooh, ooh, where, how far could G2 go, right? Like, even managing to make a, a run at the major largely on the back of Monacy. Monacy. I like what Heroic do here because they take lobby and Sean Nexa hears it, but they, they don't hang around. They immediately drop double lower and, and reset. They're going to have a lot B and very quickly as well. So G2 need to put a lid on this round right here, right now. And it's not coming easily. Good flash play. Nico can't convert the second. 2v4. Heroic full control now with the bomb and guns upgraded. That's great because the call from G2 just comes off the back of hearing like 2-3 in lobby. They just rush B. But Heroic were just as quick down lower after making their presence known. They don't wait for G2 to retake no lobby. No, they know exactly what the reaction will be. But don't count G2 out. It's a weird clutch round. Maybe now you can. Nexus trapped a long way out. It all kind of hinged on Hunter finding something there. That would have opened up a route for Nexa to try drop in the vent, catch them as they're looking to deal with Hunter. With him falling immediately to Nertz's 3k. There's no winning this for Nexa, and he knows it. Will Nertz be able to round it out with a fourth? Nexa's really put himself in a in the firing line down here at B, and he realizes, I don't really want to be here. So he'll go creeping away, looking to hold on to this rifle at least, but a, a key round for Heroic to win, and not one that they were supposed to. Nice idea cooked up by Kicksan. Very well handled for Nerds, who was constantly under pressure there down towards that lower site. So the form of Nerds still not looking like something we can doubt. He certainly had some quieter performances. 
since their uh, their year started back in Cato. We haven't seen tremendous consistency around it, but he's looking in form for this game right now. going to go back to this outside control this time a little slower but that does give time to Nikodos to creep up on this AWP well look at the fake out the AK is ready in main though it's a perfect gun for the job he hears him running Kissing knows what's coming and he does deal with Monacy on the front so with the bomb it's at least info for Harag. They know that G2 are never going lower. Nico gets a responding kill, but it still kicks in, disappearing into the mist. Can he take lobby? Potentially even backstab? Nex is making his presence known, so this is just G2 looking for kills, and they're not coming in. Finally, Nexa turns around to punish that flank. 2v3, bomb coming through main. Shush in the open, in a world of hurt, and Nexa hits a nice headshot. Suddenly, G2 have got reason to believe. Tessis is on for this ramp push, but Nex has hit every shot that's been needed so far in this round, and that's the one that eludes him. Can't quite complete the kill to Tessis. Nikodos made noise in the vents, but that flash out in the yard will signal to Nico where Nikodos has ended up at. And with Tessis so low, it feels like it's on Nikodos to win this round for Heroic. Nico now knows where both players are. Swinging on out, Tessez offered up, and Nikodos is jumpy, jittery, trying to land a free fire. Nico oh. goes swinging, and it's clinically done between him and Nexa to turn that one back around into G2's favor. This is business for G2. They are not sweating. Nico does not look stressed in that clutch. He plays it to perfection, never jumping the gun on the hot swing either knowing he has a very good position for that post plant. That's a 2v4 turnaround from G2. Solid work. Poor Kixon, who gets a double opener, makes the right play in lobby, but Nexa turns just in time. And yeah, everything's flowing for G2 now. It does feel like they could become unstoppable in this game. Like one series where Nico and Monacy both top the charts for G2, and you just you can't even keep up with them. Hunter gonna try his hand at a fast round out through the door. Util to support him, and they just bludgeon this top side. Now it's dead. That's the round already done. Yeah. Heroic left saving. A That's a fast top site exec from G2. What a confidence call that is, right? G2 have a deep strat book, a deep playbook on this map. They've got the experience, they've got the wins to back it up. And when you're winning clutches like that, you know you have Heroic on their back and G2 just execute instant A rush. The entries come through for Nexa and there is nothing left to do for Heroic but save. It's just a sign of the times there for G2. And now, in the back of Horrocks' mind, the G2 can pull that off any round they want. Oh, Crosshair was there, but... Nikodos keeps his orb. Terrorists win. Look at that little... That little smirk on Taz's face. He knows it's happening. Yeah. He knows where the team has ended that that plow mindset. Yeah. It's nice as well, because actually you see Taz looking pretty stressed <laughs> in the G2 jersey. A lot of the time he's kind of having to, to pick everyone up and be the guy keeping them dialed in. But right now G2 are doing it themselves. Wearing a G2 jersey takes years off your life, whether you're a player or a fan. Oh, and the pressure of that potential back-to-back -back A rush gives Hooksy room to drop down vent. When they see the door they come, they get scared of a rush. Hooksy is now down below. This is a nice position for Nikodos, and with Nerds covering above, Heroic 
can stop the meeting Hooksy down B. Nikodos won't remain forever. And they'll hear that run away as well. So G2 know they have room as they go for a standard wall of smokes. Tess is, ex is exploring the B site. They know for s certain Hooksy is down vent. So they know they can't drop down this point of rotation. Are G2 really going into an A split? Hooksy's coming up. This is ballsy. But it just might work. Heroic have bodies here, but it's Hooksy surprising Nikodos. He wasn't ready for... Uh, uh, okay, that sure. happened. And, and Heroic actually might win this round now. Oh, he's got the bomb. Bomb dropped at Kicksand's feet. And a weird exchange over towards the CT vent. It's a Hunter and Hooksy have got to cook it up. You've seen Nico deliver rounds. You've seen Monacy do it. But how will the rest of them fare? They're going to try and pressure Kicksand in the lobby. But Hunter has been slowed as he hears them dropping out from the heavens. Oh. No way he gets that one, and he knows that Shush dropped as well. Hunter, masterclass on the A site, looking to just finish the job, and that is beautiful from Hunter. That may be the, may be the best round from him all tournament. Wow. Absolutely threaded the needle on that play, and that's another comeback round for G2. Was that a 2v4 as well? 2v3 and 2v4. My oh my. Miraculous. And this is the G2 when they're performing, everyone performing to the level that these names would suggest. Pulling off these clutch rounds, Hooksy in the heads with some fast calls. I can't believe they get Hooksy down vent. They throw the wall. They go for an A split. And despite that, Nikodos still somehow gets two kills out because they're fumbling with Molotovs to burn him out of vent. He gets two kills with the orb. Still no problem. Okay, G2. Yeah, this is uh, this one's looking very, very good for the G2 squad, isn't it? Hunter even got a fist bump. I don't think he's had one of them in months. Nice position again for Nerds. They will be able to get to red, though. Nothing he can do about that. Oh, Hooksy. Oh. Lazy clear. Lazy clear. It will cost you. It will cost oh, you your life and maybe more. Nerds mauls them. My, oh, my. Can't take them all. Nico does taps out Nico and Heroic. Flash in the pan. But a fire started nonetheless. Yeah, beautifully done from Nertz to recognize the opportunity that he's been given there. Takes all he can out of the round, and it's flawless for Heroic. Out of all the ways to try and recover it, a 7-1 scoreline. Sticking the landing on your first rifle round flawlessly is not a bad start. And because these last few rounds, even though G2 have been winning them, they've come down to clutches, right? You've had two players surviving, three players, one player. They've all been very expensive. So that money is not infinite for G2. Far from it, in fact. They lose this round. Suddenly, Heroic starts streaking them together. And this game tightens up. G2 snuff that out before it even begins. The wall comes down. Nico's walking through the smoke. Oh, finally punished for these fake outside rounds. And fortunate that that nade lands a little bit short. It allows a cross for Hunter into Garage. And he could do something with this for sure. He's going to play late. Let that ramp stat go in first. Awkward for Monacy. Caught lining up the util, and that's a nice freebie for Tessez to pick up. He's gaining ground. Might have to be the hero again. Oh, Nikodos makes noise going up the ladder. I have no idea that Hunter's here, but just turning to deal with it now. Nikodos, good timing on that. And so this one kind of peters out for G2. He makes it down the vent, but not for long. They've already got a player oh, down there. Okay. And so heroic. This is the start of the streak. That's another flawless round as well. Two in a row. And it's about to become a third as that G2 money is now fully gone. It's late in the day, but maybe heroic can wake up in time here. Five rounds on the CT side, at least with how this game begun. It's, well, you'll take it. 
And it's that duo of Nikodos and Nerds that have been paramount. Topping the uh, the board right now for Heroic. Good to see that Nikodos didn't let that slow start get under his skin. Yeah. Wanna see Deagle? Oh, the, the timing, timing on that. He jiggles it uh, for so long, and then the moment he goes to run across onto main, that's when he gets swung. Nico homes it on the Deagle. He at least manages to pick that up from Honesty's body. Uh, that's the only exciting part of the round. Do you really want to mess with Nico here? Shush does. It's never going to get out of control, though. Not at this rate. There's enough bodies in the yard. Someone do something. And that will make it so. This is always meant to be easy for Heroic. One Deagle and no shot. Thank you, Kixon. Here we go. Last chance for G2 to make a mark on the T side. Or Heroic, maybe picking up steam near the end of the half. Yeah, it's really scary the fashion that they've won these rounds as well. It, you know, they haven't been close. G2 went from 7-1 up, winning clutch after clutch, not even breaking a sweat, to suddenly three flawless rounds in a row for Heroic. Feel that in a game that's quickly slipping through their fingers somewhat, or at least in a half that's slipping through their fingers. You don't want to feel like you let Heroic back in. No, they were dead in the first eight rounds or so. But hey, G2, they might have to earn it. I'd say they're good for it. Nerds, great position, and it's not going to go clear again. Hoopsie finds out the hard way. Nerds, stop it. Two kills and then some. Hunter's low. They're going to go back to this A split. It's just been so good to them, but Nexa gets blocked. Broken open. Doesn't matter. Nexa's crossed all the way. Tessus has got to be aware, but Nexa peeking for the lockers. Great shot. And now, Heroic, they have no idea where this one's ending up. It's so uncertain. Oh, oh my. Yeah, that's crazy. Sure, sure. Glad he doesn't commit to that. Kixan waiting at the double doors down on B. Oh, both remaining no. players, but can't keep them at bay. Fast rotate down the vent for Nikodos. Over at ramp, Shush moves in, but that plant's gonna go down for G2. And that Nikodos swings out and denies just Monacy. Oh. Trying to oh. regain control, but he can't. And so heroic, they take four in a row to recover from being 1-7 down in that first half. Hey Future Pros, stopping an A rush on Nuke can be vital to your team's success. So let's look at the door molly which is a staple piece of utility when playing the map. To throw this molly you should always be the first one up the ladders to heaven. When at the top and while running, aim your crosshair at this point shown. There can be a bit of variance here so don't worry about being 100% aligned as you don't have a lot of time for this. Then keep running and throw the molly. Sometimes the T's are committed to the A rush, so be wary of a smoke extinguish, as this will be a good sign that the T's are coming.
This started really good for G2, but towards the end of that first half, things turned sour with a star-studded performance from Nikodos and Nerds doubling up for Heroic. They suddenly get a second win down the tail end of this game, and it ends up being a very competitive affair. The pressure still on for G2 here on a classic map for this squad. They've got to hope their CT side can see them through the night and into the playoffs. One spot remains, and Heroic are just grasping at straws, trying to get back in this game. And A Rush can do it for Hunter. Heroics again from him. He has shut them down and shut them up out of nowhere. This guy, he's only got nine kills, but they're some of the most impactful kills in this game. Two huge 3Ks. Just in time. What a shot. Nico, a bit of a boring player, but Hunter, I remember a Hunter flick. Stable as ever. Okay. That's just a, you know, reality check to Roic. I'm going to try and go ramp. X is their main here. He'll drop off after one. It'll be fine. I mean, he can hang around when you hear those glocks. Ooh, the bloodlust. We're going to struggle to get any nades out at this point. Checking on that A site. Where's the bomb going? That's what I wonder. It's on silo. What's the goal? And, well, it might just die. And there's Monacy. Oh, absolutely wrecking him. Don't think the bomb is getting anywhere in that round. It's going to be G2 keeping it flawless. And this is it right now. This is heroic. Kind of requiring this first gun round or the whole gets dug deeper, Harry. All they've got are shovels. Yeah, it's certainly not the ideal place to find yourselves. Uh, you know you know that G2 are going to be running a bonus round here. So Heroic, the odds for them to find a way back in aren't terrible. But G2 is certainly going to come into this round with ideas. They're going to have to. Maybe a bit of aggression out of Nexa on that MP9. He's supported by uh, Monacy early on over towards ramp. Hello. And they're even looking to send him through this ramp smoke with a flash. Popping in, he gets his real estate in nerds. We'll hear this short. If anything, that kind of lowers how much nerds could look to get away with here. Instead, he just kind of has to hold the ramp and see if he's pushed. I actually like that Nexa doesn't commit to going there. Nico could need this smoke. He might not want to give away his position, but... We don't have any pre-rotates towards B, so right now G2 are kind of in the dark. That's a big nade. Sets Monacy up for one. He's got another one. Doesn't see anything. Kicks and crosses secret. There's Nico going for it a little late to the party, but we appreciate the effort. Five on four, and 
Well, Kickson is down B. That bomb isn't comfortable crossing in the open. Yeah. The bomb never went with him, right? They didn't want to get it trapped on that side of secret, but the downside is now. Now you're just kind of stuck with the bomb at red. Kind of has to end A. Is it like that round where Hooksy came up vents? They and I said, oh, they main smoke. Yeah, they've yeah. also lobbed in the hell smoke, so they've slowly but surely cut off some of these sight lines that are open. You're kind of hinging on Nerds being able to find good impact on, on cutting down these rotate players. And with so little time left, Heroic have got to move very quickly here. G2 never really considered it. They only saw one player make it down, but they don't need to worry. It's a five on three. It's a set, set, set up situation as they group on the ramp for this retake. A late vent drop that can't come too early. They clear the first man. Now Hooksy can move in. He will die as just remains covering and Kixon responsible for the bomb. Just trying to dodge early death, trying to buy a few more seconds. That's all of a sure shot. Can only see legs and Kixon's dead. It's G2 with that five on three retake pushed over the line heroic they make the most out of nothing from a very dangerous perilous outside cross but winning the round is a farce yeah i mean g2 have done their homework they know what to expect in these rounds where heroic get down b they know to be ready for Nerds back in the lobby, and they didn't let him find any impact there. They just chased that kill down at the first uh, convenience, really. And the moment they flushed him out, it, it becomes a far easier round for G2, right? It allows them to rotate freely around the map. They get set up to retake through ramp, and they take it cleanly. Nerds had to do a hell of a lot more in that spot if Heroic ever wanted to win it. So now they try to run oh, back this top again. side exec, and once more, Hunter puts a stop to it. A is closed. Hunter is putting on a show. Another 3K. Three 3K shutdowns. That one's on anti, but if Heroic get the entry, if Hunter gets none there, that round falls apart. So again, we're classing that as a high-impact Hunter round. And he makes it look pretty as well. Goes gunning for the third. Confidence out of Hunter. If he can bring this form into playoffs, Harry, G2... They might be here for a bit of a show. We have a competitive playoff bracket already building. Mal's looking fantastic. Astralis with a stomp through. Virtus Pro are never an easy opponent. And did FaZe win? Yes, they did. G2 looking to join that list. Liquid as well. Things are shaping up in Chengdu. Tessas is in the game. He finally gets a kill here over on the T side. And it's an important one at that. With Nico dead out in the yard, it's opened up a path down here into B. And with only Hooksy between them and a B side plant, rotates have had to come through for G2. Only? They really have. As three players now find themselves down on lower, they leave top site in the hands of Hunter. Oh, bro, what are you showing us in this game? Wow. That's a capable pair of hands right here. Finally. I have to say it. Can't keep it up forever. Down. Yeah. Nice fake down lower. Tessa sells it with his single kill. And I mean, G2 look like they want to fight, but if Heroic just pull back and don't give a kill away, there's no way G2 go for this. So it's going to be that save. Heroic get it done. A little fake out lower into a hot pop from Shush. And the one kill required. I like that play. Monacy breaks window from afar, making it very clear. And then he nades the door. Even Tessa isn't aware how close Hoopsy could be. Nice exits. Available for Nerds. He's taking heads. Shadow shown. They don't seem to notice. Hoopsy fighting for survival. And that bomb will finish the job. So a bit of damage from G2 on the way out. But Heroic do find a round. It's a long road, though. I'm not banking on this yet. I mean, even all that damage found at the end from Hooksy does a good job of keeping Heroic vulnerable, right? Like, they win that round, they get to survive, but they ain't living yet either. Mm. Timeout called in, 4G2, Taz getting vocal.
Honest is able to bring out the AWP, and that one, it all hinges on getting away with that kill out in the yard, being able to throw that round into disarray. G2 essentially having to just react to the limited bit of info that they have. We've got Cole pulling way too many players away from the top side of the map. But G2 know they still have a very good chance to end this game here and now. So with the pause to accompany it, let's see what they've cooked up. Nico going to break this Ooh. smoke open again. Once Ouch. more, it's him v. Tessez in the head-to-head. -head, but this time, Tessez is wounded. He's injured by that util. And so he kind of has to slow down. They boost up Nikodos on that AWP. He saw him. He's going to have to be prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Monacy. It's a big ask, but he's up for the job. Nikodos, there's the opener. With that, once again, this outside space is taken by Heroic. Oh, he just gets back into safety as those flashes land. No one from heaven facing. Nico looking at that AWP. He's got a cross to get it. telling him, you are an AWP. Yeah. It's a bit too in the open right now. The smokes have faded. Heroic are just fighting on this cross. They're going to go dry. But G2 don't want anything to do with it. So they're allowed down towards B. This might just be a save for G2. Yeah. Positionally, they're not in this round unless they all rotate ramp together. This is a lurk kill, but Nerds getting it is such an issue for G2. He's not ready for more, but I don't know if that's even temptation enough. Heroic have done the same thing. They've crossed silent down secret. And I mean, they got burned last time by over rotating down towards B, so you understand why they don't. Even as Hooksy puts up a second, that won't interest G2 in attempting this one. Warp saved. Nico goes and grabs it. All right, Heroic. Now you've got our attention with a second found. Back-to-back -back rounds donning the board in favor of this Heroic squad. That gap's starting to close up, and the G2 money nearly broken through. I do like what G2 are doing, though. They, they notice these smoke walls keep coming, and they're just, like, grouping nades and doing two, three nades around on the smokes. They haven't quite hit those timings perfectly yet. They did in round three of the half. But they know how to stop this control. It, you know, a little bit comes down to luck and timing of those nades, but Heroka avoiding it very well and delaying post smoke, crossing dry when G2 stop fighting. Nikodos is putting the fear in them. I mean, you feel like this is the round surely where Monacy gets to take that AWP over towards outside, right? Up until now, I think it's made a lot of sense having Nico be the, uh, the man out there kind of trying to hold it down all on his lonesome. Especially before Nikodos was donning that AWP in the first place. But we won't see that. Instead, it is just Nico back to the yard, and Monacy instead takes that orb over towards ramp, and that frees up Nexa to go for a fast B drop here. This is nice because G2 has just never had any control down lower all half, and so, yeah, aside from that panic rotation or Hooksy throwing himself into a 1v4, you know, it's not. Like, G2 have had a chance to stop this control in B. Good spray. Nico converts it. And so, finally, Heroic lose the timing on that outside cross. Or oh, the fact that Nikodos hits that is impressive, but Nico sustains the wound. And now Heroic have to mid-round it. They have to switch it up on the fly. Nice hell smoke thrown in. They try and cross round the world. Nexa could try activate. Nico, final, a final bullet uh, kills kicks and crossing. If Nexa made a move, he could uncover this whole round from lower. But it's not like G2 have to play. I, li I, like, I like that he's not, right? Like, just him being down at lower confirms to the rest of G2. Guys, we don't need to worry about it. We can keep everyone else up Ooh, on top. That's all good. That's getting out with a kill there. And this will open up a path for him. Yeah, and Nexa now space gained. on the clock. He's playing it very, very passive. One kill is great because it's still an early warning. Even if he gets traded, it'll be 3v2, retake. But he needs that one kill or survival. He'll take the latter, the safer option, playing the numbers with his team. Yeah, Monacy moves in quickly from ramp. It's just the tag onto Nikodos. Enough to soften oh. him up. And Nexa goes on to finish Good the body. job. Shush, dead as the Molly forces him out. There just isn't time to win this. And G2 fast drop, everyone down lower. They get that elusive round they've been searching for for a while. Yeah. Moving them on to match and series point now. Just five kills away.
It's a huge adjustment because G2 finally just have info, and that's the, the difference maker. They know whether or not the heroic are ending B, because how many rounds have G2 like seen them crossing, but then they lose vision, maybe the smokes fade, they go back into their bomb site, and heroic dry cross. You know, G2 don't know how many numbers are down. Nexa is that early warning system that allows everyone to get set up. And that is it, folks. G2, one round is all they need for playoffs, quarterfinals, and Heroic will be removed, eliminated, sent home in the third loss in a row to this G2 team since Katowice. Will be a bit devastating for Heroic. But G2 have certainly played up to the level today there's been some flubs here and there but hunters had a great game monacy and nico were super strong across both maps g2 poised and ready to finish what they started I mean, G2 came into this already as favorites. And then when you finally have all three of your stars actually offering up commanding performances, it's no wonder that they find themselves in such a good position right now. Next, uh, he's going to get help here and a lot of help at that. Nico's even available as he takes up position over in heaven to be oh. that third man in towards ramp. So there is a lot for Heroic to get through here as they set their eyes on ramp. They might never live to tell the tale. That Monacy Orb fires off for the first. And with support from Nexa, they keep the advantage in G2's favor. Can oh. he get away? They're right there, dropping in a missed shot from Monacy. And that's carved a path down into lower. Now one man already down here. Hunter sits poised. Rob this round from Heroic. Quick to arrive, oh. but sent packing. Hickson will deal with him. That's a jump of the gun for Hunter. You feel like maybe he's hearing the smoke and thinking they're planting immediately, but they still had their guns out. Like, the smoke actually bounced. It missed. And so he just swings on that audio cue. But if he waits for the bomb, there's going to be one less player who can fight him. So, anticipation. We saw that earlier, actually, on Ancient, where, he, where um, Nika does drop the smoke on the bomb in the pistol round, and Hunter just swings. So, eager, too eager, and Heroic lived to fight another round. Damn, felt like Monacy was good for more than one there on ramp. Terrorists win. Surprising misses. G2 just can't get it over the line yet. Another timeout used for G2. I don't think they're worried yet, but now ignoring the trade rounds, the kind of trade of blows that we've had over the last few between these squads, Heroic still in fighting form. They're just tasked with their being in a really tricky spot. They have to be flawless from here on out. Thankfully, it's just those saved guns that G2 have to work with here. So for Heroic, they really only have Nico and Hooksy to worry about. So they're going to go back out into the yard. Once again, Nikodar's taking that orb there. Going to try and put it to work in case these rifles look to get involved outside in the early round. G2 leave that A site entirely empty. It's a it's good gamble. All ramp or yard for G2. No need though for that smoke. Finally, Nico's got to trim that silo player off. Ooh, tapping, but doesn't connect. Hunter, he actually crosses right past the player to get that AK. And then gets his revenge. Go on. Just about escaping that top red, top main. They're everywhere outside. Just trying to find one more shot. Kicks in so low. Hunter needs to finish this one. Nikodos is even coming back out to all. He's found Monacy. There's guns gifted. There's G2 with a shot. Monacy eats a bullet. Hooksy falls with a pistol. And Monacy, vengeance is sweet. 
They're in trouble now. This is not a clean anti-eco. It was meant to be, but low health on two players and Hunter roams elsewhere. Oh, Nerds on the ladder, caught falling off. And this gets really awkward now. Heroic are going A. They're going into Hunter's AK. Oh. They will get rid of him. Kicksan. Ballsy call to make. They dropped. Dropping down. Nix is already oh, here. He doesn't but believe. He won't, he, won't, he won't think this. Why on earth would they go B? That means they rotated into both G2 players over the course of this round. And so he's going to be left too far away to justify giving this 1v2 a look in. He can go for the AWP in secret, perhaps, and just go for that save. But, yeah. It's not really much else to do here. Positioned on the wrong side. A gamble that almost paid off. Man, Heroic just don't want to give it away. They don't want to go down without a fight. And despite almost letting this round slip through their fingers, Nerds getting caught in lobby. Hunter putting that AK to use. Heroic stand at tall yet again. Is overtime really viable from 12-7? I mean, this was, what, 11-5 at one point, right? Like, G2, they, they feel like this one should have been over a long while ago. Now, don't get me wrong, that last round was just the hero guns, right? And, and they were able to get it very, very close. They're hoping that now that they bring the guns out, they can get right back to their winning ways. Book themselves a spot in the playoffs and send Heroic home. And Monacy looks to do that now. Kill found to open. Kicksan knocked out. That's awkward because they were going to fully commit until they saw the AWP and the cancel is called by Kixon. You don't want to go running into Monacy, bearing down on you like that. You know there's so many more rifles in the site. G2 with a great read to start this round off. With how you've had to slow down here, even that's annoying. It's like you, you knew where Monacy was for a moment, but you know he's going to keep it mobile on the AWP, and they actually use him to hold this long sight line. G2 re-aggress into the lobby. This is a really nice mid-round move. Oh, my. And so now they know, right? The intention was to go A. That wasn't Nerts on a lurk out through the hut trying to do something solo. That was Kixan trying to lead the charge. And they spot Monacy's AWP posted deep into the lobby, but he claims another life. For the price of that info. Oh. oh, he just misses the tail end. Maybe he saw something. Either way, they've got this B player. One kill will do for Hooksy. Again, he plays the info as Nexa did before. That provides a path for Monacy to rotate safe. Doesn't want to commit to it. Knows they can come back up. It's under question right now. Heroic are seesawing back to that top side, but it's not going to get any easier. Monacy never uprooted from his position. Molly in main at 20 seconds and playoff bound for G2. It feels like there's no way Heroic can stop it. Yeah, Hunter and Monacy here, and Hunter's been stellar in these top site holds, but he will get run down straight away. And plant. They gotta get this oh ball planted, and Nika does keeps what? it coming in. Nika does turns his head around How? and deals with Nexa in the heavens. How? G2 thought that was it. They thought this was done. Heroic battle back for a three on five. And this gap continues to close. Nico. They just don't know when to quit. And even if this kill gets presented, you're left with half the time left on this bomb. This is a crazy round to even be considering if you're oh. G2. And so they won't, they write Dude, it off. what? How do they lose that? I mean, like, sure, missed shot for Monacy, but I, I'm surprised he didn't wallbang the bomb. He knows that that bomb was right there. If he wallbangs it and hits it, he wins the game. It's done. There's no time for a second plant. That was five seconds on the stick. And he goes for the close kill. He misses it, sure. But then Nikodos goes on a tear. Two heads off on that A side. I'm almost more surprised that Hunter's fighting. Right? Like, he's in a very safe position. They can't be heaven. Everything about that. He's in at the back of the site. That's There's like, eight seconds left, that's right? A delta. Yeah, that that's one will get under your skin. There, there were so many moments where you could have won that. I mean, this game should be done, but Heroic are making the most of it. A ramp rush is a desperate call. And, and Nexa rather can't grab that gun on the drop down. He's got to smoke it off. 
Let them have the room. He's only got a default pistol for crying out loud. And he even fires it to break that window and get back to safety. I mean, this would be despicable for G2 to close it here, but so far we have no reason to believe they can. This game has gotten far too close for comfort. 11-5, 12-7. Now G2 playing for the final round of regulation. Heroic, take a deep breath. Holding all fronts. Letting G2 make the mistake. But it doesn't seem like they're shuffling any further. They want confirmation. Mexico can provide that on B. Nico holds heaven on A. And Heroic make the right gamble. There's near nothing Nexa can do but call for reinforcements. Smoke to give him a bit of forewarning is nice. It means he's not instantly fed to this heroic ramp take, and that will allow Nico to rotate down. Gonna try swing open the single door. They've heard him, they know he's here, but he makes a play through. He's oh edging God. the smoke. Nico trying to tear oh. it all away, but just denied. Oh my. <laughs> this game. <laughs> this game. It rages on. And it's Tessez in that round, the one sitting bottom of the board for Heroic. Bell even had to say his name in the second half. He comes up clutch, he saves them as they're trying to get that bomb planted. And Heroic are really doing this. One round away from OT. And Hunter can't even save the AK as Tessez bounds after him. This would be a catastrophic choke for G2 if they lose this map. And then it only opens up Mirage, which let's not even think about right now. Because G2 should have done this. They should be in the playoffs. Heroic should be looking at their flights home. But they have held on. This is commendable calling for kicks. And some of these mid rounds have been perfection. The grouped crossing outside. The slowdowns in these 3v3s, scary 3v3s, where by no means a heroic favored. The fact that they win that round two rounds ago with a 10 second main rush that G2 knew for, sh for certain, for sure, it was coming. This is insanity. And it all comes down to this regulation win for G2 or OT opened up for heroic. Honesty will finally take that AWP over there towards the yard and puts it to work straight away. Feels like it's been a long time coming, getting him there with the AWP early. And they bottle it up for the last round. Worth the wait, but he needs to be mobile. He needs to just win this game on his own, it feels. It's just one round, say G2. Four kills. Ikados has something to say. Did they? they know where he's coming from now. It's a misnade for Nico. Oh, luckily Monacy is there again, saving the day for G2. We've seen this before. Couple of kills off the AWP. And Nikodos just cannot find a clear shot. So fast on every reposition, Nikodos doesn't know where to look. And so can never quite get a bearing on that G2 AWP. In the meantime, Kicksand's taking the bomb down lower. Nerds left, as he often is, lurking back in the lobby. And so right now, it's Nerds alone and Nikodos and Kicksand grouped for the B play. Heroic have gone on. A crazy streak, one that felt like it could have ended so many times over, but they did all this from the back foot with the goal of streaking together five in a row to carry us through to overtime. And they don't want it to end with a whimper like this. They don't want it to be Monacy robbing them of their chances. Again, there is no one B. Again, there is the open plant. I don't know if Heroic will expect this little control from G2, but they've gone back to just stacking that up a site and playing a retake. It's fine in the 5v3. But Heroic need to stick that bomb right here, right now. They need to believe in this play that they have. No spam. Vent rotate to cut down as Monacy looks for his third kill of the round. He opened this with a two. He's, he's delivered this 5v3 to G2. And last time Nertz was here, he wasn't able to accomplish anything. But this time, it's oh his my. for the taking. Oh In my. with this backstab, and they've got no oh idea. This is all of G2 right here. Backs turned. Nikodos puts up another. And OT is just one clutch away. 
Nico on the bomb, full commit, full 10 seconds, and Nerds doesn't buy it. No there time. isn't time for Nico. And so Heroic have long this out into OT. 3v5 and the perfect lurk for Nerds, the perfect play. He could not have waited until a better time to sneak down on that flank. If he plays early, if he fights Monacy, he loses. Instead, it's the backstab. And Nico does in the site, doubled up, no clutch for Nico, no kit for Nico. And we go into overtime. Unbelievable game we've got here. What an insane story for Nerds as well. Like in a lot of these lobby lurks, he's been read, he's been dealt with. G2 have been checking for him. And when it really matters, he's able to find that timing, find that space. And so Heroic have taken the last five straight. Is that going to keep up as we get into OT? Seven out of eight. 11-5. 12-6. 12-7, That's The entry. Caught looking nowhere. Hunter, where were the three Ks when you need him now as Monacy rains down from above? Molotov forces him out. They can play a retick again, but G2, these have let them down in the past. Maybe not today. Nico catches one. Quick upgrade available. The flank shuts down the re retake of the lobby, and Nico does now needs to do it with a rifle. But some call this guy a rifler. Nico's up and over. The Molly's going to push him in. Nico does hits it. Seven health. 1v2. G2 side by side. There is no excuse. They need this trade, and they will get it. First round of overtime goes the way of G2. Yeah, not the cleanest round, but they'll take it at this point. They finally put a, a stop to the heroic streak. Nico. That's more like it. I like that. Playing with some balls as he comes up the ladder. Yeah. I'm stressed and I'm not playing. <laughs> this is such an intense game and everything goes out the window when you hit OT. We see that instant main drop from heroic. Like, they're playing with confidence. They're playing like they have the room to lose a round. That's fine. You can. They've been playing against Elimination Point this entire time. Now they finally throw themselves at G2. Okay, it doesn't work, but it's a limit test. No, I, it is It is a limit test. I hope we see Heroic go back to something slower. because yeah, the mid outside rounds, crosses. The mid-rounds is where they've looked their best, right? Being able to out-position, out-maneuver G2, whether they're at a, an advantage or not. And more often, they're not. And yet they still come up with the goods. Surprised to not see Nikodos orb considering how these outside crosses have come through, but it screams that Heroic are doing something inner or ramp because Nikodos is getting fights outside if he wants them. Oh, Nico crosses. And Tessa has tried to go quick main. Are they still playing pacey rounds? Well, not now. Denied. Tessa is looking very deep over Silo there. And talking of that, Monacy has an angle to T spawn with the orb. That's giving so much room to G2. Especially now knowing that no one's silo. This is suddenly a very uncomfortable round for Heroic where they are constrained and they don't even know it. If they're crossing back, okay, thankfully they're not going all the way back to throw the outside smokes. Smoke. Yeah. They use this to try and put some pressure on the top side, get a man down the vent, and kick Sam will do exactly that. Manages to make it down, but this time G2 don't just have one player trying to deal oh. with him. They've got two, however, he quickly deals with Nexa. And right now, Kicksand's doing a great job of selling this take down at lower. Tuxi and Hunter yet again. Monacy will root. Monacy will deal with him. No. So the top side play now coming in. Hunter can't hold the line. Monacy up through the vent, strikes quickly, and it's all left on to Shush. The two top performers for G2 are the ones to beat, and Monacy, since hitting OT, even on the rounds building up to it, has not been missing. So Shush has got his work cut out for him and can't take it any further. G2 get into overtime, they stretch their legs, and now they start to streak rounds together. Heroic embarked on uh, what felt like an impossible comeback. They got us all believing.
But is that belief, is that dream going to wither and die once we hit OT? I mean, funnily enough, we're actually seeing G2 make more plays on this overtime uh, on the CT side. Like, they were, they were playing not to lose with the uh, advantage with the match point. But now Modesty is as mobile as ever. Nico is pushing Yard as well. That was how Heroic managed to get round to the end of their CT side with their Nerds and Nico Doz duo. G2 playing like stars. Oops. Blinded out. These nades outside have been tenuous at best. It's an unfortunate nade to miss even, right? Because... Think about Nico out in the yard and how often he's been trying to blow the smokes open. Well, you didn't get your nade in for any damage. And you don't have it now to blow this smoke open. Yeah, but still, Heroic have gone very late again behind these smokes. They're not actually crossing. They want the kills. They want to make G2 believe they're not actually here. Meanwhile, an upper fake comes in. Nerds puts pressure on G2 start to cross. Nico hears every single step. They go quiet. But next to knows, deep down, they're coming his way. This upper fake turns into a... They can't come a vent without getting through Nexa first. They both wait in the fade. One shot is all it takes. Down vent comes CTs. We've got three here. Kicks and continues to find entry kills. But Nexa shuts the door. Looking for a clean, flawless CT overtime half. They're walking his way. Nexa finds another. And Heroic may have the A side, they don't have the bomb. And drop. Oh man, nerds. Don't know how he gets away with that, but he's not going to take it any further. Nico and Monacy are now both on the scene trying to contain this bomb, and Nico Ooh. will manage it. Flawless CT half, and Nico thought he just won the damn game right there. He started <laughs> he started unplugging everything. He thought he'd done it for G2. Someone say, what are you doing? <laughs> Monacy yelled at him. What are you doing, bro? Game's still alive. One more. They've been on CT side for so long. Surely. <laughs> it's over by now. He was like, wait, really? We <laughs> haven't won this game yet? <laughs> <laughs> One more. And of course, they are disqualified now. Yeah. yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Fast out. G2 against the obvious. They want this over and done with. But their speed might be their undoing. Shunned up on the A play. It's just Monacy left standing. One it. on three. Oh. And run down. Heroic, keep the game live for that much longer. Uh, that's what G2 did coming into their T side after they, you know, like six, seven rounds in when they were dominating at the start of the game, if you remember that. They were in full control. G2 flex their muscles yet again. But Heroic pop their biceps with a pin. And we go again. Two rounds for double overtime. One round for elimination and playoffs. G2 run it back. Oh God, they really want this game over and done with. <laughs> they might have it. Nico's already warmed up the celebration. He's practiced taking his headset off. As far as they can, they're concerned, or at least he's concerned, they've won this already. And they might have done that now. Heroic, a man down in this retake. Unthrowable, you would say. The smoke in main. Heroic, they've had a great run. They've had some great resilience in this series, in this tournament, against Furia, against G2. But now it might be all over. And they need something big. Nerds and Nikodos still in the picture. These two have been the heroes, but not today. Snuffed out by Monacy in one hell of a sequence. And there's G2 locking in that spot in the playoffs. Quarterfinals secured for G2 and the end of the line from Heroic, who put up one hell of a fight here on Nuke. But sadly, when we got into overtime, when G2 played with confidence, there wasn't enough to keep Heroic in this. Yeah, that's a 3 P now for G2 beating Heroic every single time they've played this year. And even for Heroic, the third event in a row, they've shown glimmers of hope, but been unable to break through into that top eight. It is a commendable run. They did it against Furia yesterday, but today it comes to an end and G2 have a reason to smile. And with 60 kills between Monacy and Nico, on this second map, I really hope that form can keep up between the two of them as G2 head into playoffs.
Yep, there it is. That's our playoff bracket. My God, what a way to end out the group stages. My goodness, Maniac. Give me, just just take it from me. First of all, just give my heart a minute just to Ooh. calm down a little bit. Like, did it need to be that complicated? It did it need to be that harsh of a battle for G2? It felt like they had everything they needed. They had Heroic figured out and then suddenly Round started escaping them, crazy situations, shenanigans happening, Heroic finding ways to strike back, and we get to overtime, and it's in everyone's mind, have they done it? Like, have they broken G2? The answer is no, they haven't. Good reaction on the overtime, very dominant, a lot of authority on the server from G2, and they punch a ticket to the payoff. Yeah, you see in those last rounds, hey, we're going to hit this upper side again. You know, that, and that's just what happens when you get the overtime. You get cool instances like that. Speaking of which, here's a man. He goes by the name of Hunter. What's up, buddy? Hello, guys. Yeah. How are you feeling? <laughs> oh, bro, I don't know. Classic G2, what else to say? You know everything. Everybody knows. Yeah, I mean, Zero. Yeah, it, it, looked like, it didn't look like it was going to go in, in the fashion it did. Uh, so tell me, in your own right, like uh, in your own eyes, how did that happen? Honestly, like we just didn't want to lose, and that's how we played, especially our advantage situations, and we had a lot of them after 12-7 or 12-6, I don't remember what it was. But yeah, we were just kind of hiding and uh, waiting for them to come to us and gave them space to do whatever they want. And I think that was a mistake and yeah, hopefully we'll fix it and be better for the playoffs. Yeah, it looked like you guys were in so many advantageous positions and then suddenly they, they just like magicians, like pulled a trick and then disappeared. What do you think it came down to? Is it just positions, comes? How, how did you let loose of some of the control that you had on the rounds? I think both a bit, like even positions, comes as well. Some rounds were really sloppy, I would say. Like, for example, last round, we didn't know that they can be secret when we lost 3v5. So yeah, that was comp situation. And then the round where we could close out even before 13-7 or 13-8. Uh, we knew kind of everything. We were just not good positioning wise. And yeah, everything kind of went wrong. But I am happy that we managed to bounce back to reset after 12-12. And we did good on, on city side after. Yeah, definitely. The bounce back in overtime was clear. Um, I was peeking, looking at you guys play in, in this sort of comeback from Heroic. He was watching. And I thought, yeah, I was watching everything. He was watching. Watching everything. Yes. <laughs> and I thought like the intensity of the comps were crazy high in the comeback that you suffered, but then you calmed down in overtime. Is that something that you felt as well? Is it just in my head? Well, I don't know, honestly, because we didn't have a break in between. <laughs> it was just immediately we, we were playing. So yeah, we just knew, we just said uh, to each other immediately, okay, let's just be better mid-round, late round, because beginning of the round was always good. We either have advantage situations or we were just blocking them and they wanted to go fast. So yeah, we just needed better deals mid-round and I think that's what we kind of did. And yeah, happy to close it out. Again. Talk to us a little bit about how things are feeling within the team at the moment. We talked to Nico obviously before the game and it seemed like maybe there was still some question marks, I suppose. Uh, interview which uh, HLTV did with Hooksy earlier as well said, you know, something along the lines, you guys aren't feeling 100%, you're not really feeling it at the moment, obviously coming off the back of the major, maybe a little bit tired, but it seemed like at least watching you guys in the server today, you were feeling pretty happy, obviously up until that big comeback from Heroic in the second half of map two, but it seemed like the vibes were pretty good. Yeah, honestly, today comparing to the first day and even yesterday was uh, a lot better because I think first day we were, we were playing really bad, even though the game against Liquid was close and we could win. It was really, really bad game by us. But today, I think we discussed as well last night and today, this morning, like that we need to step up with comms, that we need to step up with uh, like fighting for each other and screaming after we win the round. And I think that's what we did. Uh, what we did today, but of course, like major was something where we spent a lot of energy. Like we played semifinals, we like played like honestly almost last last week. So it wasn't easy for us. We had a big boot camp before major as well. So it's not really easy for us. We are like trying our best still. But yeah, even this jet lag traveling from event to event, it was really really exhausting for us. But yeah, today was uh, 10 times better. I think we, we started to sleep even better last night, all of us. So yeah, that paid off, I would say. And yeah, we have tomorrow day off and that's one extra off day, I would say for us. And I hope we'll be what we can be in playoffs. Well, I'll just throw it out there. G2, you guys like to, you like to put on a show, man. Like you guys really do make it entertaining. I'll we give you that. We don't want, we don't want. It might not be what you want, but it's damn sure what you guys deliver, especially one of your teammates. He goes by the name of Monesi. You know that guy? Yeah. The best guy. Yeah, the best. And that's why he's our Air Force Aim High player of yeah. the match. These numbers are going to speak for themselves all over the place. Uh, we even got glimpses of him pushing outside with the AWP there towards the end, uh, which, you know, obviously frees things up for you guys, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, when you play with him and when you're in the game, you cannot, like, believe after you watch uh, the score that he has 27 kills at the end of Nuke. Like, I cannot believe it, you know. You just don't see what is he delivering uh, until you watch it, of course. Yeah, I mean, he is insane. I think he is the player, I would say. I don't want to say 
yet that he's the best player in the world. You, you, you know, you can almost say it now. Yeah, We're getting yeah, there, yeah, huh? Yeah. No one's gonna blame me. He's the <laughs> he's player who is in the best form right now. Mm. For me, he's the best. I don't want to say anything, but, but of course we have Zaiwu. We cannot say anything about that guy either. He just had some time off, I would say, but he will bounce back again because he's he's doing that uh, throughout whole, whole his career. But Tilia, I'm really happy for him. He's an amazing guy and he's just doing amazing stuff for us. And I'm really grateful to have him in the team. Well, we also got to see Nico kind of get ready to end the game before the game was quite ready. I, you know, and it's moments like that you see the smiles and everybody kind of, you know, it kind of kind of brings it back up. Tell me what that vibe's like when it when it shifts right there. If something funny happens. On 14-12, somebody said like, "Let's go, guys, one more round." You know, so we go 3-0, and then we have three chances on T side. You know, and then he thought maybe that's it. If we win this round, we are done. And then yeah, he he thought that we we won already, and he started to celebrate. But yeah, it was too early. But yeah, at the end, the most important is that he had the chance to celebrate. Backfire at least. Good vibes. A w is a W. Hey man, you want this panda or you want to leave it up here? We can, uh, you can carry it out if you want. Check this no, out. No, this is in okay. your suitcase. <sighs> oh, I can't do it. Oh here my God. Ready? No, no oh my way. God. <laughs> no way. Production is freaking suitcase. out, surely. <laughs> I would Everyone honestly, I mean, I'll think you can keep it, but it's, it's a cool look for you right there. I'll I would like to bring it to my daughter, but no way I have a space for this. I'll, I'll keep it. <laughs> it's I not, it's not a check a situation. One. It's not a carry-on situation. <laughs> what do you even do with that? Yeah, I don't think you're going through security with that one. Either way, uh, thank you very much, uh, Hunter. Uh, yeah, you guys put on a show. We'll get you out of here. Yeah, thank you, guys, and see you in playoffs. Yeah, definitely Absolutely. that. G2 have found their way uh, into the playoffs, uh, and that would ultimately mean that Heroic are going home. They will not be joining us this weekend. So it's only fair that we hear their side as well. Unfortunately, so this is where the journey ends for Heroic. But in the second map, the second half went really good. There was a whole comeback, but it felt like when you guys needed to defend in the first one, there were problems, there were some struggles. You saw like all five screens. What caused that? Yeah, I mean, it was a rough start on the CT side. We lost a couple of crucial XVXs. It was a four on two, it was a three on two. Obviously, that, that will hurt you. Got some rounds towards the end of the CD half, but, um, well, it, I mean, it was enough to make it to the overtime, right? Yeah. Good T-side comeback, but in the end, I mean, they took it, right? So. And uh, we had, like, a little update, and while we were walking, you gave me, like, a really, really good explanation of what exactly happened on the first map. I tried to do my best to kind of, like, you know, pass the word. Can you one more time explain exactly what happened on the first map? The first map, I mean, there we actually had a good start on both both halves. Like on the T side, it was a bit rounds back and forth, but then we were able to reset them. But then, I mean, they were able to shut us down on a couple of our hits. And then on the CT side, I mean, again, a good start, but then it was like a banana contact, what ended up punishing us, and then a couple of these A hits, which is like they had the right reads, I guess, in the end. So good job by them. It kind of felt, when it comes to them, it felt like they ramped up, and maybe the fact that now you know like you need to get to 13 rounds and have 16, like maybe you didn't really have the time to adapt and react like right away. But now there's going to be a bit of time until the next tournament. What's the plan? Maybe a potential boot camp or something? Yeah, I mean we're gonna go home probably take a day or two of get get the jet lag off our backs and so on. But then back to practice. I think we have some qualifiers coming up, and then. EPL should be the next LAN tournament, so kind of prepare for that. Looking forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, bittersweet considering how competitive this got towards the end of the second map. But obviously for Heroic, this is the end of the line for them at the Intel Extreme Masters in China. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much what we've got uh, from Heroic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so having a good time here with Robert? Well, that's just Bob. bad things, man. Surely we can do better than Bob the Panda. I, oh, I come with Yanko said Bob. Like, so if you, you want to blame anybody, but you got a lot of options. You got like Patrick's. You got Pete. Pete the Panda. Like, okay, whatever. Anyway, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel up here, but what we are trying to do is run you back through how we got to the playoffs themselves. That means the group stage is concluded. So the brackets, they took shape, they took form, and now we end up kind of looking at uh, in a review fashion is what happens in A, if that's okay. Yeah, I mean, look, I think when we go back and look at the brackets, I don't know that we're necessarily going to be able to say, oh, this was not 
like too surprising, right? I think there were actually a lot of surprises throughout the bracket. First of all, Team Liquid uh, going so cleanly through the upper side of the bracket. Obviously, they run into Maus and they do get dismantled a little bit in that upper bracket final. But outside of that, I mean, taking down G2, taking down Heroic, those are two pretty impressive scalps. Uh, and then obviously G2 as well, having been knocked down into that lower bracket, having to make that lower bracket run was certainly not the expectation either. So a few things that uh, happened in Group A, which we weren't too, uh, I guess, uh, the way we on. ended up here, the way we ended up here might be a little bit sketchy, but I will say G2 and Maus were definitely on my list, on my 100%. wish list for teams making it through, and then it was a bit of the conversation, hey, what are we going to see from Liquid? Like, what shape are they going to show up in? Is it Heroic up. going to improve? And they, they did big time, so now we're going to be looking forward to uh, the playoffs bracket, of course, and see how they end up here. Um, but I'm not that, that surprised. Now we have, obviously, Group B, and here we have a bunch of surprises. Oh, yeah. Starting with the Vice as an IGL undefeated with an incredible record. They've probably lost about 25 rounds in the entirety of the event, which is completely absurd to think about. We're going to have time, of course, to reflect on it later when we get to the arena. VP making it through. That I'm happy about. A bit a sense of justice and vindication after what happened in Copenhagen, of course. Well, even FaZe finding their way to the lower bracket. Oh, right? of course. You knew they would. And I, I, I hate to, to, to break it, Jordan. I can understand, of course, when you identify with a team you support them. I think that's great in Counter-Strike, but having to play FaZe Clan in that last step of lower bracket, yeah. that, that is a rough one. There's no way around it. I mean, we always knew it was going to be a tough game. Uh, whatever, really, whichever team ended up actually going down for further into that uh, lower bracket final. But I have to say, props to FlyQuest. This is the best result from an Australian team in like three or four years. So damn right, Jordan. You're damn right Give them some credit. And so they're rejoicing down under, but it you know, is a little short. Either way, oh, we yeah. look at these playoff brackets, and now we've got a Mouse and Astralis. That's right, an Astralis with Device running the show over there has had themselves a semifinal appearance. Oh my, can you imagine an Astralis versus FaZe happening once again in China? Shout out to Yanko one time. And then of course, Mouse waiting to uh, know their foe. It could be a, a G2 Mouse revenge again. Maybe a little bit of tragedy in the air for the, uh, the Mouse kids out there. Oh, look at this guy. Is this a football club? What is this? Oh, they're having a good time. Yeah, I would be smiling too. Honestly, after the two rushes oh, in the upper uh, site, it's kind of like, oh, hello, heck. There's a, a surprise. lot of heckling, suddenly. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is what your schedule looks like going into the weekend, everybody. Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Those are playoff days, which ultimately leads us into Virtus Pro G2 to kick things off in the quarters and a liquid phase quarter as well. Angus, really? Uh, I got to say, though, I think going into those semifinals on the Saturday, man, what a storyline it would be if it was liquid versus Astralis. Oh, my word. Man. I don't I know if we're going to get there, but that would be crazy. I just realized VP versus G2 after, after what happened. Jim Crash and all of that. Now we're running back, we're running back, but we have it in arena. Mm, it's going to be loaded. I mean, Chengdu is known, exactly, exactly. I was going to say, it's known for its spice, it's known for its hot pot, and we might be delivering that in the server as well. Yeah, I'm going to stay away from the hot pot, honestly, but uh, cool. that's neither here nor there, and nor are we going to be on air tomorrow. My panda friend and I are going to take the day off, get some media put together for you all so they can come back, resituated for these playoffs. Starting on Friday, quarters, Saturday, semis. And then guess what? It's Championship Sunday thereafter. So I want to thank you for joining us for the group stage. It's the Intel Extreme Masters. We are live and direct. We'll be right back uh, in like two days. So see you there. This ain't new to me Since the age of 22 I've been losing it Like it's fuel to level up Like it's champagne in my cup Like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams There's a vision in my mind It's consuming me Take my confidence combined with opportunity Mix it up with unity Soon to be the greatest of my generation Operation Victory Fight or fly We will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match Light the flame Out of luck, out of sight Dangerous Dynamite Dynamite
me nice. A lot of tears, a lot of fights. Big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. On my downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins. I never complain. I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I find my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends how you view it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible, the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me out, I'll shove it. I'll rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Standing fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, not coming down, screaming Superman's kryptonite It's time for the DHL Ultimate 10. Who takes the lead hey. this late in the game? Hello to our viewers out there, Mike Loder here from the Ticker Studio, today with your weather across the country. Brizzy is looking warm at 31 degrees with a chance of afternoon showers, so keep those brollies on hand. Turning our attention to Melbourne now, where it is looking cloudy with a chance of... Counter-Strike? 